boost in alchemy, especially especially if you need gold in alchemy, uh, engineering. Um, if you want to run a current, uh, and if you want to use it in catalysts, you need to actually go find those metals out in the world because you cannot use dungeon generated money as a supplement. Okay. Good enough. And that includes anything that's produced money, money wise. But we have um, all kinds of gold, don't we? Like that's You guys have a ton of gold, but that's melted fake gold. Okay. That's so, dungeon gold. So it is dungeon gold. All right. Um in fact, it actually requires very high perception um, and or special skills to actually discern real gold from dungeon gold. Because they look exactly the same. They melt exactly at the same temperature, but they don't work the same way. In fact, you could fuse dungeon and, and normal gold together, and it wouldn't look any different. And that happens a lot. People just don't know. But you guys are getting your skills high enough that you guys can tell the difference. Okay. Um, but if you ever use Gunja Gold in a catalyst or as a substitute for real gold, you are going to be very sorry. Hmm. So uh, that's it. Same goes with silver, platinum, and copper. If you guys were trying to make some lights. Or some mm -hmm. cables and run current through your base. Uh, you cannot turn um, dungeon copper into wires. You can make them Makes into wires; they're just not going to move electricity. Makes sense. Hmm. Did I ever give you the name of that flower that you were looking after that you were trying to get get a, get your uh, uh, your no. herbalist mission? Okay. No, Good. Because you have to figure it out. Uh, do you have notes about it somewhere? Uh, yeah. I'm just wondering if it's on um, the main. It's in Quest. I went and updated it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Oh, give me a sec.
Okay. <sighs> nom, nom, nom. I see. Yes. Uh, Johnny, I forgot to put in what happens if you fail <clears throat> for the plant one. Uh, so job was, upgrade quest will not appear I was until the next the major. Same thing. Uh, yeah, your job upgrade quest will not appear again until the next the next major celestial event. So, such as an eclipse, a red moon, a blue moon, um, falling stars. So, and it has to be. A big one. So cool. you'll be locked out of the upgrade quest, but you can get it if you're persistent. Um, and you do have to have the class active when the event happens. You can't like evolve and swap to it after the event happens. The uh, job upgrade, upgrade quests are actually very hard for a reason. Um, <laughs> and they're pretty notoriously rare. Um, did you want to go through seeds before we begin? You mean get some seeds? Roll mm -hmm. for some seeds? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, if you'd like. Yeah. Uh... One sec, I'm just going to talk to Allie. Oh, okay. Uh, Char Char. Get this. Tell me about your plans today so I can help facilitate and get it through uh, very quickly. Because we do need to get through the two weeks, remember. Yeah. So again, uh, my character is going to be finished identifying the horde, uh, the group of shit we got from the adventurers. Mm -hmm. going to be identifying the... Uh, I was going to finish learning the wonders techniques start reading the silver leaf or did he leaf. leave you four through six yeah uh you left me the first five techniques so i have okay. one through three i mean four and five okay uh, they're pretty fun though yeah i love them uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, i'm going to go to uh bill of quiz bill of Bill Greasy? Bill Greasy, yeah. Uh, that's after two months. You cannot leave 
the yeah oh it's true yeah so scratch the bill greasy um aspect of the trip uh you might also want to in your appraiser ability um try and find a way to communicate with the bank of sands because they haven't migrated yet but you do know that the apostles party even with the loss that they took at the hands of you know your efforts and a little bit of scheming with one of the other humans who doesn't like these guys they're going to be looking for value to take home if they can't get what they came for they're going to strip everything in their path and kill everything in their path to recoup losses and the bank of sands would be such a sweet target um how to get a hold of them um you already warned them that this is going to be coming it's just if you want to somehow get uh in contact with them to help you set up a business because they do back those and if you have a writ from the bank of sands saying that you have the bank's backing no one is ever going to go oh well (laughs) you don't have enough money yes yeah (laughs) because the bank's got all of it (laughs) yes they did tell me if they left they would uh like they gave me a thing to track them Mm -hmm. on the map yep so that is a very rare token of trust yes Uh, the bank (laughs) doesn't like to do that but you are a a major you're a premium account holder so they're required to do that for premium account owners yes so uh I think I'm going to uh, use some kind of like a business proposal of taking stuff from the desert into Belgrizi. Along with uh, organizing our cobalts into making things. As we have a few things of value here. Mm. Um, you do know from talking with Gaul and with the bank. The monastery don't like competing businesses. That's true. Because unlike humans who thrive off of the competition, um, the monastery actually have a different look at it. Uh, it's actually a more logical look. It's uh, if they're doing well enough, you know, a monastery business is doing well enough and it's doing its purpose properly. Um, having to people fight over territory it's not healthy and uh, usually they respect original claims um, of territory Uh, because unlike humans monstra don't fight like that um, over that type of greed so you are going to be having a difficult time competing with Ming shop because you know, if you can find some like a niche that Ming does not fill, then you're going to be given permission to, you know, host your shop in the uh, Belgrizi. And yes, there is a currency exchanger already in Belgrizi that is a monster shop. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I'm not going in as a monster though. Oh, you're going to hold, try and open up a human shop. I'm a human. Do you not see by this monocle? No, that'll do it. <laughs> um, that is one of the loopholes the monstres do, but they also say you're now beholden to the human laws. If the humans come looking, and you're not a human when they look, they're not going to help you. Um, and in fact, you couldn't get backing from the uh, the bank of sands for that if you're not opening up an official monster shop because monster a, the bank of coins is only for monster a, and if you're opening up a human shop you know they don't do that type of business there um but you can get a personal loan from the bank to then go to a human bank and put that money in escrow for your business mm-hmm. to show that you're good for it, and then they will approve 
you know, with a promissory note. Like, there's a bunch of loopholes you can do that. Yeah, because like my thing was, I don't want to step on Ming's toes because Ming. Provi- I feel like Ming provides exotics from the desert. Ming supplies goods from across the continent. Mm-hmm. I think same with one, same yeah. with uh, <laughs> same with their mentor. Mm-hmm. I think what my character is going to do though is go in to Bill Greasy after like the two months is up, figure out what's being sold by the monstrate and what's not. Then what he's going to do is probably like a clothes shop or something. No, um, something. So the one thing that he, the monster don't sell, with the exception of two clans, the genies are they, they don't they, they're so xenophobic of everything that isn't them. Mm-hmm. Um, that they don't see other monster as a. Uh, you know, part of, part of the, yeah, this monster. They actually don't even consider them monster. They they consider them um, higher beings, that mm-hmm. type of bullshit. So, uh, and they're only loosely tied to the monster because they do have a monster core, and they have been there have been recordings of them being put back together in dungeons. So, and so they're only a monster on a technicality, which they don't recognize. No, they are 100% a monster through that, but they don't recognize it. If you can be reconstituted through a monster core process, through a dungeon, or other means, you're a monster. They just don't see themselves as that. They're like high elves in the equivalency. It's like, ugh. Um, And then there's another race. um, Goblins. Gremlins. You know, the... Like the Goblin Bank. They'll sell anything, literally. Yeah. Humans, other monstrate, doesn't matter. As long as it makes cash. So you got the highest of the high, the lowest of the low. Selling other monstrate is really taboo. Yeah. Um, because it all goes to the filthy humans. And there's nothing good that comes out of being sold to uh, the humans. Because if you sell them, they'll steal your power and then you'll come back. But the human slaves, well... They're good for labor, for servant purposes, but you don't really um, steal their powers. But you can use them for magic and other mm-hmm. blood rituals. Um, and you can supplement your army, but there's not a there's not a dichotomy that's um, equal. If a monster dies or is sold, it it means the enemies become significantly more powerful, or could be. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you sell human, well, it's predictable what they're good for. So, it's yeah. a big, uh, big stipulation. Um, so that would be one of the shops that you could open if you want to sell Monstre. Um, you could also have it so that you only sell little things, like little prey monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, like sorts and stuff. Yeah, like Zorps, Gecko Archers, Cactus Pups, um, uh, Earth Cats. You know, anything mm. that doesn't have a monster core, you could you could sell them. Um, monster Merchants are also the only class that also sells Monstre. Yeah. Because uh, they're kind of odd. I'm going to go and trade us food. Thank you, Allegro. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Hmm. Enjoy your brother. Uh, you're gonna have to come up with a very, very unique type of sale or business, yeah. or you just need to really look hard at the canvas of uh, Bell Grazy. Mm-hmm. And if you want to open a monster business, uh, you have to find just just a shop or something that they don't have. Because they'll welcome you with open arms because you're providing a service. Yeah. Because um, that's it's not competitive. My current idea, so again, current idea, without seeing what's in Bell Greasy right now, is 
open a uh, clothes shop. Mm. Um, and then walk around as a noble with like these exotic clothes. Where did you get them? Oh, so you're still wanting to do a a, a human based shop? No, no, no. It's going to be a monster shop. And then I walk around as a human. <clears throat> Wearing monster clothing, exotic clothing, to sell to humans um, and monster. You're gonna run into that uh, who you loyalty type of thing. Because if you're yeah. gonna make monster built clothes, that doesn't anywhere look close to what um, humans wear. Because if you were to build clothes for say Grimmauld. Mm-hmm. Those would never be something that a human could wear because they're just going to be different, and the fashion's also going to be different because of the different accessories you can put uh, based off the different body design. So if you're going to open a monster clothing shop, your um, you're going to want to sell only the monster, especially if you're using kind of one of a kind dyes or different like very hard to get fabrics. But selling them to the monster public, that's the... That's uh, the yes, difference. if you sell them into... If you go open a shop in the monster market in Belgrazi and sell just to monster clientele, that's going to get you a lot a lot of business. Because a lot yeah. of that's going to be custom. Uh, but if you start selling to humans and monster, you're going to lose both customers. Because no one wants... that. It's kind of... Monster will feel betrayed because that... that selling to the humans too we don't want to wear what the humans are going to wear and then the humans are going to be like you'll, you'll have some customers but you're good because you know people want the new fashion but it's that's if you, your business does survive that's going to be your only clientele because the monster don't they don't like that in fair um now if you were to sell the bolts of cloth that's different if you were mm-hmm. to just open a cloth store and sell the actual raw fabric you could have both clients easy you'll have to have different times in which humans and monster can come into your shop like humans in the morning monster in the afternoon Mm -hmm. Um, and no no mix up no crossover because you're gonna have literally actual bloody combat in your in your shop um that's different but actual finished clothing product that's that's bad. Yeah, because like, I think hmm, maybe that gems. Like, yeah, because Having... we have somebody who likes to dig. Um, uh, you're not digging in the right place. You're not digging deep enough. But uh, the Moon Phoenix yeah, yeah. did give you guys a ludicrous amount of raw gemstones and cut yes. gemstones. Yeah. So um... very good. <laughs> So, like, what I was thinking is be, like, a raw material provider then. Mm-hmm. Sell oh. both. Also, we can uh-huh. sell, once we have the time, uh, we'll start selling the, the flame metal. Yeah. Do be careful. If you mm-hmm. need to stick to one specific type of product. Yeah. Because otherwise you'll be encroaching on Ming's territory as a general store. And yeah. that is going to be very hard to compete with because you guys won't be able to. But if you guys stick to like clothing and clothing accessories and clothing stuff, yeah, that's fine. You can even hold a, a multi type of shop. So like the bottom floor has half the time for humans, half the time for monstre, and that's all raw goods for clothing, including metals or jewels for accessories and then the top floor could be for monster only for actually i feel like it'd be the other way around i feel like you'd have a top floor for the humans but then you'd have a basement monsters to go down into and it's much well, that's more also, no dungeon-y. that's well that also can be seen you don't want people to see your clients you're, you're embarrassed about them that's yeah. there's a perception behind that Hmm. Having a basement where you can't see people, sure, it, yeah, it's dungeony, but it also kind of it's a reflection of how the the people can perceive why you did that. 
Yeah, no, I wouldn't have a downstairs. I would have first floor and a second floor if I was to do it, because uh, it's a, you could. There's two different messages you can send. One is if you have the monster go up to the second floor, it needs to be more ostentatious than the bottom floor because you're it, it's it's a representation of putting them higher yeah. Yeah. in importance. But if it's the same, you want the monstre only area to be on the bottom floor because of convenience. They don't have to hike up the, the, the elevation to get to your upper store. They don't have to carry and, down all the stuff down the stairs again. Yeah, because because also it would allow for certain monstre who don't walk well mm -hmm. to be able to enter. Yes. Um, so if I was going to do the store... okay. I'm going to do the store. The first floor is going to be monster only because it would be easier for certain clientele to get in, like slimes, oozes, mm -hmm. things that are hard to climb. Um, and the second floor would be humans only. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd make the first, second floor more ostentatious. The humans. Well, if, if the monster only was upstairs. Yeah, that's why it would be have to be more ostentatious because you know you are then putting your clients at an inconvenience of having to go up the stairs, but also it's you're putting them at an elevated status above the humans because literally they're p higher off the ground. Yeah. Uh, and one of the big things I would try and do is so like I'm I'm kind of like tied. Because it's like we can do clothing or we can do minerals. Because there's a few things we would be able to sell, like the uh, fire seal. We'd have a large asset of. Um, you also, if you're lucky, can reclaim the burning quarry. Yeah. But yes. uh, unfortunately, you probably might not. That might be stripped down to bedrock because of the apostles group. Because they're going to try and recoup yeah. whatever cost they can. Yeah. Um, um, with the the moon, I can get the darkness and the the, the moon attribute from my thread here. So, um, and I can just do that right where we are now. Don't have to. It's not like leaving our area. Um, as long as the moon can come down, um, you can have somebody build you a moon roof. You'd have to have illusion crystals put at the top of the the hole. Or um, to help amplify that there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can build in a moon roof in a moon room. Uh, it would require some pretty interesting engineering, considering that there's a lot of uh, um, like a shit ton of sand that goes around, and you don't want that pouring into your home mm -hmm. from the desert. So you would actually have to build a glass dome. Uh, wouldn't the crystal, crystal crab have an ability that you could pretty much just create crystal? Um, he does, but it takes him a while. He uh, he kind of uh, builds it kind of like a bee a bee does or a wasp. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of regurgitates it and kind of slowly builds the crystals. So that crystal crab's been there for centuries because he's that's that he's done thousands of crystals. Very, very slowly. Mm hmm Now he's got a buddy. Buddy. Um, but yeah. Hey, Million, let's do your uh, evolution now that you're here. One moment. I'm currently organizing my uh, my sheet, trying to compress things beforehand. Mm. Also, uh, Commander. Yes. What's the... Uh, um what is the uh what's the thing you can do for evolutions now? Did you do it? Like did no, you finish? We, we haven't we haven't had the chance. Mm, okay. But we're probably gonna get that done now. And so oh. everyone can catch up. Well I'll I'll do my evolution after whatever that way. He can get whatever he wants to get out of it. Well, he's trying to get a, um, a, a quest done, which will then probably give him a thing. 
So, yeah. Okay. So, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Uh, remember uh, two weeks ago, the craziness behind your the the, the catalyzing evolutions that you were undergoing. Yeah, uh, you've uh, you did me a naughty. Mm hmm. I didn't do you a naughty. I I did you a hmm. That's good information. You gave me the naughty, and so, like I almost got my my thing done, but then it was like, uh uh, uh you gotta keep going, Jenny boy. Don't stop. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop the bee. I need a uh, pencil. I what I need. Pencil? Uh, uh. Wow. So I uh, bought some stupidly expensive tea. Really? You can taste it. Oh, yeah. Like, I've drank a lot of tea. That stuff... That stuff's okay. powerful. Mm. Aged pu'er. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Okay. So, uh, you have one more evolution to do. Minor one, and then you gotta do a big one. Uh, so, remember the cauldron I got for one of the, uh, the, the thing awards at the very beginning? Um, it had the, um, uh, what would you call it? It was seasoned with uh, the mana potions. Yes. That one. I haven't yep. really been able to make any things through that. I was hoping to um, make some mana potions, if I so may. Or just make one potion for myself during this uh, initial downtime. Okay. What grade are you looking at? Because I know uh, that the, this one will increase the grade by one. So I'm not trying to make one of those, like the plus okay. one catalyst ones. I've, I've done that before, and I will do that again. I was I was thinking about making uh, one of the other ones, um, not taking the coating, but using just the mana potion, like just making a mana potion. Great. Nothing funny. Just just straight alchemy. I just wanted to use I want to use that cauldron to its to its fullest to do what it was meant to do, which is to make those mana potions because it has the seasoning. Okay. So I'll then make one you... potion. How okay. long does that take for downtime? Um, it's gonna take six. Okay. Cool. Because it's it's a cauldron. It's not a pot. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, you're not gonna, gonna be making gonna one mana potion. You're gonna be making a batch. Fair enough. I will. I will do that. Um, I can get the water, uh, bless water. Uh, from our good old dragon, dragon knight. Our uh, dragon mm -hmm. priest, um, and we'll put that into it, and just make it pure, just like that. Hmm. So, go ahead and uh, what's your alchemy at? Uh, alchemy is mastery. Okay. So, uh, wait, is it gonna mastery? Be one sec, one sec, one sec. I need to double check this. I need to double check this. Okay. Because I am going to be changing uh, how mastery works um, for the second arc. It's not yet. I don't have it yet. I don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, it's for my my last uh, major I was about to do with the the thread. That's that's coming. Yeah. That. That's why. So mastery it. is going to, if you do have it, it's going to give you a flat bonus depending on the core characteristic. So if yeah. you have a sixty, it'll add a plus sixty on top of that. So pretty much whatever your bonus is to that yeah, you, characteristic. You get um, times 10 if you have mastery. So yeah. I'm going to make it a little harder to get mastery, though. Unless you've uh -oh. got... Um, yeah, so I'm going like, to make it a little harder. If you don't already have the skill max and you don't spend the 15 merit, you're saying you can't get mastery. Uh, I'm actually probably going to make it so you can't buy mastery. You have to earn it because it's going to be such a huge bonus. Okay. Either that or I'm going to triple the price. I, th I think you should just still make it use as a fake point. Give a plus. That's how you were doing it before. Um, so fake point, you get a plus 60. And then, or sorry. Uh, um, that's the thing where our naturals come in, though, too, too Matt. Because but, if I have 50 willpower and a 5 a natural willpower, that would be yep. plus 25. But you're going to need bonus. those huge bonuses for really high-level alchemy. Sure. No, that's, that's completely fair. Um... 
But do you want to make it be used as a fate point, or do you just want to like keep yourself? Keep it's it off. It's just going to be a flat L roll. So you're just going to is he so remove the fifteen fair, and then just uh, make it so he can only get them through evolutions uh, or yes, other evolutions or through quest or whatnot. Yeah, sounds good. Um, that way, when you have mastery, it really kicks in. It's nice and heavy. And is this how you want to do means- it for um, our Enigma game as well? No. You just want to have that be that plus three. I'm, I'm, I'm trying trying it out on this one. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. This is a trial, but uh, I kind of like how it's how it works. I might change it for Enigma if this goes really well. Okay, sounds good. Um, definitely. Okay, so what grade of mana potions are you trying for? Um, I am trying for. You got minor, say perfection. middling, high grade. Uh, I'm going for uh, perfection for this one. Which one? Perfection. Going for well, no, no, there's no, there's no, there's flawless grade. Oh, uh, all right. So you want me to go by your grading? Um, I just yeah. wanted to to, uh, uh, to try to make it perfect. Was what I was trying to say. Perfection was my. Uh, um, anyway, um, so let's try to go for a high grade uh, mana potion. Okay. Because um, I don't think I have, I don't know if I have the materials for it or the the, the initial skill yeah. for it right now. But you do have four out of four alchemy. I do have four to four. Yes. Okay. Uh, you do know that mana potions are rather delicate. They have a maximum brew time, unlike health potions. Health potions you can continue to just brew away until you get it to where it needs to be. Mana potions are very delicate. You can only cook them for a very specific amount of time, no more than six hours. Otherwise, your batch is ruined. And the closer it gets to the six hours, the harder so, it is to product. Can I not use my seer ability to divine how long it would take? Uh, the best amount of time to cook a mana potion is six three hours. hours. Three hours. Okay, okay. You can get it done right on the three hours. It's perfect temp perfect purity because you've brewed out all the impurities and you want to remove as much impurities as you can going in so it takes less time yeah, yeah. for it to get through that but after the three hours it starts to pick impurities back up right 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 okay cool, cool. um but the way the man the potions work is you need a number of successes cumulative among your roles to meet the grade so a minor grade you need five degrees of success total among all the roles Mm. uh the middling grade or medium grade requires around 20 to 25 depending on how pure you want it high grade requires 50 yeah, yeah. I've, I've and if you only much. have three rolls for a perfect potion, you got to be jacked. Yeah. Uh, or you have something to assist you, like equipment. Equipment will give you bonuses. And you never gave me any bonuses for my cauldron, so. No, because that thing already has a bonus. It's, it's... Right. It can do this because it has the seasoning. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you have a if you have a cauldron that ups the grade of the um, the potion you're brewing, you mm-hmm. only need to aim for a middling grade to get a high grade. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you're not going to have a mana potion, a higher grade mana potion, by the end of it. Uh, if yeah, you, I if was, you roll I was just hoping to... Uh, this was more me experimenting with a minor evolution. I have, a, I have an idea. Go ahead. So, Well, uh, mana potions are a little bit... Di- they're a lot more difficult to make, and they are a lot more costly on alchemical ingredients. For sure. But Fortunately, I, I have, you have yeah. a ludicrous amount of that one ingredient that requ- is required to make it. Yes. So, if you're ever going to need, if you want to make mana potions, um, there is this almost cliche blue powder dust that sparkles and shimmers. It looks like rock cobalt, mm-hmm. but it's sparkly. Um, and you have three jars of it, not not little things, but you have three hundred 
gram jars with different grades of it. So you have super fine powdered, you have kind of a coarse powder, and then you have kind of raw powder. So it's like chunks. It hasn't yet been ground down. It looks like it's just been extracted. Um, and of course, the finer the powder, the the better it is. Right. Um, right. It looks almost like aether dust, but it is very much not. I like uh, it. Let me type it out for you. Uh, it's called Venera's Breath. Uh, only two parts of the continent have mines or places that th this stuff can be extracted. Yeah. Um, one is controlled by the Monstre, but they trade this stuff to the humans. Not sure why. Uh, one is deep in the, the humans' territory. Um... Venera's dust can be used for all sorts of things. It is also a powerful but not safe catalyst. It needs a lot of balancing. A lot of... Uh, um, you need to def dilute this stuff because it's that, it's that potent. Hmm. But for catalysts, uh, if you're trying to juice your magic, this is or increase the amount of times you can cast a spell, like spell slots... Um, or if you're trying to get more Mercuria, period, Ven uh, Venera's Breath is, uh, that's the stuff to use. Mm. But um, it's like, if you if you lick it or snort it or anything, it's like straight meth. Uh, you will be supercharged on mana. Um, but it is stupidly addictive. Because it gives right. you a, uh, it actually increases your magic power by significant amounts, um, so you get a power trip from okay. using it. All right. Drawbacks: um, there are a ludicrous amount. The amount of uses, reading through the alchemy, uh, the alchemy books, and this is all in the high grade one that you have. Mm -hmm. They don't even, they don't talk about Venera's dust in the uh, beginner or uh, advanced grade. This is all in the very big uh, expert level book. Um, they have a 200 page chapter about Venera's breath and its uses, how to brew it, what not to do, what to do. About 75 pages of that is uses. 125 pages specifically for what not to do with it. Right. Drawbacks, um, withdrawal symptoms. Uh, there are some cautionary tales. There are some things you cannot do in the alchemy lab with this stuff because uh, you cannot get this stuff anywhere near an electrical current. Even static electricity will actually um, it'll absorb into the, the Venera's breath. It doesn't explode, but it absorbs electrical charge. Mm -hmm. And then it disperses it when you brew it. When it dissolves, it puts the electrical current right into your uh, your brew. And that can go catastrophically bad. Um, if a mage takes this, just, you know, via dose or, you know, makes a potion to increase his magic instead mm. of mana. Um, best case scenario, you go into mana withdrawal. You can't produce mana for 24 hours. And that's the my, like the most minor. Like you're completely drained. You cannot do magic for 24 hours. Worse, you're no longer mage. You lose magic forever, as it burns your the the, the mana veins out of you. Okay. Yeah. No, this stuff is bad. And you still have the withdrawal symptoms. You want to take that stuff again. It's very addictive. Uh, so am I getting from this that I'm going to get those things if I add this to Oh, no. Material? Mana potions have a very safe dilution process. Yeah. Like, it 
just follow the instructions. It is so exact. It's actually very refreshing. Excellent. Uh, they've done this a lot. Um, and, but Venera's Breath, if you don't have that, you cannot make mana potions. Right. Excellent. Everything else, pretty common stuff. Uh, there's there's one other semi-expensive herb, mostly because of region. It's just mm-hmm. hard to get it in the desert because it doesn't come from the desert. Um, there's a uh, water and earth element plant that um, it's, a, it's an algae. Right. Um, that is required to dilute the shit out of this. But you stole it from a mage's compound, so you have plenty of ingredients to yeah, make yeah. a potion. Um, you could probably do about a thousand different batches of mana potions before you run out of Venera's Dust. Excellent. Nice breath. Like, a thousand pots. Uh, and if you do a thousand pots in this poor little cauldron, this thing is going to get constantly Jeez. steep. Yep. Um, you do know as an alchemist, if you're going to commit to doing mana potions with this pot, don't brew anything else in it. Yeah. Because it'll just, it'll just make the mana potions even better. Um, and if you brew only high-grade mana potions, you're going to get a different type of coating. So the higher the brew level on a consistent level will continually coat the inside of the pot. I was also thinking, um, you know, a we have that cauldron, you know what I mean? That we took some of the, the coating off to make the catalyst stuff. Mm-hmm. So what if we use that metal piece um, and we um, use it as an upgrade for the catalyst? Um, for this magical item, the um, the one yep. that gold gave. using like to like, yes. You'll also need to do some research to balance it. Okay, because I have the catalyst for forbidden knowledge, and I figured that would at least give me an idea to go for this. Um, um, that'll actually require you to do a little bit of research. Like looking at it, you're like, hmm, should be good. Yeah. Um, why don't you go ahead and roll me alchemy? Okay. You want both alchemy and uh. No, Catalyst. Catalyst, you don't need it. Just alchemy, because this is going to be an alchemy-based thing. Uh, gonna scholastic want... alchemy, or just trade alchemist? Um, I'll have you roll both. Add the degrees of success together. You need ten. Okay. I like that. Uh, one sec, though. <sighs> one sec? Where are you going? Come back here. Oh, yeah. shit. Is there any tea in there? Oh, that's a good start. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then I'll add oh, on the other one. Okay. Three. Um, you do need a balancer. Um, when you pull off the coating, uh, there's iron dust. Okay. Okay. Um, it is necessary for the coating. You want that because the iron dust will actually help it adhere to the inside of the mm-hmm. the cauldron. But you need a balancer. Um, the metal element's too strong. Uh, so you need the you need a sympathetic or complete opposite. Um, complete opposite could ruin the metal element and cancel it out which could cause the catalyst to fail. Right. So you need a sympathetic bonding agent that will neuter the metal elements a little bit. What Um, about our, our friendly friend, um, our lizards, our salamanderanian. Yeah. That, that coating he has from his body. Would that be an interesting? Um, hmm. Go ahead and roll me catalyzer. Yeah. Cause that one, Fire is a sympathetic element. Three, two, three. It's, also, it's an opposed element, but it's a sympathetic element. Alrighty. Um, Napalm, unfortunately, has... Um, yes and no. Okay. Uh, it would be a solution to your problem, but also has problems that need a solution to it. So what now you can just the catalyzer the, uh, change. What about if I diluted it? That would work. 
Um, you do need an actual fire when you do this. So if you're yeah. going to use it, you need to light it on fire beforehand. Okay. Uh, and also an idea here. Mm. You can also use the earth element because earth element controls metal. Yes, that's the one as well. Yes. Oh, sorry. Earth element promotes metal. Fire element controls metal. Yes. So we're talking feng shui? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is literally is uh, a feng shui thing. Like That's kind of what I base my element system off of. Because you got one promotes, one controls, one suppresses. Yeah, and the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. Glad you picked up on that, Char. Yeah. Um, and that's why the... Uh, um, your next door neighbor... Uh, the uh, Desolator, uh, he cannot be defeated in the desert. Because... Earth. Earth, metal, wind, fire. And you would need a dragon of equal stature with an element that suppresses his on both categories, because he's a darkness and fire type, um, with a subclass... Or with, with probably actually with wind as well, that you think. Um, you would need something that could suppress those elements... To beat him, and uh, there's probably only three dragons in the continent, two of which are kings. So very, very angry dragon. But that's the type of information that you know it comes to you when you research this forbidden stuff. Mm -hmm. You start to get a glimpse into um, the details of everything around you, which can be very distracting. I was just thinking, um, since uh, Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Etsley, Eatsley. is um, Eatsley, um, is part earth element. Having some bone shavings added in would be an interesting um, thing, but... Uh, Human remains are not safe. Right. Uh, Easily, this is a skeleton. That's monster yeah. bone. That's what I was um, thinking. Human remains, unless they are per specifically prepared with a neutralizing agent, mm -hmm. um, they're perfectly fine. But you know, through your catalyzer, you're going to get. If they died with regrets or with with anger uh, you're going to get a random something that happens to your object and it's not good okay a person is benevolent um and or neutral when you dug up their bones so uh say somebody who died of old age but that's not a yeah. really good so if somebody didn't die with regrets or not with a lot of sin, that's where that kind of sinful element comes in. Um, and that only is only things that you can kind of guess or theorize at because you've mm -hmm. met with Notch. Yep. Uh, also uh, got to look at the cube once and you just there is a subset of elements that have to do with the sins of people in Monstre. Um, using remains of, of humans, not safe. Using the remains of Monstre, mostly safe. Uh, you just need to keep away from the jealous and the envious types. Right. So, uh, dragons, gorgons, basilisks, yeah. Um, At the end which, of the day, I was I was going to go from uh, for my friendly neighborhood Skellerman to see if that would it would work. That's really all I was going for. But it's nice to know about these other aspects if I want to like get them. Um, actually, them. if you use um, sediment, sediment, specific metal okay. enriched sediment, yeah, yeah, uh, that would actually be a perfectly good neutralizing agent. We have, the, I mean, our, our 
our resident miner has a lot of that. He, you have plenty of it, but you need to literally shift or uh, sift and actually make a custom sediment uh, to get the exact effects. Because you want it to be as neutral as possible. Uh, you want it to have a little like metal flakes, but not enough to give it the metal element. Um, and it needs to be really, really fine and um, you, you need to put a lot of work into it you because you want it to be as fine a dust as possible because you're going to be using this to bond it to the cauldron, which already has a coating, and you're trying to put another coating on it. So it'll take you about one downtime action. You guys got plenty of it. You can call some cobalts. They'll come over, and you just kind of sift. You, you rinse, sift, rinse, sift until you get just... And then you got to dry it because you don't want water in there because that's a water yeah. element. Yep. <laughs> you're realizing what a pain this is. Well, you got to get through it sometimes. To get All right, so that'll be one downtime action oh, cool. for the sediment. Yep. You then have the... Um, The what's that called? The rest of your catalyzing objects, and then mm -hmm. you do the evolution for the uh, the pot. Okay. Um, do you know the current effect that the the, the scraped uh, coating that you're infusing this pot with? Um, we do not, um, we just know that it is the catalyst plus one, um, stuff it could be used for. Um, okay. that's information we got from Notch, I do believe, right? Right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. All right, so, make sure you're going to be pretty straightforward for you. Okay. Um, this catalyzer is going to do two things. One, it's going to re reduce the number of degrees of success you need to make higher grade potions by 10. So if you're going to be needing to make... Um, if you want to make higher grade, you only need 40 degrees of success instead of 50. Um, since it's not the original pot and you're using it as a catalyzer, it doesn't automatically upgrade it. Right. Uh, the second thing it does, it allows you to re-roll one alchemy roll per batch. Even if you, f if you, even if you succeed. And it has to be better. Okay. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, if it is a four or less, you cannot re-roll it. So you can't go fishing for a one. Hey, that's uh, one less than five, though, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I love it. I do. Uh, it's, Catalyst is successful. Um, all right. So this was Improve a Tool, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, would it be a minor or a major evolution for that? Minor. Minor, Okay. I, I didn't know if the if it was magical mm. or not. I guess it was just a, a normal cauldron. No, it's a the, coating. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's the pretty. wild part. You do enough alchemy with magical ingredients, and Venera's breath is a magical ingredient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> very magical. Very close to aether dust too. Much more potent. About a 10, 12 times more potent than aether yeah, dust. Man. Um. But uh, yeah, that's the, what's the, one of the wild things about alchemy you learn. Um, you can have completely non-magical tools, uh, and they operate like magic tools because they've been just used to make magic shit. Some of the most powerful objects actually are the most inert chunks of metal because they just need to be completely neutral and completely just well built because if you're making flawless grade or treasure grade mana potions that pot's going to that that cauldron's going to crack without the right stuff or it's going to dissolve so 
And that cauldron would be stupidly magical. <laughs> Even though it's not magical. Right. Which is... Not make a lot of sense. <laughs> Anyways. Um... Yes, yes. Love it, I love it. Uh... So now we're gonna make a another tool, uh, and we're gonna call it the loom. Um, so Matt, did you give me two um, thread types or just one thread type? Spider Queen's thread, Riot Spinner Web. Those are two thread types. Two thread types, and the difference between them, the Riot Spinner is the multi-colored, correct? Oh, uh, you can make it whatever color you want. All right, all right. That's the Riot Spinner. They they. Um, they weave whatever the, they can change the color and the pigment the dye of their uh... yeah so um, now that I have that information because I wasn't sure at the very beginning uh, I'm going to add um, that as the catalyst for this loom are you sure you don't want to use it as a catalyst for you I figured if it was going through the loom I would be making something anyway that could have multiple um, multiple colors Yes, but you would you would have to get another riot spinner thread, and the loom may have a limit. Oh, on how much color it can produce. Oh, that's unless fair. it's going to be a really high. No, 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 that's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I like think how... that I, I was going to make a, a loom and then build it up kind of deal, like through evolutions. But oh yeah, you could. Um, but also you're a spider. Yeah, make your own thread, and that's actually going to be far more important. Uh, if yeah, you, if you were not a no, spider, you're right. You're right. You were um, doing the right thing. But if you are a spider, don't give these up. I'm gonna, you're gonna kick yourself. I know, I, I know. I, I was and the right spinner web of... is gonna be very hard to come by. I'm not. You're gonna have to go look for it, and it's not in this region. So, uh, actually, you could go to Ming or Ing, but there they may not have it because humans buy that stuff up like crazy because you know clothing. I'll uh, ask the uh, the friend network if they have any ideas for uh, any ideas. Well, that's four. You want to do a major loom. for your fifth, right? Yes, but I, I, I need to make. I put need to put a catalyst for this loom because my other one I, I, I would have been done already, but the uh, remember the watering can. So right. So we did the the, the cauldron, and now yep. we're on the fifth one for the major evolution to. Um, so uh, I'll go through you again. The plant trimmers was the second one. Uh, the mm -hmm. watering can was going to be the third one, but it got canceled out because it uh, you, you you gave me a quest that me only completed after, right? Um, yep. The so then the next third one was the cauldron. Um, the fifth one is the major, and I'm just missing the fourth one here, which I was going to make a loom uh, for. Okay. Just the um. So yeah, uh, million char. Any alley? Any ideas for some catalyst things for the loom? Gave you a week, bro. Man, Weak. I don't even know what to use hey, for man. My week for is my busy. own stuff. Yeah. Mm. So, um, have you used your spider silk yet? My spider, uh, like my own? No, no, the spider silk that you got. Um, no, yeah, I'm going to use it for my next uh, major evolution. Yeah, okay, but you're doing a major evolution right now. No, this is a minor evolution. Oh, minor evolution. Uh, yeah, but, but, yeah. You got any funky shrooms that you wanted to put on? Oh, oh wait. The, the whole freeze. No, never mind. Never mind. The, mm -hmm. the whole reason I did this whole cauldron thing. And then I cur my batch yet is the question. Because we were going to do that. And then I was going to use a cat. You got to roll thing. your. Um... Yeah, you wanted me to roll. Okay. So you're going to roll your alchemy. Yep. Uh, uh, remember. With my new cauldron. With my new, new cauldron. cauldron. <laughs> three is the. You need 40 in three rolls. Which is, okay. the, which is the best you can get. Uh, with your tools, you get a plus 20 for each roll. Uh, but if you go over the three rolls and you need more rolls to get to the, the high grade, that's fine too. It's just yeah. not going to be st the, the stupid pure that you want. Remember, you get plus 20 to each roll for tools. I didn't, I didn't leave that in for the last one there. Uh, okay. So, uh, awesome. Uh, so, first one, 45. Second one, 13 with 12 degrees. And the third one was 64. So, we're going to use fate points on the 45. 13, you get one free reroll, remember? I do, but I'm going to use that next. Um, 
45, 13. So here's the first one, 45. Uh, 12, much better. Um, and I get the spade point back. Uh, the 13. Uh, 8, awesome. Um, and I get also that fate point back. Um, and the, uh, the 64, um, I, I, because I'm, I'm a nice guy and I screwed up on the last, uh, just me rolling lucky, I'll use that too for the next fate point reroll. Uh, is 55 lower than 64? Yes. Uh, and it probably got my degrees of success, I think. Um, 40. <laughs> I got 40. Um, you need 40. Yeah. And three rolls, which means you gotta have a lot yeah. of degrees. Alright, so I'm not there completely you yet. Need 10 so a, you need a minimum 10 apiece. Yep. Um, you need two 13s and a, and a 14. So I got the 12. Um, so 12 is gonna give me uh, uh, it's gonna give me 12. Over 12. Um, remember, you do get your one free reroll mm -hmm. for yeah, your I hot that that one, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to 64 was the 55, right? That's not great. Uh, I could go for a one or I could go for a, I think I'm going to get that one anyway. Um, do you want us? Uh, do you want us? Uh, can you pass me some boons? Because I know those work. Okay. Um, do you have... Because I, I'm going to crack down on this a little bit because I was kind of thinking over the, the weekend mm -hmm. um, the vacation. Uh, do you have any powers that let you use boons and fate points on the same roll? Uh, my whole friend work network based off that, Matt. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's a friend network. You can pass boons and fate points around but did, did we specifically put in that you can use boons and fate points on the same roll so okay i understand I just wondering if it's written down somewhere um, it and that's just what we've been doing so far um and it was never uh you know written down for a, a something else okay. i suppose um, so sure if you don't want to if you don't want to have it do that that's fine um, uh yeah, because the boons and fate points on the same roll are very potent. How about, since it is kind of part of your identity, um, if you use a fate point, or are going to use a fate point on a roll, you can only use one boon to pair with one fate point. Sure. So you can't fate point it and then super juice so it. So like I, 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 I can't... That's fine. Uh, that's, that's completely but fine. But if that. you don't use a fate point on it, you can stack boons on it all you like. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I just wanted one a piece anyway. Um, if if chair or just one, let's let's count how much I have here. So I got 12, 12, and then fifty five would be. Um, I well, reroll your one free reroll on the fifty five. Has to be better. Yeah. So uh, just, just roll the the actual alchemy roll with the plus fifty. Yeah. Uh, mm. 19. That's pretty good. Um, it's better than your 30. Yes. yes. So... So if 13 is 12, 19 would also be 12. So you got 24 oh, and then... You... And, uh, so I'm at 36. Okay. So you need four more. So Jari needs two boons, if you're willing to give it to him. Mm, I can give him two boons. All right. All right. So that is a pass for a high grade potion, I do believe. Um. Actually, yeah. Go ahead and roll me one alchemy roll. Um. Actually, no. Roll me an int roll. That's the base of that. Sure. Uh, okay. All right. So. You're picking up something interesting off of this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have you roll 1d2. If it matches, if it's a 2, because it matches the 2 degrees, mm -hmm. you can reroll it once with a fate point. But <laughs> if you roll the same thing, it's the same thing. Uh, just, uh, 
give me a sec. I need to make some calculations here. So back, back. Um, so I used two. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's use another one. Five. One B ten. Slash arrow two. Ah, All right. Um, You're on the cusp of something. Mm. Uh, there is a pop-up that comes up. It's not a quest. It's just... Uh, it's... Persistence is key. Enlightenment is the path. Soon, there may be opportunity. Can you seize it? Um, so okay. for my next one, uh, I'm going to. Uh... Well, hold on. Yeah. Um, roll me one d two plus ten. Ash, I got one d two plus ten. Um... Okay. Uh, you have eleven high grade mana potions. Um. Okay. Interestingly cool part about mana potions from the text mm -hmm. is if you for the first three hours when you brew them you do not need respiratory gear when you get into the fourth fifth and sixth hour you need fumigation and right. or you, you cannot breathe in the fumes it is too potent i got you um you'll get venera's breath aerosol yeah. version Yep. Breathing in it, and that's that'll fuck you up. Uh, but no, yeah, you, you bottle it, uh, and they gleam inside the bottle, and they do require special bottles, crystal okay. glass, pure crystal glass. But you have those because okay. you brought the, the, the yep. mages. Uh, crystal glasses are 100% reusable, as expected, as long as you don't uh, smash them on the ground. Make sure you clean them out, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't have to clean them out as long as you put in the exact same potion back in. That also means purity, and it also means uh, um, grade. But right. you can also coat the glass, the crystal glass, if you if you do that. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, drink the mana potion, and we're going to okay. have a minor catalyst. Um, and I'm going to have one Mercuria as my, my choice this time, and that's what I'll attach the, the Mana Potion to. Okay. Uh, is it unassigned Mercuria? Oh, yeah. no, you're getting a Mercuria. I'm okay. just literally getting a plus one, I want, and I'm attaching the Mana Potion to that. Um, yeah, what comes out is a physical droplet in your hand. Okay. Looks like It looks like a, one of those flat on one side, perfect little dome... Riverstone. It's a little right. oblong. It's uh, no bigger than a marble. Yep. All right. It was successful. Uh, um, but it forced the Mercuria out of your body into that's a fine. droplet. That's fine. Did, but as long as I, it's, it's, it's almost like having a fate point in a sense. As long as I have this thing, um, it doesn't count as... My, my next one, if I look at my stats. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, it's a completed catalyst. You Excellent. didn't know that. You didn't know Excellent. that the mana potion does this to Makiria. Yeah. Um, that is a Venera's droplet. Okay. Uh, basically, a mana potion. When you combine it with Makiria, it becomes a physical object. Uh, same with Venera's dust. If you combine it with a Makiria during a catalyst, it becomes uh, something. But okay. if you combine it with a mana potion, which is a diluted version, it becomes a droplet, a crystal, right. like a gemstone. And that can be carved. Yeah. I like it. With could, the... be, could be used as an accessory. <laughs> yes, it can. Uh, if you combine it with Venera's Dust, uh, it becomes something very different. <laughs> Let's just add more to it. Let's just throw it at it. Um, all right. Let's see that being a bond uh, or something. You, like it a actually... 
um, does not say anything about what that looks like in okay. the advanced alchemy book. <laughs> Because people don't go around going, I'm going to catalyze this, because that's a yeah. monster thing. And you're yeah. reading a human alchemy textbook. So yeah, hey, that's four. It's always good to make my own notes. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Now let's do the major, and then I am done for, for now. All right. So you spent four downtime actions preparing, and then you also had to wait another couple days. Yep. For all um, of yeah, I had to get the extra because of the whole um, the can thing. Um, and I go to goal for this uh, major uh, evolution. All right. Um, what are you using for a catalyst? Because I do. So, we are um, approaching game time, and I do want to get people. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so my my enhancement of the body part, thread glands. Uh, I'm using the spin, uh, spider queen's thread and the riot spinner's web. Okay. Um, Gaul will kind of look at both the riot spinner web. That's fine. The spider queen's web. You're not a queen. That's going to go poorly with for you. What about if I added it to a um, one of my parts of me, myself, influence on my fellowship? Um, you're going to need to, because that's a, you're going to need to save that, because okay. that is a flawless grade object. The ah. queen's spider queen. Well, because let's, let's save it for another time. Let's move. The spider queen's web, because he doesn't, he can't tell what grade it is by looking at it, because it's it's a very odd item. Hmm. Um, there's not a lot of them going around, uh, and a spider queen is a entity that even he is cautious around. Um, their thread is kind of mysterious. And what they can do with it. So, um, they're also one of the only spider species because spider queens are their own species of, of monstre uh, that prey on other spiders, almost specifically. Um, they'll eat any type of spider. In fact, they, that's their favorite food. Uh, and they are one of the only monster species that eats the monster gem. Oh, really? Of really other spiders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're truly cruel things. Yes. Um, and you're going to actually have to deal with a cruelty sub-element. It's kind of a almost a sin type of right, thing right. when absorbing this. Um, that's very dangerous. But it also shows how powerful it is. And you don't know how much power is in that thread. Because when a spider queen eats another spider, it absorbs all of its abilities, period. Right. It can take any feature of its spinneret and the type of web it can it can make. Um, it's chitin, or chitin, whatever you want to call it. Mm, yeah. uh, it can take all of the best properties. Um, and any negative effects... Um, Actually, it can channel into the eggs that it lays. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there's flawed children, but it just it purges its own flaws and impurities. And then it doesn't care about its young. It eats its young. So be very careful, because that can either be superior grade or it can be all the way up to treasure grade. Right, right. And it's very hard to assess. Which is why I uh, went to gold first. Yeah, but the the, the riot spinner, that's... Um, doesn't really need a catalyst, or doesn't need a balancing catalyst. Right. Um, yeah. Beautiful. It just, um, it just makes colors. And you're a spider, so there you go. Excellent. Um, so, enhance with the body part, done. I imagine that will just allow me to have... Um, is that a minor multiple. evolution, or did you want to do a full major? This is a full major. I'm on major. Well, shit. Alright. Uh, so, yeah, you picked... Uh, which one are you on? I'm on uh, my seventh. Many, seventh, so that means you get eight picks. Wait, no, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's, uh, it's 70 uh, Mercuria, so that would be uh, eighth, I think. 
Uh, no, 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 wait. Not Mercury, it's Aether. Yeah, Aether, yeah, yeah. Um, I just know how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, HV should have a very detailed chart it, separating I, both minor and majors and superiors. I do. I just, you know, how much it costs is like how much it's at. So if it costs, uh, so the first one is 10, right? It costs 10. Each each goes up by 10. So if you're at 70, yeah. you're at your um, sixth. Because it should be 10 more than the current evolution. Yeah. Uh, so. How much is this one going to cost? I thought I had it ready. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five is the first one. Six, second, seven, eight, nine. So I should be less than what I have then. Saying that's the sixth one after five plus six is eleven. Five plus six is eleven, so it should be uh, minus one. So it should be ten. Ten of them. Ten major evolutions. Ten. Yeah. Ten. Ten choices. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I have ten. So a sixth evolution. Oh, it's your six evolution. Oh, the no, major evolution. Just give me what it costs, not the number of stuff you get, because that's confusing. I was I told you both, Matt. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So you're in evolution six. Correct. Okay. Great. You get eleven picks. Alright, so that's one. Uh next one's a natural characteristic willpower. Uh I was thinking the uh uh like how or the strength of bonds and how you can weave things together and they're stronger that your way. Your core characteristic for your willpower is shit. <laughs> yep. You're not going to get a very powerful unnatural if your willpower core is bad. Uh, okay, uh, so if you want to do it like that, um, I'll choose increased characteristic willpower. That's actually first. a forbidden more catalyzer piece of information. The more Ooh. powerful your or the higher your core characteristic, the more powerful the unnatural can be. All right. Uh, let's, and you can uh, also catalyze your unnaturals. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Very hard to do, though, without ruining what, what the product is. Uh, let's choose intelligence, then. And uh, let's... Uh, Let's call it um, technique. For what? Um, for traits. So, um, just give some bonuses. What, what, what technique is? Uh, I'm like, so there's you so many to ways. Choose for it. Okay, uh, I was thinking. Well, uh, you're weaving. saying technique, but like yeah, what? like just like what direction. Um, uh, Techniques of the trade. Um, so, things you would pick up from doing those things, but you kind of have them already. Um, be simple for you. If you are striving for mastery, or have mastery, so mm -hmm. basically striving means you have four check marks. Yeah. Or if you have mastery, um, if you roll that core skill yeah. for a trade of yours, or for a job or profession, um, you can pick up one really nasty piece of information that, that may not even be known if you roll a single digit. Okay. Uh, tens count as well. Cool. And that is the upgrade you get for having at least 50 int and already on naturals. You get extra range. Instead of five or less, it's 10 or less. Yep. Uh, um, that'll, that'll give you information about doing new things. Or doing things that have already been established, like building mana potions. Maybe yeah. you find there's a better way. All right. Yeah. Uh, just because someone else uh, has, you know, strided the path doesn't mean you can't go a different direction to get the same or even better result. So. Hmm. Or more efficient results. Exactly. Yeah. Less material. Um, 
Maybe less time. Yeah. Or maybe you get more rolls for the yeah. same amount of time. I got you. Hmm? Uh, second one, improvement of tribute spawns. Just got to get another... Uh, yep, done. Uh, easy peasy. Improvement of the synergy of your element type. I'm going to go for fate this time. Okay. Going for fate specifically? Yes. I don't have anything um, else. Plus you can pick a quest that you have. Yes. Uh, and you can use one of your bonds on it. And you can add, kind of tune yourself to it. So if you don't really have knowledge of where to go or what to do for a quest, if you use a bond on a quest, uh, you can div use your divine abilities mm -hmm. or your and um, kind of figure out your next steps. It's basically, I can kind of coach you where to go. Uh, once the quest is done, the bond's returned. And you can uh, reapply. So it's like a spirit guide? Yes. You can... Basically, spirit guide, attach a quest. And it doesn't have to be your quest. It can be right. someone on your friend network's quest. So uh, I use up one of my bond slots, um, but in, in, it comes back to me at the end of the day. Uh, cool. Once the uh, quest is completed. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, if it's a continuation neat. quest, you have to reapply it anyways. You have to choose to reapply it. So once Fair that enough. quest is done, you always get it back. Okay. Now, like if it. you fail a quest, yes. or somebody fails a quest... Lose the bond slot. Um, you're going to roll a 1d10. On yeah. a 1 or a 10, you keep your bond. Okay. Nine, 2 through 9, that bond... Um, Is that through lucky that's, that's happening? Mm hmm But I already I have 1, 9, and 10 for lucky. Oh, uh, 1, 9, and 10 then, yes. Okay. Cool, cool. So if, it, if it's not one of those numbers, yeah. uh, the bond is disabled, not destroyed. Okay. You have to find a... You have to do a catalytic evolution to restore it. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to gain a fake point. Easy peasy. Done. Uh, characteristic influ uh, increase of influence. Okay. Go ahead and add six. And then roll me 1d2. Okay. So I'm going from 49 to uh, 55. Hmm. Slash Thank you, Million. 1d2. Uh, let's put that in d um, one one Sounds good. I've got three ones in a row. Feels good, man. So seven. Uh, so seven. Yep. So seven. Okay. Awesome. Uh, my next one is uh, scroll down again. My bad. Uh, uh, willpower. Increase willpower. Um. Go ahead and add 15. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate add that. Um, so that's going to be... Oop. Okay. And the last one is increase fellowship. Currently at 24. Add 10. Okay. Awesome. And almost done. Uh... Mastery, Great Alchemist. Oh, you're going to get Mastery? Yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and uh, add Mastery to your Alchemy. Okay. Um, and does the That's, unnatural put characteristic... Put that under traits. Literally, yeah. under the trait category, type in Mastery. For mastery? Yeah, yeah, sounds semicolon good. Semicolon Alchemy. Um, so does that improvement uh, and unnatural characteristic intelligence pop into play here, then? Uh, that well, it applies. The, the new one applies to this. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to get driven trade uh, alchemist as well. Okay, driven trade yeah. alchemist. Yeah, you just Dude, the, the, the option for yeah. That's see, that's the potent stack up of a job class you're building. Yeah. I'm I'm only doing it for a certain amount of things, and uh, now that I have my second or my next up for. Uh, influence. I'm also building a conflux on alchemists, so okay. I'm going um, the full trifecta. You will get a quest. Oh, job quest for alchemy. Okay, another one. Yep. <laughs> oh wait. Oh yeah. This is actually. Uh, this is completing. This is complete. This is the second uh, at the same time. This is all 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 together because mm. this is five and five. Um, it is a job improvement quest. Okay. Um, it is. Mm, 
sorry. Um, this one specifically for um, brewing the next tier. Yeah. This one's telling you to brew a supreme grade potion or concoction. It doesn't have to be a potion. It just needs to be something that comes out of your alchemy that is a supreme grade. Um, there's no time limit. Uh, failure just says, oops, try again. Unsuccess, question marks. How many question marks? Three. It's three? Mm -hmm. It's a good question, because if it's four, that's it's four special. Yeah, I, I only have to deal with three this time. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Um... This just says, this is basically what you can tell. This is a system quest to you know push your limits. Yes. Like hey, do it. Come on. All right. All right. Very smart. Um, so I've been bigger if you didn't already have another alchemy quest. I didn't have another alchemy quest. I thought this was the the continuation to that one. Oh uh, no, this is a separate one. Oh, uh, I, I was thinking because I completed um, it at. Okay, yeah, okay, sweet, sweet. Uh, so this is a separate. I didn't know you could have two. That, that's all I was confused about. Um, did you complete the previous one? Yeah, I just completed it as we, as we, you know, did the driven trade office, and then that was it. And then conflicts, okay. and then uh, uh, well, then what are the rewards for completing that quest? Um, it's a secret. Uh, so let's go to how many question marks? Journal and. Uh, uh, perform five and five evolutions with Catalyst within six months. Uh, completion, secret job quest. Oh, the, I thought it was an alchemy job. Oh, it is a job alchemy. Perform yes. one of the five evolutions to Catalyst within six months. Okay. Um, you can see why my confusion came there. I was yeah, like, oh, I thought we were good. Yep. So this one is actually going to be pretty interesting. You completed it. So, um, yeah, that'll be your job alchemy quest. Um, the for a supreme grade because you've already done the high grade yeah, yeah uh secret job quest will pop up for you grats um go ahead and roll me a luck test oh because you are um, fate element yeah matt um now that this is happening as well um i bought the third level of uh the nexus I'm going to be slotting the first level alchemy job role on Complex into yeah. this Nexus. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's uh, let's roll that luck first uh, with oh. May the Moon Shine Upon You. Mm. Uh, 31. It's low. Not bad. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so what you were asking, what, sorry? Okay. Um... This one is going to be a, you know, it, it pops up with the window, and then there is a scrawl of gold that starts from the very pinnacle bottom hmm. of the, the in the middle, and then wraps its way around the uh, the border of the quest. Uh, it is now a title quest. Title quest, I see. Nice. Titles are different than jobs. Titles can always be worked on. They're always active, and they're far more powerful. Mm -hmm. But they're also detectable with the right skills. Right, right. Uh, this is the title quest for Catalyzer. My bear. It also means it's much more difficult. <laughs> um, to get the title Catalyzer... Uh, you don't need to jump through the massive hoops and the continual loveliness that is having to do the continuation quests. This is just one go. You need to successfully catalyze uh, a basically, sorry, what's what's the term? Um, you need to do a mixing pot catalyzer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it doesn't explain what that is. So, uh, I just assume it would mean like uh, adding yeah. multiple ingredients to the, uh, the thing instead of just having here. Uh, here's the thread glands to your catalyst. Here's a potion the, to your catalyst. 
Let's, uh, I would never assume anything. So you're saying it could just be that easy? Never assume, always find, find information. Uh, yes, really quick, we do know this. Commander. Yeah, what's up? Commander. <laughs> uh, did you use that, um, that like, pot piece or whatever that yes. you recommended I use as a catalyst? Did you use that? I used it, yes. Oh, okay. Just checking. So... Yeah, it would be in that order. And we don't have to worry about um, what the hell is it called? Ether for our evolutions anymore, right? Um, yeah, we're pretty much getting at a constant rate from the dungeon. Just track okay. how much you use for it, per se, to, to, like, to know what level For the you're evolutions? On. Like how many times you've done it? Yeah, pretty so much. Yeah. yeah, so it lets yeah, you know. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah, guys, um, I did ask for this, so, uh, y'all have, um, how much does everyone need? I forget how much everyone needs of perfect ether stones for superiors, but, yeah, additional, okay. plus a perfect ether stone. Okay, so I have two perfect ether stones for me, that leaves eight for everyone else, for your perfect evolutions. I have right. it recorded on my sheet. All right. So pretty all much right. between all those one, two, three, four, five um, catalyzers I need to do, I have this many items I can add to those things. To you make must it whatever. use. I have to use. Minimum. Must use. And, oh, use. so minimum. Ah, minimum. Uh, I got you. I got you. You can do more than one of the same catalyst, but you have to do one of each of the five, and you have to use a minimum of that mini grade. Uh, On each catalyzer? Nope. Just total. Just total. Yeah, yeah okay. That's what yeah, I thought. You can use time. any yeah, quantity, yeah. any order, any any approach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you do not have to do... You don't, you don't have to do it all in just five. You can do the mixing pot catalyzer ten times, but you only get progress for doing it once. But you have to do... One of each. One of each, yeah. yeah. Of these. Uh, and you do have to use that many ingredients minimum, but you can do more than one. Right. Uh, this will get you catalyzer. Um, there is a fail for this. Okay. Um, well, it's success first. You get title. Title achieve. Um, oh. And then you get that. Okay. You get a five question mark mystery prize, and you get a four question mark mystery prize. Uh, fail. Um, Not evolve ever again. Uh, lose. Title quest forever. Yes. Um, death. Death. Fair enough. Probably because you'll have died trying. <laughs> yeah. No. That, I, 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 I. That's what I. I that's, uh, that's what I literally see because there's no other. Um, now the yeah. caveat. Looking at it, it does not specify one thing. That it has to be you that the catalysts are done on. Yes. So there you go. There's a title quest. I'll go with that. Alrighty. Um, if you keep meticulous notes uh, as a character, you might get a golden board or piece of paper about the catalyzer title quest. But... If now that you have the title quest, you can actually write this son of a bitch out on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. 
I think Gaul still has some, doesn't he? Uh, yes, Gaul still has the paper because he's from the bank and the pyramids. Yeah. Uh, and he has the ink. Uh, and this is super rare. This is like multi-class rare. Um, and you're not sure what those question marks mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, congrats. Um, so I'm going to let you go off on other people. The only thing I'm curious about, and just for confirmation on my side, uh, uh you the... do get catalyst second check mark. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, um, you rolled well enough and you used moon, moon Moonshine upon you. You rolled under 50. You <laughs> got a single a, digit, uh, but I, I, you know, still pretty good. No, you got a title quest, which unfortunately takes over. Yeah. Uh, it also makes the quests benefits from the continuation quest. It's just, it stops you from that forever. Okay. So, so, it, <laughs> so the, the improvement quest you just gave me and the other one, that's kind of just, uh, I, don't worry about them then. Um, that one's going to be. Yeah, you've you've cleared the improvement quests. Okay. Uh, you got a title quest instead, which is way harder, jumped. but the benefits yeah. are way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than doing all the continuation quests, but okay. it also the reason why it's harder is because you don't get a bunch of continuation quests with you know reward increments mm -hmm. to improve your skill. Um, what this means is you basically are going to have to supplement uh, through different means. Um, so, Matt, my only questions then. Um, the uh, complex job, Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Was it combined with... What's the other two? So, um, it's combined with... Uh, uh, which one's it combined with? One second. Uh, uh, interweaving Web of Fate and Memory Palace. Um, okay. so, That'll really help. Yeah. Um, so, for the third... So, for just purchasing that job class, Complex... No, sorry, no, the job class uh, alchemist. Um, what does that give? Because we, I, I just purchased it. Memory Palace allows you to look up any piece of information scholastically, period, while you're doing alchemy, which allows you to roll scholastic lore alchemy in addition to trade alchemy anytime you roll alchemy. Okay. So you get two rolls for every roll, and you can add the degrees of success together. All right, all right. That's your memory palace. You're literally, as you're brewing, like, mm, I'm going to look up this really obscure fact. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, and then the Divine Web of Fate. Um, Which way, interweaving Web of Fate, pretty much. Interweaving the, uh, Web of Fate. The, the friend network, pretty much. Uh, you can... Hmm. The friend network. Yeah, that one's tough. Uh, that one's kind of just a neutral. Yeah, creates a um, mysterious web connecting the people and the character they bonds with, with character bonds, blah, blah, blah. They build a telepath, communicate with each other, at distance, it allows sharing of currency with each other. Uh, um, when providing if fake points one of bonds. your players allows it, they you can pull an object while you're brewing and okay. have it put immediately into the brew. Cool, cool. Um, um, as for the alchemy, uh, did you want to put a bond onto the title quest? Yes. Okay. Um, it'll snatch onto it. What specific thing do you want to focus on first? Because that's that's the, what it's going to talk to you about. What what part of the title quest do you want to look into further? Um. So let's do the uh, uh, the uh, pure strain catalyzer first. Let's see what that's about. Because I don't really understand what those um, those concepts mean. I understand like a mixing pot might be like multiple different things. What's a pure strain? Um, I'm gonna have you roll your influence mm -hmm. to see if you can pull any information. Title, uh, sweet uh, title quest. That will put pure strain. I'll roll for you first. Just get that out. Uh, five. Okay. 
Um, uh, let's use a fate point to uh, get that lower. Because I can with lucky or no. Mm, I because think you it say, was uh, five, you did or say less, five or less. But you gave me the other one for the four, so I, uh, that's I that one's different. Check. That one's yeah, for the exactly. The that was because of the item itself. Yeah, we're good. We're good. So, so this uh, I, I love a five either. Way. I'm just trying to get okay. Uh, pure strain. Uh, you get a bunch of images that flash through your mind of very mm -hmm. powerful legendary beasts, mythics beasts, like the Spider and Queen. That would be a legendary mythic. Um, but kind of not. Okay. That is a, an, an, an evolved species. Right, right, right. Okay. That didn't have to start at right because the legendary. The, okay, gotcha, gotcha. But it is a legendary creature, which is interesting. Yeah. But all the different legendary beasts flicker through your mind, and a bunch of ingredients and catalysts just go through you know through your mind, and you mm -hmm. can't recognize ninety nine percent of them. I'll be dreaming about this, I'm sure. But uh, yeah. Um, so what this can do is in your memory palace, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a book. Okay. That you okay. can look through. I like it. Um, it will cause you fatigue to go through this book. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> uh, and a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it will allow you to look up all of those images. I like it. Not anything information about them, but you can literally look up every piece. Every image has its own page in that book, <laughs> which is the upside of the memory palace. But to look at it again, downside of the memory palace is you have a perfect capturing of it. Right. And you weren't supposed to, because your mind's not that strong. Your will's crap. It's more like a window. I'm opening up a window, and it's just mm -hmm. hard to look through. Got you. Yes. So, best guess, it has to involve legendary mythic bloodlines and right. some very weird shit. Right. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Like it. Okay. Sorry for the wait, guys. Um, who do we got in here? We got quite a few people. Hey, Allie, welcome. She is off in her own little world, but I will I will say you said hi. Okay. Uh, and then... Char-Char. Oh. Yep. I'm back. Oh. Hey, Million. So we got... Char-Char, hey. you got your plans. I'm actually going to hop over to... Actually, I want to get through some of the... the the day's activities because that was several days worth of stuff that we just did with Johnny. Cause each, um, evolution takes time. Yes. Each evolution has a limit on how many times you can do it. Um, cause if I remember correctly, it was every other day or every day that you could do a minor. Uh, every day you could do a minor, every three days you could do a major and or superior. Yeah. Uh, a week for a superior. Superior. Okay, so that was... Actually, I'm going to look that up because I wrote it out. <laughs> Somewhere. And that's very important because I can't have you bamboozling me. While Matt's uh, doing that, did... Uh, I don't yeah, know if finished. anyone took me up on... Um, on, like, adding additional rooms. Like, I know uh, Char had... Uh, got his like i put on the the blueprints air quotes the the two areas you wanted in on the next floor uh same for susie um and then grimold uh i gave him i put in that little passageway down that he wanted um and i don't recall if ingrid wanted anything added in uh but Otherwise, yeah, does anyone want more stuff added in? Those circles and passageways are meant to be... Uh, well, the circles are meant to be relative size with the pit for scale ideas. So. No, that's a good question. I'm good. I was not here for the question. I had to go to the washroom. I'm sorry. Would you like to add anything to the second floor? Uh, the second floor, not extra. No. No. Okay. I was considering adding like another area right here for the sandworm that we've never seen, just in case like that's where 
he exists, but I don't know how far down that is. Lord so. Gold just keeps sandworm with him. Uh, you guys also sh- need to roll me, each of you, a 1d100. You guys are getting new friends, remember? We are, yes. Are. Each okay. of you gets to roll a 1d100 to determine what you get. Oof, 93. Um... You may re-roll it once if you burn a fate point or boon. I'm tired of having friends. Uh, if you if you guys want, Such. any one of you can sacrifice a boon mm-hmm. or a fate point permanently to get a re-roll on this. It does not guarantee that it can be rolled lower. Even with lucky? You get well, it's through your Yeah. yeah. It's through your web bonded connection power that they get to reroll it all. Oh, good shit! But you do have to sacrifice a boon or a fate point permanently to mm. get a reroll, and you can roll worse, and you cannot roll again, even if you sacrifice more. Bad, not mm-hmm. bad. I like my forty-one. Like forty-one? I'm, I'm, like I'm 41. fine with ninety-three. Okay, that encompasses the luck I've had this week. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Johnny, did you want to use May the Moonshine upon you for yours? Um, I didn't know it was luck. Uh, sure, I will roll my. Yeah. Uh, I will roll my one d ten. Uh, okay. I'll subtract. Um, it doesn't burn your thing away. It's just... Yep, no, I, I know. I just... I would see if I got the, the point back. That's all. That's bad. Okay. Um... Let me go get your little new friends. do 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 I'm curious, Matt, and you yes. don't have to answer this because this is kind of like peering behind the, the DM screen, so to speak. Do we each have like a a uh, like a table for each of us where it's like stuff we can get off of this particular kind of role? Based on what creature we are. <laughs> I did not understand that. Oh, basically, like when we're, if we're rolling for like new uh, new inhabitants, do you just have like a table for each of us based on like what creature we are, what we spawn nope. as a result of our uh, presence? Menagerie takes over over cha- uh, overtakes that completely. Ooh, okay. Because it's the menagerie, anything can spawn. If you're lucky enough. Hmm. I wonder what would spawn if one of us got a one. That would be interesting to see. Uh, you guys would have something that would be interesting. All right, so do do do. Oh yeah, we're missing. Um. Yes, our other. He's very stealthy, so I can see why you would have forget. Uh, he will get the roll later. Oh, okay. He's not... okay. 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 Just making sure. Ah, familiar face indeed. Hmm? Feels too fucking big. Oh man, I'm not even going to fit this room by the end of this, probably. Maybe not. Um, You'll have to stick your big head in sideways. And then, the, you know, so you can get your horns in. I have to, I'm going to have to move dungeons. <laughs> it won't be big enough. <laughs> um, you can have a dungeon trait. Uh, specifically, that uh, can be one of two things called Embigify. Which means the dungeon is, is like a... It's kind of a dimensional space. It, yeah, it's a TARDIS. It is massive on the inside. Uh, or 
you can have it so that individuals of the dungeon always conveniently fit whatever room they're in. Huh. Interesting. Dungeon trains. Right. Very powerful ones that you would have to pick up. Those would be uh, major upgrades. I'm going to pick up the dungeon trait. <laughs> um, shrink his fat ass. Okay. Uh, Grimold is humming and drumming on what the uh, hit, you know, he's going to get his roll later. But for now, uh, it looks like you have an actual, honest to goodness, salamander. Little baby. And he burns and scalds and turns the floor, he, the little, the sand he's on into glass. And he kind of looks up like that as he kind of sticks out his tongue. Oh, he's a. He's an adorable little axe waddle. Yes. Axe waddle salamander. Uh, you have a ghoul. Really? Oh. Uh-huh. An old Gwent picture right there. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's a ghoul. Um, and then you have a little mushroom guy. Ooh, and he yeah. goes, and he's like, I have arrived! As he screams really loud. And everyone's like, oh gosh, you're loud. Yep. Fear me! Hi, Vigar. How are you doing? Fairy! I'm gonna kick him. Yeah. As he spirals off and poofs into the um the sand. Excellent. And oh, then his another mushroom, mushroom kind of pops out from yeah. the mushroom from the sand. Poof. Yeah. Now what unholy creature is this? Uh little spirit kind of oozes and kind of slimes in its place. Looks like it's made of like sticks and de- uh, detritus. And it kind of does that cocopelli um, kind of cocks its head like you're winding something and then it snaps back and then rattles. Kind of like a Princess Mononoke type of thing. Where the heads kind of crank to the left or to the right and then they, you know, it releases and it rattles back and forth and Sounds like you're shaking, um, kind of a bone clapper. Ah, it's super cute. Oh, it's really small. I feel like I know which of these is 93. Which is it? This one? Nah, it's probably that one. Probably uh dissing poor salamander. I got my eyes on you, mister. I'm dissing the the spirit, <laughs> not the salamander. Um for those anyone can make a kind of a logic test to kind of figure it out, but uh your lordship will actually be here for this, so um you can always ask him questions. Let me get Mr. Gall and his little buddy. Pix! Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh. You stop that. (laughs) It's too early for these shenanigans, my good sir. Dude, it just happens, man. (laughs) I thought these would have been moved already. But. Well, this is a very nice time to get a one, I must say. It's nice to see all the new critters come out. She's very excited. Hey. Put Nimi. She's an Amy. I'm an Amy. Bloop. Amy's back. We also got Raskier. Uh, the Sand Knight. We should put those corpses in the corpse closet. Yeah, yeah you built a kind of cool area. Mm-hmm. Alright. Um, well, go, what's your logic at, my friend? Uh, it's at two checks. Go ahead and make it three. Okay. Uh, increase your int by one. Um, nice. And then there's a pop-up that says, so you want to know about Monstre, dot, 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 and then disappears. Oh, you know what I'm going to do too, Matt? Because I have it. I'm going to use uh, my uh, 
unnatural uh, intelligence, knowledge of different species on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your best one is that salamander. That is a legendary bloodline. That is a pure salamander. That is going to be a little different than Gulper, because Gulper is a basilisk salamander hybrid, mm -hmm. but his flame is never going to be as powerful as a pure blood pure blooded salamander. Very nice. Um that cannot stay in the dungeon. That will burn out your oxygen fast. Uh full grown, it'll light the air on fire in here. And literally burn you all out. Not because it wants to, but because it's it just it's that it hot. Yeah. Uh it needs its own private room. Uh and it needs to be fed because these these the, the 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 extra information is they are very sedate in comparison to most monstre. The only time they ever go out to wander around is because they're hungry. And if they're constantly fed, they don't really move. They're very sedimentary. You could basically keep them in a very small space if you constantly feed them. Downside: feeding him is a nasty problem. Upside: he would be immune. To the desolator's flame, if he gained the dark element, if he gained the dark element, right? Dark element's the, the the nasty part. But this would be one of the only species, if it evolved for correctly, with a catalyzer, um, could literally just be like fire. What is that? Because uh, salamanders are the closest thing to the element of fire you can get. Mm. Um, dragons have nothing or any of the other fire spir spirits even genies don't have fire as powerful as the salamanders mm -hmm. they are kind of a spirit <laughs> but they're such a powerful spirit they have a physical body and they're considered monstre and they show adorable oh it's it's adorable but if you touch it you'll start to melt even baby salamanders are a problem uh, they do not eat meat. Fortunately, we have someone who can feed the darn thing, at least early. But later, it has a very particular appetite. Um, uh, it mostly eats minerals. Kind of like a furnace stove, you know? You kind of, it opens its mouth, you yeah, yeah. shovel in the coal. <laughs> so basically, anything that burns and burns well, or burns at all, is what uh, salamanders eat. So yeah, yeah. wood, coal, um, earth, not so much, but uh, anything that helps stoke its flame is what it eats. Uh, yes, and you can feed it gulper slime. Nice, nice. Mm. Okay, so... For now. Here's what, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to dig out a small area under where gulper lives. And someone smaller is going to have to do this next bit, but there'll be this. We'll dig a small tunnel that just funnels off Gulper, Gulper's napalm into the room, mm, 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 mm. and that's how we feed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative solution, sure. Um, the ghoul is definitely the weakest of the bunch here. Um, it's a little bit stronger combat-wise than a normal Skellerman. At the start, uh, easily you're definitely stronger than it because you've had multiple upgrades and you're a combat specialist. But uh, yeah, it's a ghoul. It's an unre It's a a inconsequential bloodline, and it is a rather weak monster. Uh, it actually has more downsides in some aspects than a skeleton. Um, considering it has still flesh and blood. Uh, it's undead. But it is slowed down because of all that weight of the meat. But it also has a lot more force that it can be it can apply in combat. And it is an excellent carrier of diseases, poisons, uh, parasites. Like, uh, it's a... Here's the one information for you. Ghouls are specifically good at being hosts Fun for facts, stuff. 
um, specifically not just diseases and whatnot, but critters, other monster or other lesser monster. Or, um, they can be literally walking homes for them. Looks like and he ghouls has. are actually uh, most of the time in a relationship like that. If they get infested by a more like a really powerful like monster parasite, the ghoul is not the thing you have to worry about. It's the thing inside its ribcage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't be dealing with the ghoul at that point. It would be the, the controlling parasite. Mm-hmm. But um, ghouls also, while they do have a um, monster core, uh, they're really hard to detect. The blood um, is uh, vampiric undead, correct? Uh, say again? Is there a bloodline vampiric undead? Yes, there is a vampire bloodline. Uh, yeah. These are not them. I- I'm guessing that's what the host part was. So I was trying to figure out. Oh, I was talking about for parasites. Okay, like yeah, literally yeah. like worms or some okay, sort of yeah. literal spider. I got you, I got you. Like They can be hosts for other monstrae that are small enough. Um, they're also wonderful disease carriers and poison carriers. Mm -hmm. Uh, But otherwise, they're pretty insignificant, and they are very weak. They require a lot of help to become problems. Upside, they have a rare opportunity, if if presented, they can become Windigo. That is one of the only upgraded paths that a ghoul could stumble into. Kind of like a way a skeleton become a can become a lich. Mm, yeah, uh, they're most one of their most powerful is a Windigo, um, and that would actually be an upgraded to a legendary bloodline. Because the Windigo, you don't fuck with those things. They fuck yeah. you up. Yeah, they fuck you up. Um, your little mushroom guy. That's Death's Head Mushroom, Monstre. Death um, Head Mushroom. It is a fungi, wood element mm-hmm. only. Um, kind of like your wood sprite. Yep. They're, they're a monster, but they're kind of a uh, demi sprite. Yep. Um, they, uh, they're very annoying. They're very spooky because they always. They always try and scare stuff or yeah, yeah. basically yell out, I will destroy you. Very Vigar like. Mm-hmm. Um, they do let off some of the most dangerous um, poisons and spores. Uh, they do not spread normally through spore, it's just pure defense mechanism. Uh, they only grow off rotwood. And if you have if you have rotwood, you can make you can get more of these guys. Lucky me. <laughs> uh, they consume the rotwood. If you, I know. <laughs> if you have it, um, their spores only grow on that type of rare legendary stuff. So if you want more of them, they'll chew up that little bath you made for your special. Um, yeah, plant. I know. Or I can but make you can the get a bunch of these. tree, and then um, yeah. they have. A potential substitute if they grow up and are um, evolved specifically, mm-hmm. um, they can have a substitute for the the poison gas called the silence that follows. Of course. Oh yeah, no, he's a, he's a very dangerous little mushroom dude. Um, does not do well in the elements here. Yeah, he's probably going to want to be underground for sure. Uh, specifically in your little home, you'll have to build him a little little, yep. little house little enclosure um because you do not want him running around and he will run around screaming at people fear me because you should you do not want to breathe in what he's he's, uh, what he's you don't want to pick up what he's putting down yeah uh, yeah so that was the one information uh that other little little cocapelli guy um <coughs> that's a rot spirit it's an actual full-on spirit Mm-hmm. Um, it is 
The process that follows death. The decay of things. Yep. Um, that is a very rare spirit to have. It doesn't really do much. And once it finds a place where things are dying or dead, that's where it camps. Right. And it speeds up the, the process. So if you have a compost pit, or if you want something to, to decay really fast, or if you want something to ferment, or, you know, kind of pick them up and move them there. Yep. Uh, Isla tell... should be the only one that touches this thing. Okay. Because if you touch the, the, the rot spirit directly, it will start to rot you away. And yeah. it will shoot you your vitality. Uh, which means uh-huh. you will lose permanent wounds. Okay. So only the undead or dead should touch it directly. Unless you have gloves, or you move it with a little little scooper, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it is for the the one logic. Uh, spirits can grow. If it becomes a greater rot spirit, it can decay any item ever, besides divine objects. It can okay. literally decay it over time and break it down. Uh, divine objects are protected by the gods because they permitted the divine object to exist. So it's protected against that type of decay. But if an object ever became for- forsaken, right. then yes, once it loses divine protection, the, a greater rot spirit can rot anything over time. Uh, can I tell um, who I rolled for? No. Okay. Um, this is just your collective influence. Uh, mm-hmm. If it was the menagerie, you guys would know exactly what your influence looked like because it would be similar to you. So you maybe think that the mushroom dude. Hmm. <clears throat> wow. Look at that. Got some new friends. I got one more on the way. We just got to see what uh, our homie. The homie rolls? Yeah. Oh, man. So there wasn't one per person. It was just like... Um, oh, there's kind of one per person, just Grimmel's not here. There's going to be one more. What about Allie's? Well, Allie's is here. Okay. She I just doesn't we... know which one is hers. I oh, Never mind, never mind. I'm just... I'm being, I'm being silly. There's five yeah, there's players. Four. There's four. There's four. Yeah. I was just... Uh, uh, I forgot about the ghoul for a sec. Mm. Um... Okay, so oh, let's do some math. So you had to do how many minor evolutions? Ah, me. Um, like I said, I've done. Uh, uh, no, you're talking about major. Um, minor, minor, minor. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Well, I'm talking seven for for this session, because we left off on day six. Uh, I did. Um, I did two then, two minor, one, one major. Yeah. So, one DTA for minor evolution, two for yeah, maybe. yeah minor evolutions are every other day so here Mm -hmm. let me and then the other part yeah so you had to do um a you did a minor evolution twice yep so that means that's uh, do you three want to days. Start, do you want to start from this session, or do you want to start from when we started? Well, we already did the first. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you started on day one. Yep. Then you had to wait the rest of that day and the next day. On day three, you did another one. On day five, you did another one. Yep. So on three, five. Uh, on day seven, you did your fourth one. Oh shit! Taylor just sent me a message. That's huge. Uh, oh. Uh. Uh. 
Uh, he's not going to show up. Okay. Wow. Oh. Unfortunate. Okay. Uh, yeah, family issues. So we'll officially start. And, um... 15? You want to just... Uh, uh yes. Yeah. So... Da -da -da -da. Allie, roll another 1d100. We're going to give Grimald Critter. He's going to disappear for the day. I know exactly what he wants to do for his downtimes, though. Yeah. He's, she was just in the kitchen. She's right here. With some corn. With some corn, you want me? I need you, you to roll me one d one hundred. You're you're deciding Grimald's critter. Because he's not going to be able to show up today. Yes. I did it. Thank you, Ali. You did it. Thank you. Let me go find it. <laughs> 41, 48, and 43. Hmm. Do you think this is going to... Uh... Is Taylor going to be okay, Matt? Uh, he's going to be okay. His sister may not be. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Um, yeah. They've not had a good relationship for quite some time, but he still cares about his family. Of course. I'm just sorry to hear. Um... All right. Bloop. Little bird. Ooh, uh, he herb. comes out with a sword and a shield and a little breastplate and a cape. Um, Weird bird. <laughs> that that is a. Uh, A little sparrow knight. Um, to start, they're about as dangerous as gecko archers, but they actually have a monster core, unlike gecko archers. Um, they can grow to be smaller or as big as a person, depending on their evolutionary path. Yes, um, either can make them more dangerous. Um, they're the the one that you get. Their one mm -hmm. major ability that no one else seems to have is equip human items. Ah, I like it. So what you... what it does is it actually changes the size of the item. That's neat. Cool, cool. So if they're really small like this, you can equip them with normal gear you find. And uh, it'll transform that gear into something it can wear mm. of its size. And that it can fly around with? Yes. Uh, well, it needs to be strong enough. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> because uh, it doesn't particularly remove the weight of the object. Yep. So having custom created items for the, the knight, the, the Sparrow Knight, is best because it, you know, then the weight of it actually applies um since it would be insignificant but if you it can equip full on objects it does not remove the weight that's the downside so if you give it a 15 pound claymore it'll <laughs> be stuck with a 15 pound claymore the size of a toothpick but if it has something like a uh, umbral glass a natural uh, strength <laughs> or, or that yeah and a massive <laughs> strength score <laughs> see that's 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 the thing with sparrow knights like yeah it can do normal evolutions, which the can't. So it can Those... be literally ripped, and you wouldn't. A rapier it. with that thing? Man, that would be terrifying. Fly like a bumblebee. Um, now, what am I trying to hear? Um, Fly most... like a butterfree, sting like a bee drill. Um, 
the Sparrow Knights can receive a hero title. Cool. Uh, and if they do, they get a special ability, which allows them to be able to equip any item, even if they are uh, any martial item, like armor, mm -hmm. uh, anything a fighter or a hero could wear um, of the swordsman class or knight class, um, even if they're qualified to put it on. Uh, it just gets reduction of stats, and they get a penalty for wearing it if they don't meet the requirements to wear an object. They can just forcibly wear it, and the object nerfs itself. Very weird. Requires a ridiculous amount of assistance to get it somewhere, because they're very, very weak. They're, as I said, about as durable as a gecko archer to start. So... Welcome to your friends. Um, this little guy, he knows his name. His name is Cheapney. Cheapney, the, the Sparrow Knight. Uh, this guy's called Fear Me. Uh, Salamander, he's a baby. He doesn't know. Uh, the the spirit, the rat spirit, doesn't really speak. Uh, ghoul doesn't have a name. Hmm. Okay. That's it? You're just like, yeah, cool? Mm -hmm. Uh... I will have to... Mimi! Bye. I must inform you, unfortunately, a feather of, a feather of yours was... <laughs> missing? What, missing? Give, give oh, one fell out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I took the one from your feather, from your nest, and it went oh. to somebody else. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know, Nimi. Mm, every decade or so, I lose a feather. <laughs> it floated to it, to them. Uh, oh, and they deserve it. That's how that works. Don't you know? I figured that out, but I just wanted to let you know as well. Mm -hmm. As it was your feather. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to turn to Lord Ghoul. Lord Ghoul, we mm -hmm. have done repairs upon the menagerie. I hope they are to your satisfaction. We are building out a second floor now. Good. Very good. Um, have a lot of thought for how you want, want to construct the second floor. Because the second floor will determine the purpose of every floor after. And in fact, we'll define the purpose of the first floor that's already been constructed. It's actually kind of a pivotal architecture moment. Because if you are going to move some of the more vulnerable rooms, uh, rooms that need to be further protected, you will need to translocate them with the second floor's construction, which would then free up the first floor to become what? Is it our defense area um, is it to meant is it meant to mislead individuals is it still kind of going to be a hodgepodge of personal rooms and uh, rooms with specific objects and purposes like how is the ultimate layout of the dungeon supposed to be well, what I was thinking, Lord Cool, is we'd have towers. Fairy towers. Fairy towers? Buried towers. But, you know, oh. something like going down that each of us could be in charge of. 
That would also make it difficult for others to come rescue you. Um, there is a dungeon called the Inverted Towers. It's an upside down castle. Um, that place is good and bad for one reason. Each tower is completely devoid and s isolated from every other tower. And further you go down, well, it traps whatever's down there, but it also traps you there too. Yes. And also, it's a lot of movement. It's a, it's a lot of movement that you have to do vertical mm -hmm. um, to get anywhere. Yes, but we also have ours connected as well. We will not be isolated. If that's what you wish, I recommend picking um, to do a tower or to just have an interconnected series of rooms. Because if you're going to build a tower straight down, I actually do recommend you isolate it from anything else. I should say, let me clarify, tower not as in cylinder, a, cyl a cylindrical space that we'd be in charge of. Well, you just be in a room. Yes, but... So, Easley's gonna, like, use the Earth to make the first floor, and then the second floor, and then circle an area where everything top-down would be the area he was in charge of, while things still connect. Ah, okay. So the second and first floor, you guys would be responsible for every adjoining... Mm -hmm. floor from the first all the way down that's a lot of accessibility by the way it would which is very good for for the dungeon but also if we have intruders they're going to be able to use that highway you've built yes and that's also the point of it they can with certain areas like injured's room where the more rooms they enter, the more problems they foresaw. Well, again, you don't need me to instruct you on how to, con you know, to build a dungeon. You've shown me, all of you, that you are beyond capable. So. I like know that. how I would like my dungeon constructed, but that doesn't mean I'm right, you know? A new, fresh set of eyes and a, maybe in an out-of-the-box construction is better. Thank you, Lord Cole. Mm -hmm. We are going to need to move the core room. Just do it slowly and carefully, and properly. We would like your help with that. Oh, you're going to have to. In your dungeon core. Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately it won't move without me actually giving it permission and actually helping it move. So, yes, absolutely correct. So, this is a little exciting. Our dungeon, by far, is a little... it's very equipped. Um, and we have a lot of room for growth. And now that we have a defense network, we have a lot of time on our hands. So, I think strategy meeting in, at the end of the two weeks is uh, what I would like to do before you guys step outside the dungeon. But in the meantime, personal projects, uh, dungeon projects, whatever you are looking to do. Yes, You've earned it. Oh, and do take care of the little ones, <laughs> the new ones. Uh, if you need crystals or aether for growth, um, they should be getting their own allowance of Aether and Dungeon Monetary uh, coinage. But they will need to come to you, my firstborn, for superior grade gems or higher. Or, well, high grade gems. 
Okay. Yes, Lord Cole. Mm. Lord Cole, mm. at this moment we can have a conversation in private. And Nietzsche's going to give him a look. It was the same kind of look he gave him when he told uh, Lord Cole about E. About who? E. Notch? Or Notch, yes. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I had a moment. Mm, the letter E. <laughs> there is a character in one of my other games that goes by. I, I do e. it to uh, Char's <laughs> character a few times. Yeah. I think, I He's like, <laughs> very well. Um, please take care of the little ones. Susie. Yes, my lord. Um, I'm going to give you a very difficult task, I think. Oh. You will be given responsibility for the rot spirit. Very well. Little one. This one, you will you will need to Oh no, I'm over here. As turn to Ted, finally. Ah. You'll follow this one. You'll listen to him, yes? It just kinda cocks its head, click, 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 click. As it lets Ted go. Right. Uh if worse comes to worse, use one of the questions for the spirit shaman. Spirit Shaman would know what to do. Um, keep it away from anything that you want fresh or lively or has a lot of vitality. But keep it where I need to decompose things. Yes, it'll be happy with that. Uh, don't touch it with your bare hands. Very well, my lord. Susie. Yes. It's like I'm constructing a graveyard on the second floor. Bloop. Just so you know. I'll be working on the uh, the mushroom gun. <laughs> no, I do not fear you. Means he's gonna. My poison down. will course through your veins and bring you low, and then. I will feast on your corpse! Kick him again. I don't... I'm like, I don't have veins. Fear me! I will decompose your bones with my spores! Oh, well, that is very What's fearful. Nancy's this... gonna poke it. Eek. And he goes... And a bunch of spores pop out about six inches and then f kind of flutter to the ground harmlessly. Fear my spores! The great and powerful me! And this one is cute. Uh, he is about three inches tall. It is very cute. <laughs> he will run over to Phil fearlessly. Fear me, great creature! No. I think you fear an allegros. I will be your destroyer! No. Trying to I invade it on the territory. forehead. <laughs> Bunch of spores go out. One fear, master. <laughs> it runs between Phil's legs and then runs over to Indrid. Fear me, fair bringer! I get in the face. Lands over here, and then burrows into the, the the sand and pokes its mushroom out. We're gonna have to find a more permanent solution for this. <laughs> yeah, see, that's one of the downsides to uh that 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 type of critter. Uh, it loves to run around and scream, "Fear me!" At anything, and it is it is, it is incapable of feeling feeling fear. That is my thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that thing cannot feel fear. It's fearless, it. but it also, since it doesn't feel fear, it doesn't have a very good survival instinct. It'll run up to just about anything and say, "Fear me." Excellent, and we'll they usually do not survive. What's this, Indrid? Are you feeling a little jealousy? What? Are you feeling a little jealousy here? 
Um, I'm feeling attacked and encroached upon. Uh, it does not cause fear effects unless the unless it's part of the, the spore. Uh, it just likes to run around saying "fear me," and is immune to being feared. I'm gonna murder it and use <laughs> its gem as a catalyst. Oh, <laughs> savage! I'm like. Don't kill the poor spore. It's part of our menagerie. Fear me! It says from underneath the sand. Lucy, you should put this one in your new garden. I'm gonna go. Well, if you ever have a problem with adventurers that don't know their exotic monstre, um. If he ever gets strong enough, you can always let him run at an adventure party, and then go fear me, and then they'll attack it, and then the poison cloud will be... Uh... Well, it'll... It'll do its job. <laughs> it's gonna run after Indrid, <laughs> constantly going, FEAR ME! The flow is nerves of steel. <laughs> Cheap me will fly over, land in front of you, Eatsley. Cheap me reporting for duty. Point me at him, sir. I'll skewer him. I understand, Cheap me. Come, we will teach you many things. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, he thinks you're the leader because you have a flag. <laughs> you have a uh, I'm gonna look at the goal and be like, uh, you need help. No, just. <laughs> uh, give them something to do. Give that one a name, as he points to the ghoul. Um, and, uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so give them something to do, give them a name, and then go about your duties, and then we can talk. Unless the alert goal. Mm, good. Okay, um, we're gonna do some downtime actions. We're on day seven. Woohoo! Who? Oh no, we're on day eight. That's right, we did the first full week. Day eight. All right, Susie, uh, you've already done one downtime action for your minor evolution. I'm at least another day off because I need to get that um, magic potion right. So, well, yes, but. That was number. That was evolution four. So Correct. you did yeah. evolution on one, three, five, seven. Yeah. So yeah, today would be the day you would do the. Uh... No, you could do it on day seven. It only took you one downtime action. Two, yeah, one downtime action to brew, the or to get the sediment. That one day for number three. Um, and then you brewed something, which only took one downtime action because downtime actions are three hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you only lost three downtime actions on yeah. day eight. Um, so you got five left on day eight. Um,. Uh, those potions are potent enough they slightly glow in the dark. Those <laughs> those mana potions. Just slightly. Hmm. Cool. I'm gonna give you to the job of selling one. Uh, are you gonna put it on the quest board or are you actually gonna get try and give him a quest? Give him a quest. All right, Miami roll influence. Oh. All right, Susie. 
You can do it, I believe. Believe! Pass. Uh, nothing pops up. Nah. Darn. Alright, Eatsy. Find out maybe, how much Maybe it's if you worth. wrote it down, or put it up on the job board, or. Um. What was that? I go to you. Try to give you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, he wants to give you a quest. You want to give me a quest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want me, like, define quest? Like, you want me to do a quest for you? I can do that. Yes. Um. Yes. Go ahead and roll me your magic element for destiny. Um. Oh. Uh, Susie. Uh, you can only have one title quest at a time. Quest giver is a title quest. Ah. You can have more titles. More than one. But you have to complete the one you're currently on before you can get another title. Nice. Uh, if you're just awarded a title, that does bypass having a... Uh, quest, for sure. Quest. But that means you don't get the instructional. So you can get the quest giver <laughs> title... As long as you complete all of the requirements for the quest giving, you know, title quest. Yeah. But you'll never know what those are <laughs> definitively unless the, you, you get the quest itself. But since you have this other quest. Nice. Yeah, you can get titles. It's just you can only have one title quest at a time. Yeah. They're too strong otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Eatsley. He wants to give you a quest, and you're like, Hey, isn't that my shtick? <laughs> Do you want to give me a quest, or you want to ask me for something? Uh, I, I want to ask you for something. I just I just thought I'd you know, do a little skate here. No, it's fine. Um, try to copy you, but I'm not as good as the Eatsley. My apologies. And it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I made this potion. It's real cool. I want you to see how much it sells for. Mm, sure. I'm thinking we could probably use one of these to uh, get some items for from the Mox Market, and uh, you know, uh, I can I can make more. And I'm I plan on making more, but uh, you know, just uh, get an idea. Pizza, I made um, you a handout so you could put all of your quests in there. Oh, okay. It's an extra <laughs> sheet. I have the most quests right now. Well, the ones you give. <laughs> oh, fair. These are the ones for your quest giver title. Okay. I don't know. I can't edit it. Uh, yes, you sh should. Shit. Uh, did I pick the wrong person? Oh, I did. Oops. There it goes. There you go. Okay. See friend network up there for you? Okay, good. Um, high grade mana potions of that purity, and purity does matter. Mm -hmm. Um, upwards of a thousand dungeon gold. Uh, you're not sure the cap. Um, you know rarity and scarcity of potions of this purity, especially out in the desert. Ah, oh, wildly flux. How much these are worth? Especially if they're fresh, properly kept, uh, the ingredients used, the skill of the alchemist, uh, the tools that they use. There's so many variables. Desert price, probably 12k dungeon gold at least per, mm -hmm. give or take. <laughs> and there's a lot of give and there's a lot of take on that number. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, it's okay, so... Uh, there's also no label or brand label on the bottle, such as like a, a symbol, um, which is a big detractor because that's something people ingest or pour on themselves. Yeah, they don't know what they're dealing with. I got. Yeah, they don't know what they're dealing with unless they absolutely know their potions. Um, and not a lot of people are willing to fork out that much cash unless they're so desperate and so wealthy and they just don't care. Um, 
no one's going to pay for that. You're probably looking at 120 gold without a proper s brand or symbol or something that people will trust this. Trust is the big flux on this. Well, you got to start somewhere, right? So that's that's good. Now, Monstre, they'll drink this if they know it's made by Monstre because mm -hmm. they, that's trustworthy. And even if they do die, well, they can just get re reconstituted. I was but, thinking calf's, uh, Crafts Fair, like, uh, just have, like, a little spider web uh, uh, thing on the side. The best you could probably do with this current thing is brand the bottles. Yep. Sell it to Ming. Ming will get your brand out there. Yeah. Because yeah. Ming will guarantee its authenticity and its quality. Or Ing. Any of the monster merchants. Or major merchants that know what they're looking at. Even human merchants. Especially human merchants. If they, if they give a, a thumbs up. Downside of the brand, if you do well, people are going to go looking for it. And if you can't keep up, people forget well, your brand. That's fair. Um, I was thinking of like um, doing a rainbow um, charismatic kind of um, like just thread around the uh, around the bottle. I thought that'd be cool. Um, but uh, oh, monster thread. Yeah, just like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my, my my thread from the rider spinner, spirit spinner, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, uh, if you put a basic symbol on the engraved on the, the crystal bottle, and then also Wrap it. put yeah. like some sort of accessory on the bottle, yeah, very fancy. Yeah. Um, so Alec was asking actually a pretty good question. Um, I think Eatsley, you have the the vault um, handout, don't you? Yes, I do. All right. Um, everyone, everyone has access to it. Uh... In what location? I don't even have access to Desolator. Luke. Oh, I don't have it either, but I don't really care. All right. They were helping me pull that out. There it is. Desolator loots. Okay. There you go. Hmm. Uh, there is a lot more stuff on there. Um, because you guys have the stuff from the Orb of Nareem, and also the stuff from the Desolator, and uh, stuff from all the adventures you're pulling in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the ridiculous amount of money and supplies and stuff. It's At certain points in the day, people are just throwing stuff into chests and into corners into the vault, because it's you guys are just that wealthy. Piles of gold that you just don't have containers for. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, those mana potions, Eatsley. Uh, potions are tough because uh, they're one-time use. A lot of people don't want to spend 12k dungeon gold on a potion. Especially yeah. a potion bottle. Well, the bottle, there are, there's a lot of refund and resell yeah. uh, value in those it. bottles. If you keep it. Yeah. If you keep it. Especially if you custom make the glass crystal bottles with a special property so that even after the contents are drank the bottle is still really valuable mm -hmm. and because you branded the bottle people will also want to just buy your bottles even if there's no potion in them originally so yeah I'll tell you uh, okay. uh, these are high grade very neutral but these are absolutely made by humans and from the mages association from the capital Mm. Any assessor could, could uh, of any level, could determine the origin of the bottle, the crystal bottle. So um, we actually have a wish. We don't have a genie bottle anymore. Well, I, yeah, talk about the wish sometime. Mm -hmm. Not right now. Sometime. Yeah. Hmm? 
and Notch decided to squish it and killed it, so we got a wish in return. Oh. No, no, no. What she did was she bound it with marks to make it to where it would have a uncorrupted wish. And then okay, it would die. that's less rude. Because genies are brute in with, so... Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, so for my uh, extra five, I'm going to just be putting them into uh, working on finishing up the mastery or getting the fourth check mark for um, for cooking. That's what I'll be doing. All right. I have well, we have all kinds of new new critters, so I have to. Uh, I have to, you know, get them a, a good welcoming um, feast for them. Mm-hmm. Um, there are there is some charcoal that you can give the salamander. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to feed him gulpers, napalm slime just yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah. once the salamander becomes accustomed to it, um, it then looks to the next stage for its growth. You'll be able to yeah. feed it to him for a long time, but he'll have an accelerated growth. He'll become really big, very fast. Yeah, and uh, have, we won't have the rebuilds for it. And then you're going to need slow. to look for the next best thing beyond gulper paint palm slime. Where are you going to get that? No, no. So we'll take our time. Mm. Sounds we good. Can go over, beat up the dust later, and just keep him alive. Nah, just feed him that that bead of desolator fire. I think that was uh, used. We don't have that anymore. Yeah, no. that's been used. Oh. Oh well. We used it to uh, open up the, um, the the chains on the bird. No. On the lunar phoenix. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, open uh, a portal to the elemental plane of fire. Well, he doesn't eat. He can eat fire, but what he eats is combustible and flammable ah, things. He's fuel. I see. Open he- a portal to the elemental plane of wood. Uh, he would burn that place out. <laughs> um, anything that burns slow and long, like coal uh, or charcoal or anything that you know he doesn't just burn through immediately. That's mm-hmm. that's the best thing to feed him. So, you guys do have a, a small deposit of coal from your diggings, but uh, you're not sure how fast that will go. All right, nice little feast. Um, Phil, you just digging? Uh, I mean, aside from those evolutions, whenever you want to do those. Uh, well, those will be several days out if you want. Uh, uh, done in order. It would be the major, then the superior. Do you? Well, the major requires a week downtime, yeah. like in between, and then the superior yeah. will be. I don't it have takes- any plans for other evolutions aside. Okay. Uh, question comes down to: Do you want to wait for Susie to complete her catalyzer quest? Well, I'm only using one catalyst, and that's going to be for the superior, which is later anyway. Okay. So let's do. It'll cost you three DTA, I believe, for uh, a major. Two. No, two. Yeah, two. Yeah. Okay, so let's Let me... take a look at what you sent me. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay, major evolution. Uh, intrinsic change, trait alteration, hit points by five of toughness times two. So I have a trait that is um, I double hit points by toughness bonus. The alteration would be changing it. To instead of from the toughness bonus to just uh, every five points instead. Instead of basically, basically instead of doubling one half of my hit points, I'm just gonna double all of it instead because hit points are gained. Uh, it needs a catalyst, points. or it needs to be part of a superior evolution. Or higher. That's a very strong for a major. 
doubling your hit points. I mean, it was just a might select, so... Uh, where is the... Uh... What's your hit points now? Oh, 70 after multiple uh, doubling effects. It would give me... Let me do math uh, here. It well, would how be much health would this of... give you? Uh, let's see, that's 7... It would give me... Let me get out calculator. I think like 12? Like 12? Would, no, no. It would give me 6 Listen hit points before any doubles. It would give me 6 additional hit points. Right, uh, before that's all fine. the other doubling effects. That's fine. <laughs> Alright. Um... Uh, another interesting change. Okay. The alteration. Uh, Apocalypse engine effects to hyperbeam. Yes. You may recall that uh, you told me that when I first made it to to do that, I felt it would be more appropriate to just to do it with another evolution instead. Yeah. All right. So if you hit somebody with hyperbeam. Or an object with it. Uh, it you can apply the whatever. Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh. Hmm. I mean, are you talking for talents? Yes, well, for talents. Hmm. For stuff like the um, like lightning attack. Nope. You're gonna need weapon skill. Strength is not. It's a. It's a skill thing. You need to know how to lightning attack. You could. You could. It would be something else if you replaced it with strength. Mm. It, so no. Mm. You could also just use that to increase your weapon skill. Uh. That's true. I'd give you fifteen. Yeah, that's probably enough for what I need for, so sure. Alright, so intrinsic change trait. No. Yeah, so that'll just give you 15. 15 okay, weapon go. skill, putting it at 25. Skill mastery parry. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let me just. Right. Mastery of parry. Alright, uh, did you get the description I was doing for. Oh, how I was going to treat mastery? Um, I was here for it. It was one... Instead of spending a fate point, it's just a flat application. Mm-hmm. Of, uh, of the bonus of the core of the, characteristic. Yeah, so it's uh, degrees of success equal to mm -hmm. character. Uh, you can no longer buy it uh, with merit, but you can buy it with evolutions and through DTA. Uh, okay. Uh... Yeah, those are the two that I want it for probably the most. Um, yep. So it's mastery. Let me just write that in really mm -hmm. quick. Add additional sus ability bonus. After that is uncharacteristic, a natural willpower. Let me scroll down to this. Okay, I'm at a natural willpower. Uh, you. Oh, you got forbidden knowledge divine? I want forbidden knowledge divine. Because I figure it'll probably help with whatever the priest thing does. Did you? Or is this a superior? I thought this was a major or something. That would. Oh major. yeah, that would be under. Yeah, that'd be a superior. Uh, sorry, I scrolled down too far. 
Oh, yeah, that was under superior. You scrolled down too far. Yeah, we, have, we haven't gotten to that. Okay, uh, unnatural willpower again. Jeez, okay. Um, uh, that would be my second one. Okay. Um, it'll be regard your bloodline. Sure. Um, you get a plus 20 to resist your bloodline when encountering objects that you would be ensorcelled, in, entranced, uh, enchanted, or beguiled by things that make you want it, make your blood boil, make your dragon go mine. Bloodline. Um, this applies to, because you already have a baseline for dealing with your bloodline. This actually applies to objects that you normally wouldn't get resistance bonuses to? I don't actually uh, have a baseline resistance to my bloodline. Yes, you do. You built one after Falgor. Obsessively. I, I built a... I took an unnatural willpower mm -hmm. that lets me make an awareness test yes. uh, to resist mental intrusion, or to detect mental intrusion and mind control. Uh, this resistant. one will help you then just give you a plat bonus to anything that would try and force your bloodline or anytime your bloodline kicks up for greed. Yeah. Uh, this will also help you not attack people that get if anywhere in proximity or touch things that are part of your horde. So yeah, just plus 20 to resist bloodline greed. Yes. Alright. Uh, uh, the next would be the the one two star quality which would be magic resistance the uh the actual quality magic resistance mm -hmm. which i'll put in in a bit and then after that is improvement of attribute my current destruction attribute is has is level four as it has been increased uh three oh, wow. times previous yeah Oh gosh, destruction level four. Oh yeah, okay. I'm I'm gonna increase it again with the superior to. Okay. Uh, um. So. Let me. Uh, I'll just copy paste what I already have for destruction in the chat for you. Yes. Okay, so the power that starts to roll through you with this uh, this upgrade, um, this will be the last destruction upgrade you can get safely before mm. you get bigger, older, stronger, more durable. Basically, you become a higher grade of dragon. Okay. Because the amount of destructive power your body can wield is not that great. It's not full enough. Cool. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't get more destructive power, it's just you will not be immune to its own effects. Okay. You know? But for now, um, this one's going to be your first major destructive upgrade. Cool. Um, anytime you draw blood or hurt somebody while Apocalypse Engine is running, um, roll a 1d3. On a 1, they lose 1 health permanently. On a two, they re they lose one regen permanently. Or three, they lose a spell slot or Mercury or any of the magic element permanently. When you deal damage, walls. If you hit a fighter and you roll a three, uh, probably nothing will happen. It may not work. Um, but if he has really magical items, it might target the magic items instead. Roll 1d3. Okay. 1 is... Uh, they lose a maximum wound. <laughs> they lose one permanent wound. Um, wound? 2. They lose one Two. permanent regen. Gen. And 3. They lose... 1 Mercuria. Uh, 1 spell slot. Curious slash uh, five mana. 
Slot. or targets a magic item. Uh, element destruction or uh, uh, attribute destruction gets way more powerful from here, but your vessel can't handle it. But you can oh. pursue it if you like. That's fine. It w This may change what happens with the superior a bit. Okay. All right. So the next thing uh, was improve synergy ice. As I uh, do you not no longer skid around synergy. frictionless on ice. You have full control. So synergy ice. So uh, if you want to slide around on ice, you can choose to do so, but this doesn't force you to do so anymore. No longer affected by the slipperiness of ice. Uh, after this is a fate point. Done. Yeah, I'll just scroll up to there. Your maximum is five. Uh, next, increase three skill levels. One check in dragons, or the uh, knowledge dragons. The other is two checks in philosophy. Okay, and done. Then, Lastly, for major, is characteristic increase strength, which is currently at 44. Uh, go ahead and add... <laughs> eight. Eight, okay. So that is... Um, that would be 52. Mm-hmm. All good? Uh, all good. Okay, that took two. Um, Susie's done three on her day eight. Uh, let's... Eadsley, you were going to work on... Oh, uh, I was working on, uh... Well, reading... The paper. Or the, uh, dual spec. Or multiplexing. Okay. Uh, you do need to spend one downtime action to talk to Goal and to assign a name to the Ghoul. Mm -hmm. uh, and deal with the Cheekney and the Ghoul. Yeah. Uh, so I'll assign three downtime actions. So one to name the Ghoul, one to assign the Ghoul and Cheekney to do things, and one to talk to Lord Ghoul. Remember, these are all three hour chunks. Yeah. You don't need three hours to name the Ghoul. Fair. Uh, name and assign the Cheekney as well. Like, put the two together. What's his uh, name? Uh, his name is going to be, uh, his name's going to be, um, Ugix. Ugit? Ugix. You t gotta type it in, I don't know. That Ugix. Works. Ah, okay. Ugix. Um. Uh, And uh, East is going to help uh, cheat me find a weapon. Uh, well, he has a weapon starting to... weapon. Uh, and he can't use the downsize ability until he's a hero. Yeah, no, but like, so, uh, hmm, what weapon does he have? Like, I'm uh, he has a little sword bastard sword that's no bigger than a toothpick. Sword. Okay. Um. Like, literally, starter fighter equipment. Yeah. He's just gonna look at it. Uh, he's just gonna do a, two, a few things. He's gonna give him a quarter staff, okay. or well, like a little staff for training. Mm -hmm. Um, and be like, I want you to try a few things. Um, except like a little dummy. I'm okay. Like, I want you to try striking, charging. And how you think a block would happen. Like, kind of like get into that. Get into the ideas that maybe he wants to use something that's not a bastard sword. Uh, he can train with some gecko archers. Yeah, I'm having train with some gecko archers as well. Uh, Gekasan yeah. the Blooded can take this guy under his wing, but that Gekasan's a badass. Yeah, and we're not going to have him. <laughs> Might train smack with this, poor, this poor sparrow knight around. <laughs> I'm not going to have him train with Gekasan. I'm going to have him train with some of the other, like, those under Gekasan. Not Gekasan himself. 
because I have an idea for him. And he's okay. kind of and... what the Sparrow Knight is like combat wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, he does not even he does not play fair ever. He always <laughs> flies and darts around, and uh, the gecko archers literally just start pulling bows out and try and shoot him down. <laughs> um. I'm, I'm gonna roll for him because he could be in big trouble. No, oh no, <laughs> he's he's well on his way to training. All You're right, uh, what does Ugix do? Uh, Ugix is mm. he's a bit of a fresh ghoul. Yeah. Um, monster lore does show that the ghouls will rot and die on their own. Mm -hmm. Um. And their monster core is kind of weird. Uh, if it's left in a place for too long because the body gave out, uh, it'll just disappear. And then it'll you'll just the nearest dungeon will have a ghoul that reconstitutes that from the dungeon core. Interesting. Uh, a lot of scavengers bring ghoul cores uh, into their homes. Um, especially in the in the woods or swamp, and uh, critters go really strong off of them. Um, I... The critters are the ones without monster cores themselves, um, or they bring them to dungeons. Sure. Um... In the desert, he'll probably need need to be reconstituted every week. <laughs> uh, it takes an it takes only ten minutes to reconstitute a ghoul at this level. Okay. Um, so I know ghouls are mostly found in graveyards, correct? Not really, no. Okay. Um, ghouls can be any where anyone fell and died. Mm -hmm. Um, ghouls are actually, uh, their monster cores can actually roll over, like kind of roll to a dead body and just possess it. That's the new ghoul's body. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to assign him the graveyard. Okay. And his goal is to make it as comfortable for him to live in. Mm. Make sure that the dirt is soft. So that's why, if he needs to, he can, while defending the room, roll into the dirt. Okay. Yeah, and... he'll just start dragging bodies. <laughs> <laughs> um... And uh, Ethel is going to teach him during this time as well the move Earth ability that he has. So he, so he. Oh, can... as a subordinate. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So he can use the move Earth. To what does Cheapney get for a, as a subordinate? Cheapney is going to get a few things. Cheapney is going to first. Uh, Ethel is probably going to get. Well, him... remember, if a subordinate direct subordinate gets one power directly from you. Oh, true. Uh. Eatsley is going to give Cheapney, uh, I had an idea for Cheapney, um, Eatsley's going to get, where was it? Do, 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 uh, do, do, do. give me a second thing on Cheapney, because I have a few ideas for him. It doesn't need. Well, it does need to be immediately, though. So. Yeah. Um. I'm going to give him home ground. Okay. Perfect. And then you gave Ugix move Earth. Right. Yeah. They're uh, they're off to the races. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Ugix is very slow, so he's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna take him several downtime actions to do, um, even a simple command. Yeah. Because he's, um, he's a shambler. Yep. And we're also going to give Cheapney. I think he's going to give him, like, try and make a little lance for him at some point. Okay. You'll have to do that with another downtime action. Yeah. But okay. more important things right now. Yes. Uh, So that you're going to go talk to Goal for another day, TA. Mm -hmm. what, what you're going to mm, you kind of slink on over. Uh, Lord Goal. Mm hmm. We had a visitor in the third wave. 
I recognize. She I... informed me of things that I feel is pertinent for you to know. Very well. There's going to be an event that will happen soon. Hmm. Soon is relative, I guess, for them. There will be an invasion. I've I've suffered many invasions from the demons. That's ah, uh, the black. Yes, I've seen one, and it was the only time the Great Pyramids were ever truly threatened. Yes, they actually had. Uncharacteristically, if you can believe this, the Great Pyramids actually evacuated all non-essential warriors and personnel into the Pyramids' core. They don't really care for us, you see. We're expendable. But that was the one time we were ever herded to safety. There mm -hmm. were... A long period of time I don't didn't really I don't really have much information for you all I know is that the sun the the entirety of the sun was eclipsed and there was a rending tear in the fabric that be and what poured out gave the, ph the pharaoh himself concern it was dealt with um, but I was not permitted to leave even after the battle was done and when I was permitted it was as if nothing ever happened there was no signs of battle there was nothing no sign of what came and the Sun was as it was always so Watch for star signs and the passage of our celestial objects in the sky. I do know that it requires an eclipse. I understand. It was under my knowledge that she wished for the monstre to lead the attack this time. Again. Uh, were they certain where it was going to happen? An exact location, or that it just was going to happen? It just was going to happen. Very well. So we don't know which region. She was convinced it would be here, though. At least she made it sound so. Interesting. Well, there are regions as to where it happens more often. I do know that wherever it does happen, the Aether disappears. It's like a dead space. And it is choking. It is uh, unhealthy to be in that place if you're a creature of Aether, which we all are. We breathe it in every day. You use it to evolve. They're not... So, hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And she said it was because of an accident that you made. Me? Yes. Oh, that accident. Well... Am I being directly punished for it? No. Very well. But hmm. I wished for you to be aware. I am considered aware now. If the monster are to take charge of this and it is part of my mistake, I must be there personally. So we'll have to strategize when that gets closer. Because we'll need to determine how bad of a threat this is going to be and what type of forces can be mustered. Because 
if the menagerie is to be wiped out in this attack, I might ask some of you not to participate in said battle. So there is longevity of our home. Which means if I were to fall in such a battle, one of you would have to give up their core to be the dungeon lord. If the menagerie were to continue. And I would like a succession and a contingency planning place for that. But to do so, your core would have to be significant, considering the upgrades you, you all collectively did for our home. Yes, Lord Cole. You can see how large the dungeon core is. That could fit in no creature other than the Desolator safely. Creatures of that size. That is why the dungeon core must be extracted from the uh, from the vessel. It just grows too large. Yes, but fear not, Lord Cole. We won't let you down. You haven't yet. And uh, even if you do, we all need to learn from our failures and move forward. Strive for success, even in the face of our own failings. Don't ever forget that. If you do fail, I'm not going to condemn you for it. It's a lesson learned. I've made many mistakes myself. One we're yeah. still paying for. <laughs> yes, Lord Cole. I just... Thanks. <laughs> wanted to give you knowledge and insight so you had the time strategize. Forewarned is forearmed. And I know you do not want to scare the rest of the menagerie. No. Matters uh, concerning those creatures are panic inducing, especially if there's no plan and it's just a looming threat with no other information or time frame. So. Confide in those who you wish to. I trust you with that. And, uh... Thank you very much for this, Easley. And you wish for I appreciate you and all my children. You see a pow and walk out. Let's start this training. Okay. How many downtime actions you got left for day eight? Day eight, that would be. Do you have eight a day? Yes, and we use each downtime is three. Yeah, and so I have five left. So. You're going to devote that to technique number four? We're going to devote that to technique number four. Okay. So five out of 15. Okay, what was number three? total number that you three, needed uh i finished number three uh so how many three, dta did that need uh 10 because it was 5 10 15 i'm assuming 20 and well, 25 yeah, 5 10 15 this is 20 4 is 20 okay because you know number one costs you five two is 10 three is 15 this is 20 yeah mm -hmm. okay um you will get an opportunity there. Uh, there are several Gekasan, or sorry, uh, Gecko archers trying to mysteriously puzzle out the wall. There's several kobolds there now. There's that fighter still trying to mm -hmm. puzzle out number two because you told him he couldn't leave until he figured out the wall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's actually become a very communal spot. I'm going to make a... Uh, the wall of learning uh, as part of the map somewhere mm -hmm. and uh chip in would also be uh, required to learn at least the first technique okay he'll try and work on that all right so you got five out of 20. yep in dread ellie ellie girl ellie girl day eight what you doing you got eight downtime actions what you gonna do <laughs> Ah, this little mushroom guy. Following you around. Going, fear me! I will... I 
will take your life and feast on your flesh as my roots sink deep and drink of your blood. Second, my thrill 20 isn't working. <laughs> He's talking all sorts of smack. Um, I'm gonna firebolt him. <laughs> uh, roll damage. <laughs> I don't think we've ever discussed damage for firebolt. Uh, it's 1d8 plus your spell mod uh, spell, um, modifier. So, uh, your willpower, uh, and every unnatural gives you a plus one. Yeah. 1d8. What's your willpower? It is... It's 5 with 5 unnaturals. So it's, uh... 50 with 5 unnaturals. Yeah, so it's gonna be 1d8 plus 10. E. So it should be 18 total. It looks like it added the floor. So it's yeah, it looks like you made, made a melee ability instead of a ranged one. Yeah. Oops. Uh, that kills the guy. Fear me! Poofs. A little larger cloud of spores. And just his parts go in, all over the floor. Okay. And his little, his, his little monster gem goes bloop. I pick it up. What about the mist? Do you not go? You don't go in the mist, right? What? Oh, I guess I can't go. I wait for the mist to <laughs> Uh, it, it's it'll take a whole downtime action of waiting. I'm busy, so I, I will the manipulate mist. the wind to whoosh it away. Okay, where? Just on the other side of the room. Okay. Uh, let me roll a run day 100 random. One of the kobolds is kind of walking by. He gets hit by the wind, starts choking and foaming, and then falls dead. <laughs> Oops. Hmm. He might need to be reconstituted as well. <laughs> so. Um. So this chest that, uh, survived... The the desolator flames. Yes, what about it? I wanna go check it out. Oh. What are you gonna do with the the dead cobalt and the um uh Fermi's monster core? I'm gonna leave the dead cobalt where he is and I'm gonna take the the Fears Me use monster core with me. Okay. Just, you don't. You just don't care. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no. All right. You go over to this slagged chest. It's a little melted. Is locked. Oh yeah. But it doesn't seem to have a lock to open, because you know that would have been one of the weak stressor points, along with hinges. That would be. Uh, um. That would melt first. The flames would get inside the, the tumblers and completely destroy it. Um, I'm going to try kicking it. Uh, roll strength. Strength is not one of my strong points. Uh... Fortunately, you do not kick it hard enough to stub your toe. Good. Okay. Um.
Lucy, ask Susie if Susie knows how to open it. Uh... No, not really. Um, not much of a lock picker myself. I don't think anyone in our, in our friends. There's no lock to pick? Yeah. Uh, uh, I suppose I could create up of an acid or something that could maybe try it to. Survive the desolator away. flame. But it survived the desolator flame, so I could. Hey, just open, please. Nothing. Ah, uh, open, says me. Ah, uh, that's a cool word. No, nothing. I just made it up. Oh, um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe if we had a skeleton key, but there's no key to put. Um, like I said, the I think the only way to really open it is through some form of cutting. That's just. Or if you like teleport inside of the chest somehow and like collect all the loot and then teleport outside of it. You know what? I'll try. Uh, can I use my uh, my divination to uh, astrally project myself with him when I, you know, uh, what's, what's the word? I meditate to walk through the chest to see if I can look inside of it. Or is it protected from that? It'll cost you a DTA, which may interrupt the flow of the day, but it's, that's not too bad. Uh, well, um, I'll I'll do it at the end of the. I'll do it the next day. I'll say I can do that for you tomorrow, but I'm a little busy um, right now. Injured. It's not protected against it. That's cool. Though. I'll have you roll a roll of your choice. It's going to be off a of raw characteristic, but a roll of your choice. Okay. Um, if it's divination based, you think it would be off the spell, so no influence. Okay. Uh, so you're saying I don't have my unnaturals, just the right base, or just base? Okay, seventeen. Um, you get a bad feeling. You're not ah. sure what it is or where it comes from. You're not threatened going in, but you get a bad vibe. Not f yeah, vibe. Vibe is the better word. You get a bad vibe. Uh, you're the the problem is is you're not sure if it's a uh an instinctual vibe of danger or some sort of more complex emotion you're not sure what the uh, air quotes bad so vibe. this is my spidey sense telling me this your destiny fate moon spider spidey sense yeah okay but yeah you can look into it there's no protection nothing to ward you off what are you trying to look at so they're trying to look into the golden chest that survived the Desolator's Flame. Oh. Do you want to look in? Uh, not really. Um, I'll tell, uh, I'll tell Indrid. There's something very bad inside there. And I... Not very I bad, just bad. And you don't know what it is. Or what flavor. or what It, it could be it, a what curse. Um, and if I get cursed, I guess I could always get some, uh, true water. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what it drop it. Yeah, yeah. Drop a cure. Wa true water would remove a curse. Yeah. Um, oh, I know that what's in there. Okay, never mind. So, uh, I, I don't. Maybe we can get Eatsley um to check her out, assess the the chest to see more information. But I can, I can go in. I just feel like it's gonna be um. A bad time. That's okay. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is take a uh, arm load of gold. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it back to my room. 
And I'm gonna use some of um, Gulper's napalm to melt it all around the monster core gem. Which monster core? The uh, the mushroom? Yes. Okay. So, let me get this straight. You're trying to trap him in a, a golden... A gold tomb of dungeon gold? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to tell any of you guys, though. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this is trauma, but uh, it's just me. <laughs> All right, you hear it here first. Um, hmm. Matt must be mentally processing that. Did you hear what she said? Uh, I'm trying to get a thing. Okay. Uh, basically, do you want to say it again? He's trying to get a thing. To get a yeah, thing. no. Say it again. I'm listening. Oh, I'm um, taking the Fear Me's monster core, and I'm taking some dungeon gold, and I'm using Gulper's napalm to melt the dungeon gold all around the monster core. You do know this is a child, the second gen child of the dungeon. They are I to hate be. it. It needs to die. <sighs> Uh, we'll be safe in there. It's just like uh, a cozy little. All right, now you melt the gold around the core. Okay, what now? I'm gonna bury it in my room. No, wait. I'm gonna feed it to Gulper. No, right. we're, not, we're not gonna let you feed the, the dungeon. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Right. Okay, I'll bury it in my room. <laughs> Okay. You buried it in the your gold, room. But he's gonna eat the the thing. He's gonna eat the core. That's true. I do need it later. You can't. I can allow you to kill cores. It's not. I'm not gonna allow you to do that. I don't care how many eye rolls you give me. It's not gonna <laughs> be able to do it. We'll see. Okay. She said, here and now, we'll frickin' see, boyo. <laughs> you heard it here. Sorry. I don't think anyone heard it anymore. Battery. Want your keyboard back? No. No. Maybe. It. Maybe. Um. So, how many downtime actions did that take? One. One. And I've got seven more. Seven more. Did you, you're including your um your mage training, right? But, well, that's the thing, is I can't get my mage training done with this little mushroom fucker following me around. Now I got some peace. Yeah, I'm gonna do... So I'm gonna do... Okay. I'm gonna do seven more downtime actions of my... 
uh, Oniromancer instructional thing. Which will get me to 35. Oh, so you're done? Or are you? No. No? No. Because we talked about. Yeah, I need half downtime actions to rest and half to read, don't I? Mm hmm. So. I will do. You can always sleep the day. Hmm? Sleep to the day. Nap. Sleep. Get the half and half. Yeah. How much are you. What are you missing of? Or is it 35 all... for each? For your downtime action. I've got seven downtime actions to use. Mm -hmm. I can use half of them to read. Mm -hmm. I have to use half of them to sleep. Right. So I'll use three to read and three to sleep. And... One sec. I don't know what to do with the last one. I thought you had... I thought there was um, eight downtime actions for yep. the day. Yeah, but I used one to... Oh, you used one already. Oh, okay. I used one for murder. Yes, you did use one for I was really Yeah, I enjoyed it too. Oh, that's just me. Portion control. Okay, back. Welcome back. Yes. So Allie pretty much has her day uh, planned besides one downtime action, I think? Yeah, I need to figure out what to do with one downtime action. You can always check out the downtime action chart if you want to. Good idea. Absolutely. Already pre pre-done, so might as well keep working on them. So that's day eight for Allie. Day eight for Eatsley. I'm gonna oh. add another downtime action to my strength. Okay. Uh, day eight for Phil is just digging. Uh, uh, is he said he'd be uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, back. Yeah. So um. Yeah, pretty much until the next evolution time comes around. It's going to be digging out the yep. second floor. Um, everyone else can determine where we uh, want to put the new core room. Phil, you got a quest? Sure. Day eight into your digging. Um, a quest will pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of an odd quest. This one, just so you are, uh, just tell me when you're ready to write stuff down. Okay, let me. Let's see other quests. Um. Put the divider here. Okay, hit me. Uh, the quest is called Diggy Dargan. Diggy Dargan. Okay. And it starts with, so we heard you like digging. Mm-hmm. Um, if, basically, uh, this is a quest for diggers like you. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to dig a total of a thousand miles worth of digging. There's no time requirement. 
uh, prior distance does not count. Um, every hundred miles of digging, uh, you get a milestone achievement. Basically, you get a you get something from this quest every hundred miles of digging. There is no fail. Well, failure is uh, you have died somehow before you complete the quest, which means you lose you, you lose the quest. So, if you dig all one thousand miles, you get ten upgrades or ten somethings, ten rewards. Uh, failing is just you die before you complete the quest. Um, the first seven uh milestone uh rewards are triple question mark uh milestone eight and nine have four question marks and the milestone 10 so your the thousand thousandth mile that you've done it has four question marks and an exclamation point behind it hmm, very good Three, four, and an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Which means okay. there's a surprise. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Any distance, any amount, even if you're like clearing out a room, that counts towards the miles. Sure. Actually, we'll, we'll call it kilometers. Those are better. It's more rounded. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I don't really use them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, pretty good. Um, depending on showing how well you dig, um, each downtime action will give you three progress you devote to digging. Okay? Yeah. Uh, what it. I'm sorry. What's the denominator for kilometers? I forgot. Uh, it's a thousand. A thousand meters. No, no. No, no, no. K, I meant. Like, it's, yeah, it's K just, something. Just K. Big K. KM. KM is kilometers. Oh, KM, sorry. Big K, little m. Okay. Um, and what was this about downtime digging? Uh, DTA. Each DTA will give you three progress. Do you want to... Uh, that you devote to digging. Go over to the cactus place again? Or do you want to... So, it'll, it'll get you three kilometers per... keep getting money. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and you do eight, so eight times three. There you go. Got okay. twenty-four. Delicious. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I know what Isis can do on a second day. Um, did everyone complete their day eight? Susie, uh, no, Susie, you you still have. Did you do your extra five downtime actions? Yep, I put them towards uh, cooking. Remember? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll me five cooking rolls. Oh, you're gonna have me make cooks. Okay. Uh. I'll use driven on the 84. Sixty-two, sixty-two, fifty-six, sixty-seven. I mean they look like pretty average. And it's not my best work for sure, but um hardy. Uh no, this is some great work. Because you you know you're adding up your degrees of success. That's a lot okay. of time spent cooking. It is very yeah. delicious. Uh, go ahead and reduce your insanity by one. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, you get a little bit faster in using your tools, and you're a little bit more attuned to your kitchen. Okay. All right. I 
I like it. That's good. Any other multiple? Plus 20 from... Uh, so we're on day nine, I believe. Mm-hmm. Nine. Yep. <laughs> Trying to get one last... Did, did you ever look through the uh, the stuff we got from the caravan that Grim no. picked up? Again, there's been so much I'm still having to go through. I know. We need another one of you. Uh, we just keep getting loot and we don't know what to do with it. Yeah, and it takes me so long to start identifying. Anyways, uh, on top of that, Issa has a plan for today. Oh, nice. Yeah, Ethan's gonna gather up all the little kids and all give them that. a quest. Mm -hmm. Well, not a quest. Ethan's gonna help them with their first evolution. Uh, you can assign it as a quest. You can yeah. basically call it Evolution Day. Show up for yours. Uh, success. You know, help with evolution. <laughs> Failure. You missed out. You can literally make a quest out of it. Uh, yeah, no, Ethan's gonna make a quest out of it that. All the new ones have to show up. Uh -oh. Can't be completed if one's missing. That's that uh, injured. Well, if one's missing, what are you gonna do? They're gonna have to find him. Injured. Yeah. Do you know where Fear Me went? Just asking. Uh, yeah, who is asking? Uh, Eatsley. Is, is Eatsley yeah. asking me directly? Eatsley will ask directly. Because <laughs> we're missing one. <laughs> and he was last seen following you around. Hmm. Hmm. Have you dreamt the treasure room? I have not. Were you in the treasure room last? I was checking out a chest there. Which chest? An unopenable one. You already have information from Susie about the, uh, the dangers of said que uh, chest. I was like, I know which chest you're talking about. I know it's in that chest, too. Yeah, go check it out. Did you put him in the chest? I can't get into the chest. All right. Susie, did you kill him? Not Susie. Uh, Indra, did you kill him? I know you didn't like him. You kicked him three times when you first saw him. It's just that uh, you're not going to answer. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay. I'm just curious, that's all. <laughs> I can't lie, because I don't have any fellowship. <laughs> Indrid, if his monster core shows up in my room, I won't ask questions. A little bit of predicament. Maybe, maybe it will. <laughs> Good. I'd hate to have to inform Lord Cole that one of our new members went missing, and that someone from inside attacked and killed him. 
and is hiding its monster core. Oh, you're gonna get tattled on. Feels bad. <laughs> Adler. Fucking snitch. Anything for my Lord Cole. Did you get the seeds? It's what seed? The seeds for the season. I can't get any of my seeds because I've spent all my my stuff. I can get one actually. No. 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 We can hear you. Did you want to uh, look into the chest today? Me? No. I'm Whoever can. Or whoever wants to. I think easily should. I know it's in the chests. You wanna tell us? But you should look. Hmm? The gold chest, the one that wasn't melted. Yes, I had that one identified by notch. And that's in my personal notes for a reason. I was told not to tell any other people about it. Oh. Okay. So you're just gonna let us find out ourselves? No, Neatly's gonna go put a warning label on it. Okay. I'm like, warning, do not touch. Well, there Ooh. we have it. It's keeping secrets. Neatly says you can't touch it. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, he said we'll just go put that on there as he continues reading his uh silver leaf or his gold leaf paper. What's the label you put on it? Do not touch, do not open. Signed Lord Gold. Well, he has to sign that. Yes, but he trusts me to make these decisions for him. <laughs> you can't say signed by Lord Ghoul unless uh, he actually signs it. Fair. I will sign it by Eatsley. Eatsley hey, thinks he's master of the, the dungeon the... now! <laughs> Banker of the dungeon. Mm. Uh. Murder anybody. <laughs> uh where is the notes about it oh the gold chest there it is gold chest it should be at the back if it's not in my personal notes or in there it's probably my personal notes there is it mm -hmm. Uh, it is da, 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 da. or was it? Because you only have it as wooden, golden wooden chest. Box. Oh, there it is. Hmm. That doesn't mean you can't see what's inside. Just don't open, don't touch, Susie. I'm gonna read between the lines with that one. I don't know what you are going to do about that. Uh, like I said, read between the lines and not. Okay. Uh, I feel... <laughs> I feel like it should be known that I would like to know what's inside the box, but I will uh, refrain from now. I like to know why it's in the dungeon. Otherwise, there are several things that are in our dungeon that we should not have in our dungeon, but unfortunately, getting rid of them is a bigger problem. 
Is it like a uh, certain like a certain box that we have that we right, don't right, open? Right. Or no, no, no. It's it's not the demon cube. We no, no, no. I understand that. Yes, yeah, the golden this chest. Is, yeah. Okay. Um. You could get a better assessment on it, Eatsley. I couldn't. You know what? I'm going to try and get a better assessment on it. Uh, you may need Susie's help and Indrid's help, because Indrid's a troublemaker. Oh. And that's trouble. All right, we'll ask for their help. All right. Oh, it's busy. You're busy? busy? <laughs> yeah. why, why is Indrid busy? Reading. Oh, you're reading? I was just trying to get the but Iron Man suit thing, yeah. But you got invited for one downtime action to uh, to look into this chest. Nah. Nah? Nah. Okay. I will, I will help. I will use my one downtime action to uh, assist. All right. How do you want to take a look at this, Susie? Um... I am thinking, why not I uh, the crystal crab? Uh, okay. Does it have a power that it's kind of like a reflection or a mirror I could do with my divination? Kind of like combine those two things. Uh, you may not see what's true. It's true. But you will see. You will see some facet of the truth, but not the truth itself, because it's an illusion. Remember. Right. Right. So you may, it could come in many, many different versions, such as um, specific details are changed, things are blurry, uh, you may see it from a reflection of a reflection, uh, it may be metaphors that you look at, uh, it could just yeah. be outright lies. Yeah, yeah. But it would very much distance you from what's inside. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to try it out eventually, anyway. Um, Eatsley, is it? Um, if I go in astrally, is this going to damage me at all? Do you think? This? Do you think this is going to hurt? Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten hurts. Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, I know when. Here's what I know. Is that when you need something truly horrible and dark, you can open the box for once. Oh. Uh. Is this going to help out with your class at all? Your. It's going to help me uh, probably properly identify it. Identifying it will help me with my. Uh, one of my job quests, yes. Okay. Um, well, this is why I'm saying we should be careful with it. Along with that thing over there. I don't know exactly where it is, too, at all times. Uh, Susie! Yes? You don't really notice it until he points it out, and then you can't not notice it. Cool. Thank you for it's that, it's that uh, golden Rubik's cube. You knew it was there, but you, yeah. every time you leave the room, you always forget it's there. Uh, little rascal. Um, okay. So. Do we have to deal with it right now? Do you think, do you think it's a good thing to deal with right now? Cause I could, I could gaze upon the moon some more and uh, be ready for this sort of endeavor. Um, I don't think I am. It's my say, do not touch, do not open sign right here. But people want to know. But it doesn't say you can't look. Do not touch, do not open. Fair. Let me, as Easley takes out another piece of paper, tapes to the bottom, and do not look inside. Okay. Um. Very well. I'm not sure what it is, but if you'd like to help me, I'll take this. Or if you'd like to do that another date, 
Yeah, uh, let's he do would. That. He would need to look in. Yeah, I I have you. to go inside the thing, and uh... I'm not sure what's inside it. Yeah, me neither. Easley's gonna close his assessor book and put it away. Okay. Just flop as he snaps it closed. Yep. Okay. Also, All right. Have you seen Fear Me. Who? And then also, have you seen Fear Me, Susie? Fear Me? Yeah. No. A little mushroom. Okay. Oh, Fear Me. Oh, no, I haven't. Yeah. Not have not. Okay. Susie pulls out a paper. Alright, not Susie. <laughs> Eatsley pulls out a paper and begins reading again. And just walks on and walks away. Okay, so, uh. Most interested anybody's ever been in one of the little guys. Well, there's a lot of people interested. All right, so I'm always interested in mine. So, is it yours? Belong to you? It doesn't belong to you either. I'm honestly asking because if he does, I want somebody to take responsibility for his actions. Oh, okay. Uh, I will take responsibility. That's fair. For, I mean, I'll take responsibility for his actions. Oh, you have a you have a taker. So if I give him to you, I never see him again, right? You'll see him again. Either way, you will see him again. You He's in the menagerie. Problem. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> That's going to be a thing that I cannot stop. You're in the menagerie. He is a member of the menagerie. Keep him in a corner away. I'll make sure he understands not to see you. At least he wishes. I got to melons, be in uh, peppers. He does not feel fear. What is gonna stop him from seeing me? <laughs> I didn't say fear. There's many other things. Have you do tried to fear, fear him yet? Besides, just kick him. Uh, he uh, is immune to fear effects. Ah, uh, okay. Obviously, uh, that does not mean he's very thing. perceptive, oh. though. Okay. All right. All right. All right. See, it's through the fear kind of deal. No, he's just, he just, he's not capable of fearing, feeling fear. Which means he also has no flight response. Take a fireball to the face or something like that. Oh yeah, he, he did. He took a fireball to the face and died. He didn't even dodge. He was just like, fear me! And here you see my dilemma. I was going to wait for my turn, but I'm really curious about what's happening to him in this gold coffin. It opened up. You can deliver it to Eatsley. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll dig it up and I'll open it up and see what's happened. It's just, just the cores in there. Just chilling in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, you basically entombed him in dungeon gold. Okay, I'll re-entomb him. Oh, gonna drop him off in gold? I thought you were gonna give him to Eatsley. I never said that. Oh, okay, yeah. He goes back into dungeon gold. Bye bye <laughs> Yeah. Is it... Whose turn is it? Um, You are going to spend how many DTA f to finish your book today? Okay, I'm going to have to spend... Um, I think I've got... Do, do I still have eight time, downtime actions? For the day, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use all eight finishing up my book then. Okay. Book is finished. Okay. Uh, congratulations. You have 
and successfully become the class Oniromancer. Would you like this to override your current class, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Oniromancer comes with uh, a basic skill, just like every class does. Dreamwalking. Thanks. You may actually want someone sleeping. If you enter a meditative state, you can enter their dreams. Sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. uh, your dream self will have a separate stat sheet. Which I will make for you now. Uh, and you can also pick what your dream self look like. So you can pick your own picture as well. Okay, I'll have to take some time to see that picture. Okay. Mothman. I've been waiting for this class for so long. There you go, Dream Indrid. Um, everything does remain zero at the start and is completely blank. Based off of your picture you pick and who you want to be while you are in the dream will determine what is filled out on the sheet. And it doesn't need to do anything with being a mothman. But it could if you'd like. Oh. Well, I can't imagine being anything but a mothman, but I'll think about it. Uh, you can also become a different type of mothman. You can have a different picture or... Yeah, I'll probably have a different picture, but... Uh, you can even look up, like, Cthulhu versions of Mothman. It's gonna be cool. I promise. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, that does not need to be filled out now. You do know when you dreamwalk for the first time, you do need a picture for me. And you do need to have a, a solid image in your mind, and most importantly, identity, which needs a... It could be the same name, or it can be a different moniker, or a code name. Like, you need a a name for this dream entity that you are. Yeah. Um, now that you have unlocked the class, you can upgrade it like normal through evolutions. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the book has told you if you want to be a successful aniromancer, you need three things once you complete this book. One, your dream identity. Two, uh, your dream powers and weapons, which you need to construct yourself, and that requires a lot of effort. Sometimes it requires inspiration or uh, enlightenment or basically an idea, but it has to be potent enough that it manifests itself for you. And that may not be easy. It may not be first time either. And three, you need a you need a dream sanctuary. You need a, a base. So somewhere if the worst goes the worst comes to worst and you can't exit the dream or the nightmare or whatever it is, you need a bolt hole you can run to that that at least provides some safety. Okay. And the, if you have those three things, you are a dreamwalker through and through. Mm. Until then, you're an aspirant. You are aspiring to become a dreamwalker. You're not a full fledged one yet. Okay. Um, to dreamwalk, it does require a complex action. So, and it does require you to directly touch somebody. Now, for you, though, if you upgrade your moths with the dream element, you can jump into somebody's dreams if a moth lands on them, but that requires an upgrade and a pricey one. Well, good thing I've been saving up. Yes, you have. Uh, it will require moths. some sort of dream element object for a catalyst to do it, is what I'm saying. Ah, uh, okay. Because you'll have to infuse a single scale? moth. You'll have to infuse a single special moth with the dream element, which will allow you to remote 
as long as the, the, the moth lands on their head, you can jump into their dreams remotely. But otherwise, without that, you'll have to directly touch somebody on the head while they're sleeping. Uh, what that'll do is it'll prevent them from waking up from outside stimuli. But it also means you have to, you're unconscious as well, holding them in, in such a state, you know? Okay, yeah. Which, which means you're helpless if someone discovers you. Okay, um, and the things I needed, I needed an identity? Yep, you need your dream identity. Mm hmm. Your dream objects or armament or okay. whatever you consider is part of it. Uh, Gend is part of that, having a minion, a dream it's... minion. Uh, and you need a dream sanctuary or a bolt hole or a safe room. She picked up Mind Palace, would that work? Can I do? Dream Palace is the closest you can get. Okay. Mind Palace would be a very big upgrade because you can convert that into uh, a manifestation of dreams mm -hmm. as well. But can I bring it, uh, real, real world objects into the dream to be my dream objects? If they have the dream element in their craft. Cool, I need to go pee. I'll be back. Okay. Um, hmm. Excuse me. Very nice. Uh, that's day nine for Allie. Susie, what are you doing on day nine? Um, so the first thing I do is I... Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time making bread. I'm going to be making spools and spools of it uh, to have as my first, let's call it my my first crop of um, okay. uh, moon of of moonlight and darkness um, thread types. Okay. Because um, if I look up to the this if, like what's the uh, is it waning or waxing right now? Waning. It's waning. Okay. So I'm pretty sure waning is the uh, the moon, and waxing is the darkness. Correct. Waxing means it's starting to get brighter and brighter towards the full moon. Waning yeah. means it's going towards new moon. All right. So. Right, so that means it's uh, it's moon element type right now, right? Because it's getting well, brighter. Yes, it's brighter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to be giving that the color um, of like a uh, almost like a purple blue. Okay. If that's the color you want. Yeah, um, and that's the uh, I'll be doing that one first, I suppose. So I'll be uh, spending. Um, getting the day getting that ready so I'll, I'll spend six downtime actions to do that and how much uh, thread are you wanting to make that's a that's a lot of thread yeah i uh, know i, I want to make a a big um uh a big batch because it, it uh, takes a long time to do remember matt like it takes like yes, it three months in order to get it done so i might as well get a lot going that's what i'm trying to do yes if you want to do it like spools or if you want to do it like uh uh I don't really have know how, bolts. I suppose. You're going to create bolts. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then um, would six downtime actions worth be um, six bolts. of them? Two? two? Six bolts. Six, okay. Six for Each downtime action will get you one bolt of fabric. Okay. And that's including all my, uh, my bonuses for getting more out. It just takes me a while to mm -hmm. refill, pretty much, right? So you'd eat lots. Okay. Uh, you also take six fatigue. Six fatigue, you say? Because you've done it. Six. You've done it. Well, each downtime action is three hours. You've been doing mm -hmm. it for uh, eighteen day. hours straight. Yeah, I'm doing it all day. Yes, and that is very exhausting for you. So yep. six. And fatigue. the uh, and then I 
Uh, so we were talking about a, uh, like a, a moon room. If you want, yeah. Yeah, um... You need to get... puncture a hole in the ceiling and then have it covered so the desert doesn't get in. Yeah, um... Can I leave the crystal crabs to do that, or...? Uh, that'll take them a month to cover. Okay, okay. If you want a decent-sized one, because they work so slowly. Of course. Um, I will have them doing that, um, and I'll also uh, bring it outside myself in the meantime. So I'll get the You're looms. not allowed to leave the dungeon, remember? Not for so the we first can't, two weeks. Oh, I figured... Ah, sorry, I, I no thought it meant... No going outside at all. No going outside at all. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um... I guess I'm just preparing the, the thread then in the meantime. Because I can't... If I can't go outside, I can't actually... Um, I can't shine anything. If I don't see any moonlight either, I can't... Uh, I can't place yeah. it somewhere, so... You can uh, just continually prepare. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so I won't, I'll, yeah, I won't, I won't send it out yet, but I'll, I'll get those six and then I'll spend the, the extra two in my, uh, in my mind palace and I'll be, um, focusing on the, my most recent one was the epiphany with the, uh, the shaman, right? The shaman talked about uh, uh, how they lost their vision and how they uh, how the spirits gave it to them. That was kind of an epiphany moment that I needed. Well, to they write were down. born without the they ability to hear it. or see or speak. Okay, right, and the, and the spirits gave them those mm -hmm. things. Right. Yes, but not in the way normal people see or hear right. or speak. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it is a innocent vessel, um, uncorrupted and unpolluted by the world. Yeah, I was just trying to think of why that might have uh, triggered the the reason to go out and kind of write that down. But uh, no, it's because you guys were wanting to fill out the class, the secret class, how to become a spirit shaman. Right, right, right. Because that is, uh, there is no record of it okay. at all. Um, that's um, the case. At yeah, best, let's... you have a bronze border right now for that that yeah. class. No, it's fine. You don't have all the details. Um, I'm actually going to just uh, take a, a nice book out and uh, read some entertainment. Uh, for those uh, those six hours, so I can rest up to uh, what would you like to read? Some fatigue. Um, some. I'm sure I got, we got some romance novels. I'll do that. Oh yes. You want to read a human or a monster romance novel? Uh, a monster one. Okay. Um, it is one of the most widely sold monster romance books. Of course, of course. Um, it actually has to do with a very legendary bloodline. Um, it is a, uh, what is it? Uh, it's almost like a dinosaur. It's one of those, uh, long necked water dinosaurs with the paddle for legs. Mm -hmm. I forget what those okay. are called. They're like a Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. Loctus. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, that's their, the, a Loch Ness. Yeah, legendary bloodline, um, and wolf, yes, moon sir. wolf, moon wolf. So uh, if I can, uh, while I'm reading it, I'll pretty much just like um, dream it out since I am a dream palace. So I'll kind of like have it as a play more than a. Uh... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, the moon element will sync with the main with the uh, one of the characters nice. and. It's a, uh, it's a very sad romance. It's a persistent romance, and it's very different from human romances. The logic behind the moves, um, logic behind the, the attraction is different, mm -hmm. or the illogic even. Um, it How is long just, is the book? Is my question. Um, it's actually pretty short because okay. there's not a lot of wax eloquent. It's only about a hundred pages. Right, right. I can finish that. But in less. Yeah, yeah. 
there's not a lot of romanticism in the novel, mm-hmm. but for every monster, this is this is obviously romance. Okay. Um, and there are there is several forces trying their best to you know to pu- push them apart because the main stipulation is the um, not because they couldn't be together. It's just that the uh, difference in bloodline. Uh, this breed of blockness. Um, is really obsessed with purity of bloodline, purity of strength, because of the predators and other territories in the uh, um, in the valley. Mm-hmm. And it is a very real threat in which the Moon Wolf has to help fight at all times. Um, there is a series of mountain trolls that are the size of houses and uh, they are constantly threatening the lake um the wolf's own faction is constantly trying to spread its territory and these are big dire wolves like bigger than horses type of wolves um there's a massive harpy nest nearby so it's it's traditional monster territories there is no dungeon as it turns out in that area um there's one mention that they suppressed the last dungeon that came out due to the territorial disputes. Can't let it another clan um, form, especially with dungeon strength. And uh, eventually they persevere. And an alliance is struck between the Loch Ness and the Wolves. Good, good. Um, that's the very real feel good parts. It's like, yes, they've triumphed. They've allied the houses, and now they can fight the secret alliance between the harpies and the trolls. <clears throat> Gorgeous. So, yes. Mm, very good. Yeah, I'm just going to try and remove some fatigue. Yep. Um, that pop-up again, once you're once you're uh, done, uh, you'll lose two fatigue. Um, there's that pop-up again. So it basically says, "So you like to learn about monstrae?" Dot dot dot, and it goes away because you've never seen these species before in the vision, in the little movie you made. Yeah, that's all it does. Neat. Okay, you're done for the day, right? I am done. <clears throat> Phil, what are you doing for day nine? Uh, well, I have a floor to dig. You have more digging? Pretty much, for eight hours? Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to do until I evolve again. Okay. So. All right, so go ahead and add another 24. Uh... Do you want to sleep at all? I mean, yes, obviously. I'm gonna... Uh, six or three hours, or more. Just enough to not get fatigued, pretty much. Alright, so then add 18. Because you didn't sleep the last day. Um, so... Sleeping this time. Eight. So add, eight, add 18 to your quest. Okay. Alright, Easley, what are you doing for the day? Uh, so... Did that uh, interaction with me and Indrid, uh, Indrid, uh, me and Susie take uh, downtime to do? Yes, one. Okay. Uh, then we're going to have six downtimes of learning about multiclassing. Okay. Uh, so you pull out the gold uh, embossed paper. Yep. And a pop-up will pop, will show up. Do you wish to use the paper, or you wish to use the uh, the item? Yes or no? Yes. All right. And the paper will disperse and transform into uh, a book. Um, this is an instructional on how to multiclass. 
multi-classing is a little odd on how it's approached because there's multiple ways in which you can approach can achieve multi-classing um but this one is going to require 50 dta to completely cover all right uh you can divide it into three segments though there mm -hmm. is segment one which is 10 dta will get you the first plot of information and with that you can if that's the path you want to choose you can immediately just put the book away for a bit and try and go after that multi-class mm -hmm. um 15 dta after that will get you the second option so total 25 um will get you the second way to multi-class and then the next 25 for a total of 50 will get you the third way to multi-class so there are three chapters three of the the three ways to multi-class on the continent yeah <laughs> Which and is why this is a gold sheaf and why it's so valuable, because it covers the the three ways to do it, not just one way. Yeah. Six. Uh, Ellie. E. Your Oniromancer book, once you've completely read it, you know its contents in your brain. Uh, and you can recall it if you if you sit down and meditate, but the book has disappeared. Once you have finished it, it's gone. Mm. Well, I'm not too worried about that. Mm. I gotta that just means you. no one else can be in on Ironmancer. Only you can. Only me. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's yours. The book's gone. Who cares now? No one else can be it. They can't steal your book because the book doesn't exist. Or wherever it went. <laughs> or maybe someone stole it but they couldn't have because the book disappeared in your hands the moment you turned the last page, read it all, and then closed the book. It just went poof out of your hands. Gone. Interesting. Um, interesting indeed. For Easy's last DTA, he is just going to wait. See if Indrid brings Fear Me. Yeah. Indrid, do you give up for me? No. Okay. Uh, you're, you're reading. Uh, fear me never appears. All right. Stand up. Go find uh, Lord Day Gold. 10. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm oh. finding Lord Gold the last hour. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that means somebody attacked somebody in the menagerie. Okay. And easily can't have that in the home. Okay. So it's gonna have to find Lord Cole. I mean, he's easy to find. Lord Cole. Yes. I cannot find Fear Me. Hmm. A moment. He'll kneel down and put his outward, uh, outward stretched fingers on the ground. That's Indrid. I have. Ah. A pulse goes through the dungeon. Uh, Indrid, you are summoned to uh, Gull. Lord Gull. Indrid rolls his eyes, but nobody can tell because they're all red. <laughs> oh, I like girl. <laughs> uh, you guys go ahead and RP it out. I need five minutes. <laughs> Oh, wait, can we RP it out without Lord Gold here? <laughs> That's the question. Indrid, just give up the orb. It's easy. It's simple. Oh, give up the orb to Lord Ghoul. <laughs> All right. Not to you. All right, we're going to have to talk about punishments now. You killed somebody, jail time. That's how this works, right? Yes, mistress. <laughs> well, you're gonna call me mistress. I do have a collar. I have a collar too. Doesn't belong to you. <laughs> mm, interesting things I learned today. Interesting things I learn. Very pretty. I wear it every day. Oh. 
Excessive sweating does a number on your clothes. I speak from personal experience. <laughs> I recommend not going outside today. It's 105 where I'm at. Um, and I know you live in Southern California, so I believe it's about 105 down there. I even have like blackout I curtains. Courage so Roses is apparently what it's called. I keep forgetting the name, but I was actually diagnosed with it by a doctor. I am sorry. Yeah. Drink a bunch to compensate. But hey, it helps you stay skinny. No, I am overweight. Ah, well... Ah, uh, I got nothing. In theory, should I be say skinny? In theory, but I, I'm back. I eat, I eat more than I expend. All right, you're back. Yes. Indrid is only willing to give up the, uh, the gem to Lord Ghoul. Lord Ghoul will take it. Hmm. Now you're right, Indrid. I am annoyed. Hmm. Enough to kill the second generation of children. He's fine. Just a little crazier. He's a good thing. Adds character. And if I were to do that to you, would you agree? Okay. So this builds character. Ingrid has a lot of character already. Full of murder. But you can always build more character, Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of holds up and he kind of pinches it and then kind of peels off the gold like you would uh, the peel of an orange. See, okay. perfectly safe. Ah, yes, perfectly safe. Indeed. You know what is shinier? A monster core gold. Uh, I assume we're looking at both. Which one is it? They're about the same. The, the, the gold shines wonderfully in the light. It's luster. It's a uh, metallic sheen. But the uh, the dungeon core of Fear Me um, has that kind of reflective glint that Crystal has, with kind of that eerie light from it. It's hard to tell. Different types. You know, I have to agree with you, Indrid. It does build character, doesn't it? Blow up the dungeon! Uh, he kind of looks at it. Why? Indrid is going to start taking out some bombs. Indrid, why do you want to blow up the dungeon? I mean, okay, for fun. You build character! Mm. Okay. Come on, come here. And uh, he will push his hand, and a part of the wall will descend back into a little room. And the walls will harden. <laughs> Boy, is this the time of room? <laughs> yeah. Take your bombs with you. <laughs> I guess oh, I'll take my bombs. Says Room. And as you wish, as you go in, you, he snaps his fingers and all the, the wicks are lit and the timers are ticking. <laughs> and it's like, remember, Indrid, this builds character. And then the wall closes and you are in a perfect granite box. <laughs> and then you look down and one of the fuses goes, 
<laughs> All your bombs go off. Uh, you are dead. <laughs> Easy will look at Lord Gull. Maybe I can mm -hmm. take them to the dungeon core. No, this builds character easily. Don't you know? I do not. You won't find out? Apparently her wisdom is beyond my grasp. See, the unique perspective of the Mothman, sometimes it is very difficult for other species to understand the way they think. They have a different view on life and different values. Almost as difficult to understand than Quillen. Because yeah. they have a different view in life. In general? Yeah. So I want you to take this monster gem as the room goes back to just being a wall. Mm -hmm. And I want you to take this other monster gem. Fear me. Because he has both monster gems in hand. And I want you to think on something. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to build character if you die? Does it build character? Why is Indrid so sure of it building character? Ruminate on it, and once you come to an answer, take them to the dungeon core. Resuscitate them. And then move on. Yes, Lord Cole. Hmm. Indeed. Allie, you have successfully blown yourself up. I'm the first one in timeout. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I have been the naughtiest. <laughs> Not the first to die. <laughs> He's able to take them, take both the cars, go to his room, contact Susie, be like, so Susie. Susie's putting on underwear. God damn it, Susie. That must be a pain in the ass with eight legs. <laughs> I imagine it takes a while. It probably does. But question, is it eight legs or is it four legs? It's eight legs. Okay, so we know how it goes on then. Uh well, hold on. Technically, would it cover the legs, Susie. or would it cover the back part of the uh, abdomen that's inflated? Oh, Susie. I just got a weird order by Lord Cole. Yeah, you missed it. You're going to oh. have to listen to that in the recording. It was a prime moment. <laughs> I will. That's the reason I do this. Uh, I would like your help trying to understand it. Okay, uh... This is a new day, so we're gonna have a new coin no, toss. No, this is the ninth. This is still the ninth day. No, I didn't get to do it for the the, the new day. So, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but essentially, Easley has both Indrid's core and Jeremy's core. This will actually spawn the very first DT of the 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 tenth uh, the next mm. day. Okay. Uh, why do you have Indrids? And who's that? Firmies? Yes. Um, uh, what happened? Indrid blew herself up. Blew herself... They... Okay. Well, okay. If I'm going to be correct, Indrid brought... Probably killed Firmies. Probably killed Firmie. Brought the core to Lord Gull. Uh... She said that dying builds character, and Lord Goal agreed with her. And ah. she started bringing out bombs, and Lord Goal put her in a granite room, and then she blew up in. I see. Um, I disagree with that statement, but um, you know what? Um... It was Indrid's statement. Yes. So... I've been asked uh, to ruminate on it. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't really want to die anytime soon again. Um, I hit it the first time. Um, 
but I mean, it was it was necessary. So, okay, um, I'll let you deal with that. Um, they're in your hands now, so I'm just gonna go back to doing what I was doing. Fair. And uh, Eatsley will ruminate, cost uh, over the course of the day. Um, and about Indrid's words come to the, come to a logical conclusion of Indrid was probably jealous uh, and death can build character if done correctly though I do not think she, she did it correctly yeah. and we'll revive her at the end of the day and fear me. Alright. Just the whole day? At the end of it, yeah. She'll, we arrived at the end. Like, you'll take them to the end of, at the end of the day to the court. While eats the... That was not your instructions. Yes. Your instruction no. was to come to some sort of enlightenment. That is fair. And you were not to revive them until you have come to a enlightened, enlightened decision specifically regarding Indrid's words. Yes. The Indrid's yes. viewpoint from her species. Why do they think this way? What value? Because if death brings character, why was she so convinced of that? We don't see it that way. In fact, Susie proved that. Susie was like, I don't want to die again. But Indrid said death brings character and it was there was no um deceit in her eyes and her 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 features her stance it's quite it's simple just... honestly <laughs> it's because they're all terrorists <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So, Eatley, if you want to blow yourself to up for terrorism, I mean, by all means. Each is going to go talk to the other person who's died in the party. Because there's Phil. now been... Yeah. Phil. Phil. Yeah, I am here. Phil, you, your philosophy is is needed. Mm, is it? Oh, yes. yes. Very much so. Each is going to ask Phil. Phil. Indrid yes. recently said something. Also, why are you talking so slow? You've never done this before. I have done it many times. Well, he, Also, not, it's to not... make sure that it's also just to make sure that when I'm talking with Phil's like actual like throat voice rather than his mental one that uh, you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Also, um, He's not Phil. He's Phil Eep. That is Eep. fair. Gosh. Don't you see the little top hat and the monocle? Oh my yes. god. That is fair. One sec. Let me take that top hat off. No, you will <laughs> not remove my hat. Then speak with your inner thoughts. Really? You wish. Eep is so sassy today. <laughs> god damn. Yes, he is. <laughs> I've been tasked with Lord, by Lord Gold to figure out what Indrid's like meaning. somebody gave you the hollow monitor path. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I have to take care of the dungeon from killing itself now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been tasked by Lord Gold to understand what Susie meant when she thinks that death builds character. Indrid. And you're one of the only other... Or Indrid, yes. Indrid means when death builds character, and you're the only other monster I know that has died. This is not true. Oh, wait, no, wrong voice. Wrong voice! <clears throat> this is not true. No, many that have died. Susie has also died. Uh, and yes. So... But. And so has Jerry. The well, same. Uh, there's also the, uh, what's his name? The, the that creature that roams our borders. I will not speak to him. 
as we cannot leave the dungeon. This is fair. Have you tried asking the Cazadors? I have not asked the Cazadors. And I also have not asked the Sand Knights. But I go to you, Philippe, as we are of the first generation. Philippe! With a capital P! I know the difference. Yes, Philippe. Is there any accent marks or hip thongs in there as well? Well, I I have not quite decided, but for now, no. It is but a shortening of my true name. And what is your true name? I shall not reveal it, for it is mine. Understood. But again, I am here to seek your philosophy. It is real philosophy. There is emphasis there. I can tell the difference. And it is important, which is not the same as philosophy. It is fail. Of course, Philippe. Philippe. The capital P, I can tell the difference. That's what I said. It is not what you said. It is. I'm I sorry, can tell the difference. My mouth makes it hard for me to say things where you say them. Surely it is not so hard with your mind's voice. I know, but for some reason the roof of the mouth is still hmm, weird. Oh God, talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> As we're like, I don't understand why my accent still comes through. And why certain oh, letters are weird for me to pronounce? No, I'm actually choking on water right now. <laughs> okay, enough. We we understand uh, what Phil sounds like. Anyway. Yeah, Mothman voice is real hard to do, too. <laughs> I'm probably not going to stop coughing for a while. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, why why death builds character? Mm. Or do you think death builds character? Do I think so? Eatsley's mm. quite convinced that it does not. I'll just talk with Phil's other words. <laughs> what a boring yes. man. <laughs> it does indeed build character. Oh? Is that all? No, why? <laughs> Why does it build character? Hmm. Hey, this is a punishment for me because I want to contribute to this conversation so badly, but I'm dead. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> what is character, Reed? What is character? I am asking you. You are not asking me. No, I'm asking you. I would hear your answer first. Pushing Partick. My answer is character is the resolve and ability to enact your morals upon yourself. My definition, which I think you will find, is quite superior is that character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual I have spoken Hmm. has Phil answered all of your questions your deep philosophical questions. Now, you have to answer the fundamental reason of does death build character and why? You just you just said yes, it does. Hmm. Okay, well, Phil, roll me a philosophy. What is being moved here? 
I'm so confused. There's something there. I don't see anything moving. No, it says that there's like something adjacent to my character picture. Refresh? Like e sleep quests? Like I'm confused. No, like there's like a physical object in Rule Twenty that is apparently adjacent to my character portrait, but in journals, right? I can't see it. Have any mushrooms? But for I supper? can select it. Uh -huh. So uh, you're asking how it builds character? Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on. I found the object. I'll just leave it there. Anyway. It builds character. By allowing the individual to experience and deal with death. They now know how they should react or shall react, I should say. When they die. To be fear, you must be fearless as well. And in the face of death, nothing stops me. I see. So, if I killed you right now, that would build character? In a way. Not that you could. But in a way. Sounds like a challenge, Eatsley. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Though I suspect it would have diminishing returns. So you believe there's only so much one can learn from death? There's only so much... Well... I mean, you could make it a focus, I guess. Not, uh, not something I would recommend. I'd much prefer focusing on the shiny things of the world. <laughs> and rocks. They are comfortable and delicious. Let me see. But yes. If one walks with death, I assume one could learn from it. Now... Does the death have to have meaning in order to learn from it? If someone was casually killed from death, do they learn? I do not see why. When they die, for the first time, they learn they can die. Regardless of the intent behind it. And thus hmm. they learn. Fair enough philosophy because i feel like that's uh it's good you uh you put some words well no matt already asked for philosophy i'm just continuing oh yeah uh, i need I, a philosophy roll yeah you didn't roll it <laughs> yeah yeah hold, hold, hold on hold on so i'm uh, i'm feeling a nat one for you my dude you got this uh we'll see we'll see uh i'm feeling a two two for two no, I'm feeling red. Better red than dead? Nah. That's bad. Dragon blood logic dictates that if you die, you are weak. But that also means you can also get stronger because you were weak. And now that you yes. know that you are weak, <clears throat> you can become strong and don't be weak. Exactly. Death is weakness because some of them killed you. Mm, that that's that's not what dragons do. Dragons um, are weak, and if they are, well, I'm now strong because now I'm back. Yes. Hmm. Unfortunately, some of the less philosophical vampires, or not vampires, dragons. Excuse me. Inexcusable thing, but excuse me. 
Some of the less philosophical dragons think death is a birth defect, which I do not necessarily agree, but there you go. Yes, you have heard it here first. Death to some dragons is a is is a, is a birth defect. You've heard it here mm. first, Eatsley. Understood. I Maybe totally we'll... stole that from a, a novel I read a while ago, <laughs> a while ago called uh, Fang for the Dragon." Uh. Death is a birth defect, but Phil here <laughs> thinks if if it does happen, just stop being weak. Get strong. Yes. Overcome your defense. <laughs> Easily, Easily will then take a moment, like, he'll ponder this and go, I thank you, Phil. You have been enlightened, minion. Several of the kobolds who have come and stopped working, they've, they've all sat down and taken out their... Some have taken out their notepads to write on. Some are just sitting there what like, you... "Yes, tell us about, oh, tell us about your wisdom." What did you call me, Phil? I said, "Good day," and you have been enlightened, minion. You called me a minion. Are you not a minion? You do not get to call me that, Phil. But are you not a There's minion? Only one. There is only one that may call me a minion. The fact remains you are, you a, are minion. a minion as well. I accept this, but I do not you. call me a minion then. Phil, actually, if you're a dragon, I'm going to have you roll with power. You still get your bonus, your plus 20, uh, but you, you're a dragon. You're a proud, proud species. Yes. You may be a minion, and you accept that, but you can never externalize it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You're you're a proud dragon race, especially a Nergigante, who's a solo dragon that can fight other groups of dragons. You're one of the most proud dragon species around. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, you you can say that you're a minion, but th that'll be up to you as a player how you want to play Phil, because Energigantes are extremely proud and vicious creatures. They would never I have a minion openly... to one and no other. <clears throat> and I do not refer to you as minion. Do not refer to me as a minion. <laughs> You're a dragon. You like... may keep thinking this way, minion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're throwing hands. Do we need, oh, to, God, do we need, right. do we need the ring? Uh... <laughs> I'll be the ring girl. Uh, and I'll all all the, the kobolds are like, "Oh shit! Did he just say what?" Like they're 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 egging it on. It's like a crowd, <laughs> massive diss. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Oh crap! No way! Throw more shade! <laughs> Throw those rocks!" People are like tossing gravel and 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 dirt up into the air. Just and this like, he's he's kicking dirt. He's kicking dirt. <laughs> What is that, the underground equivalent of throwing shade? Yes! Uh, You're kicking dirt at somebody. Eatsley is going to take a moment and look at him. And is going to look at the... Wherever we are above. And then look back at Phil. Go. Yes. Do you need something else, Eatsley? No, Phil. All the kobolds, like half the kobolds have turned around and start, you know, they, they're doing that, this scratching at the dirt with their, their feet, <laughs> kicking it up a little bit. They're like, oh, he ignored him. And um. Eatsley is going to take a moment and, uh, the kobolds are not helping. No, but Easy's gonna uh, make a sand pit above Phil, so it just falls onto him. Nice. What? A uh, bunch bitch. of sand falls on you, Phil. It does nothing. Then walk just, out. Poof, sir, you can pound it, sir. 
Mm, thank you. Mm. I bathe in sand. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, mm. all the kobolds have to dig <laughs> themselves out there. <laughs> they, they, all, they all yelp and go, ah, sand! And they all get buried, and they have to pull themselves out of the sand. But, uh, Phil, you're so big, it's just like, yes. You know what? I could use a bath. Arr, you can basically Arr. sand, you know, bathe in the sand. And water. Even mud. It is all, well, when the mud hardens, it will fall off, so. <laughs> and, uh, Eatsley is going to then go and pray. And see if he can pray and reflect upon the words of, uh, I just had his name and it's spaced out on me. Oh, the disrespect. Uh, Phil? Uh, Philippe? No. Thinking about his no, uh, just god, no. god of death. Ah, Zeke. Uh, Indrid. Yes. Uh, being in a monster core as an onaromancer is not so simple. Oh. If you're next to another monster core, they're technically sleeping. If you're within a 10 meter radius of a monster core, you can, um, as a monster core yourself, or just as you, uh, you can, uh, you can touch the monster core, or just kind of, if you're another monster core, as long as you're within 10 meters of it, you can kind of meander over. I might meander over. I've got a name, and I've got a picture. Okay, 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 okay. Send it to me, or put it in the, 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 the character sheet I gave you, the ability uh. to edit. Okay. Uh, she that you gave me the ability to edit. You have a different name for yourself. I do. At first, why? I uh, just close those ones. Be right back. Uh oh. Um. Oh, do I? I probably have to have this cropped in. No, you can leave it like that. It's just the uh, your character. You yeah. might have to save it though. I do have. Yeah, you can drag that over. Almost. Do you want to drag it inside that little thing? You know. You know. There you go, Alley Girl. I look like a nightmare creature. You look like something. So, can you pronounce that for me? Insomnium? Yeah. Insomnium. Got it in one. Cool. I didn't want it to be something so hard to pronounce. Yeah, no, that's fair. Starting at zero, eh? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't even look like you have a head. Can you make it a bigger picture for me? Can you click on your one in there? Hmm. All right, let's make that big. It's in a graveyard, too. Mm-hmm. What is Dream Indrid's name? Insomnium? Insomnium? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead and replace Dream Indrid with Insomnium. I believe I have. Oh, I just need to close it and then open it. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of narrative play. Okay. To start. 
<laughs> Alright, uh, as you're reflecting in your little gem, you realize something very important. Okay. Uh, this will be a forbidden knowledge for you, uh, Allie. Um, should I write it down? Forbidden knowledge, insomnium, or if uh, forbidden in, knowledge under Indrid? Uh, just call it. Um, what did I have written down? Call it daydreaming. Okay. One check mark. Uh, go ahead and add a check mark to a Nyromancy, because you're an Nyromancer. You should have a full check mark. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know a little bit of the hidden truths behind monster gems. When a uh, somebody dies, and is you know they, their consciousness is pulled inside the gem, they enter a dream state. But if you're on Nyromancer, you're not trapped in your gem. And the more powerful and anironancy you are, the more you can do even while dreaming. Because you are dreaming. But if you can influence the outside world, you're a day dreamer. Because you're dreaming, but you're still acting. It's almost like sleepwalking. You will become the Sandman. So, you it's an infantile skill for now. But without death, you wouldn't have figured it out. Bill's character, yeah. I told you! <laughs> For uh, Nyromancers, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, monsters, or monstrae, are very vulnerable to daywalkers, or, or daydreamers. Or just on Nyromancers in general, while they're in their monster core form. Because they're dreaming. And that's their whole world, is they're dreaming. They're, they're stuck in some other fantasy, whether it's a pleasant, you know, reprieve or, you know, they're uh, remembering something. It doesn't matter. They're dreaming. Which means dreams are something you can meander on over to. So, Insomnium, you kind of emerge. You kind of crawl out of a crack between the edges and the curves. It's too small, too obtuse and acute at the same time. It looks like a straight line between two walls that meet to make a corner. But it, looking at it, will fracture the psyche. And from that impossibility, that improbability, the impossible, you wedge yourself out crawl out almost twisting and contorting yourself until you emerge from uh, a fraction a corner of the world a fracture that doesn't exist and you are in a dream space welcome insomnium All oh, 14 wings are buzzing. Quite a sound. Or does it make a sound? It's true. I feel like each of the, the buzzings so. can say something new. It's a dream. They don't have to make sound or make a buzzing sound at all. I feel like. They could. Uh, my wings make interesting. They could, yeah. I'd like that. They could also make a, you know, they could, you can also have a wings be a, you know, sound of screaming. And another set of wings can be a, uh, a kind of a low buzz, a build of tension, you know, like, you, this is the dream world. Shit doesn't need to make sense. Mm -hmm. Intrasound, eh? Mm hmm Inf Infrasound. Infrasound. Yeah. It's like... We've talked about it before. Just below the level of human hearing, but um, it can drive people nuts and cause like migraines and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I've definitely mentioned it. Before. Yeah, mm -hmm. in this game. Yeah, I know. We have fun. I like it. All right. It's a new um, concept. Think about so, Andrew, yeah. you may be dead because of your super secret OP on Ironmancer class. Even while dead, you still get your DTA. Yeah. 
Sweet. What do you want to do? Well, you told me I need a, a, a safe space to go. So I better start. Yeah, well, you have your identity. You are you are Insomnium, and you have a new form. So check one. Uh, mm -hmm. Check two is you need objects. objects. Or uh, you need stuff. Uh, dream stuff. That have enough uh, potency and enough form that even in the dream space, they don't disperse. They have a, a semi-permanency. Whether it's I... through your will or you brought it with you from the real world. I wanted to know if it would be possible to pull in my spooky bone mask into the dream. Um, I'll have you roll a willpower test with Insomnium. I know it's a zero. Oh. I know, it's a zero. And it will be a okay. fail, but okay. it doesn't mean it's a fail. Uh, and I guess I don't have any fate points here either, do I? What are fate points in the dream? <laughs> it's true. It's true. It if you can use them as the same way you usually do, uh, give yourself like a plus 10 or something. No, we'll just roll it. It forms. It's a little different. It's... It's just right. But it's different. You don't have a perfect memory of it, but it's close. Do you want to spend more time on it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Go ahead and roll one more time. Almost there. You kind of lost cohesion of it. It got a little bit more malleable, less cohesive. Hmm. Are things working backwards in the dream space? It seems so, yeah. Oh. Higher you roll, the better. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. You lost. You, you lost some shape of it, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. It just it's more malleable now. Can I do it? Yeah. Uh, you get three rolls per downtime action. We got one more. Should I roll or should I try and? You could forcibly just tort it into a new shape. True, oh, that would be fun. Um, what do you want to do? I want to turn it into... What doth it become? I don't know. Or, do you, or you can just continue to work on it to make it the mask. I'll try one more time to make it the mask. Okay. Uh, make it a more scary mask than what you already know it as. Well, I, I was if I roll high on this one, I'll make it into the mask. If I roll low on it, I'll think some more about what I might try to shape it into. 99. 62. Yeah, no, it, it solidifies into a mask. <laughs> you think it's the mask? It's okay. It's a mask. It's the way it's the shape and form that you remember it, or the other, the waking you remembers it. I'll put it on and try it out. It rattles and chimes. Mm. It has its own voice in the dream, different than your wings, different than you. What is it? What is this voice trying to say, though? What is it trying to do? Hmm. Not yet defined. You're hungry. in the dream. Everything kind of. You'd be hungry? <laughs> or I you remember? Like, it's probably hungry. I'd be hungry. Hmm. All right, that's one downtime action. What else do you want to do? Because you know the book. 
reminded you that you should always have a minion, you should always have several objects of power, and you should have something lethal, like a weapon. But that doesn't didn't describe what a weapon is. You maybe you made your weapon. The mask is a weapon. Sanity. But the weapon. Is a weapon. But the weapon, the specifics required by calling it a weapon, is it must harm or disperse and not kill, because you can't technically kill a nightmare or a dream. It, you must basically harm it and its identity of what it is as a dream or a creature uh, identity of the dream or disperse it which means the identity such as insomnium can no longer hold itself together and no longer is somebody which is technically worse than death because if you are dispersed on the dream um you're technically not dead on the real world, which means you're basically in a coma. And they can't even revive you on a uh, with the dungeon core. It requires a Nyromancer to help put you back together. Or somehow putting yourself back together after being dispersed on the dreamscape. <sighs> Spoopy. You probably have your mentor. I mean, your minion with you too. Like you can probably summon. Get yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'll summon. I'll summon Jen. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jen. He pops in. Yes. <laughs> good. I want to also try and summon my moths within the dream. Uh, they don't have form. But all of the mercuria you spent to make your moths kind of flows forward, like these winking lights. They're not going to be there for long, you know that. You summoned the power and the resource to make them. All of it. And there's so much of it, you, it's going to be so hard to grab it. Grab it all, or individually make all the moths again. What do you do? Oh my gosh, that is, that is too many. So much Mercuria, but it's uh, not Mercuria here. What do you do? I'm gonna try and force it all together into one big power. Okay, uh, make a, me that willpower test, and then power, an influence anyway. test. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Horse. okay. Triple three. No, triple threes. Oh, okay. I'll accept it. It kind of contorts. The world shifts sideways back and then pivots and twists in place. Like a bunch of turning gears and a big clockwork machine. I'm going to but... dance with it. All right. I'm going to um So, there is a power of triples for you. It's odd. It's very rare that it'll happen. The ball quelses into something of real potency. Using it in the dreamscape will determine what it can do. This is this is how you modify it. And it will take the form of a single large death's head butter butterfly. You can't move, you can't do anything or modify it or even spend merit or even evolve it on the real world. Only Insomnium can alter this thing. But in the real world, if somebody rolls a triple, uh, they are immediately put to sleep. Ooh. Uh, and they are dreamwalking. Basically, they're, they're, they're awake, but they're not. They're basically... Uh, uh, you know, yeah, if the, they're in the middle of combat, they are now sleepwalking, and their eyes go blank, and they're just... You've, you've been Rashungun. Yeah, you've been Rashungun. Um, is this... Do, do I have to be, like, in their presence? Like, is there, a, like, an area of effect? As long as somebody is in the vicinity. The friend network is helping here. As long as somebody in the friend network or something in the friend network is nearby, 
in the same room, you can have it happen. Now, if an ally has it happen, you can store a triple charge. Okay. It steals their roll, and it can really ruin them for it. Um, basically, if you take it, they can no longer roll or get another re-roll or anything. It's just as if it, nothing happened. So do triples only work from uh, degrees of failure and success? Or could you yes. shoot, you, for example, the willpower, 23, and then another 3-3 three, three after that would count as a triple? Um, It'll determine on what we see. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, the degrees of success, positive or negative, and then the rolls before or after, if there's a three numbers in a row... Um, and if it's between two rolls, you will literally eat both the rolls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if something important happened on one of those rolls, um, you're going to have to help decide what happens. Ooh. Because the dream world's kind of manipulated what happened there. That's fun. That reality became buckled a little bit and became wavy. And you get to go... Bloop. Pick two stats on Insomnium. Subtract from zero. Ten. So you would go to negative ten. But that would be a good thing in the dream world. For you, yes. This is giving you a bigger, bigger power set. Now subtract willpower. Pick two stats, add 10 to it. Add 10? Yes, which makes oh. it worse. Oh, you're, you're, you're balancing here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Negatives are good. Rolling is, high in the dream world is good. Is influence a uh, pickable stat? In, yes, it is. Uh, influence will be kind of your gotcha roll. It'll be your... Uh, I'm not sure how to manipulate this shit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of throw that in. Uh, having a positive score is not a bad thing in influence because sometimes you only need to change something marginally, you know. So if it's such a large swing, say you roll like 99 and you have a minus 50 on that sucker, that is so much chaos that you still may not get what you want. So inf influence is going to be your gotcha. You don't know what you're going to get. It's the dream world. Who the hell knows? Mm -hmm. uh, don't neglect your physical stats. Willpower, absolutely. I know that's going to be your mainstay. But physical stats also improve your solidarity and your ability to not be dispersed. It's your defense. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Maybe having just... really strong physical stats also means you have more weight in the, the dream world, which also could just, you know, you use your weight to literally press in somebody who's more ethereal. Well, they may be more mentally powerful, but you 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 smother them with your physical presence. So, everything is important, but in a different fashion. Mental stats may be. What seemed to be important initially, but don't ever neglect your 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 uh, physical stats. Not in the dream world. Okay, good advice. Uh, the Onaromancer book also tells you if you have enough physical presence, you can manifest in the waking world for a short period of time, depending on how physically powerful you are. So if during the nighttime, if your physical stats are powerful enough on Insomnium. Indrid could take a nap, and Insomnium could play. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> uh, Onyromancy is going to be very costly to build, very time-intensive to build up, but I think you are no stranger to it, and you this is kind of your shtick. You worked hard for it. There's a lot more work to do, but it'll be kind of endgame, what you're working for. Because on Iron Man, is going to be very, very powerful the more effort you put into it. Ready. Mm. 
I know you are. I know you are. All right. Uh, what do you want to focus on? So I've got this death death's head butterfly. So you said he doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, you don't know what he does in the dream world, but you do know what he does in the waking world. Everything you make in the dream world, you know imme- immediately what it does in the waking world. But in the dream world, what does it do? And it just kind of floats in your hand. And this thing is huge, by the way. The size of a basketball, or at least the wings are. And this little fuzz, and there's not really any describable features of the moth itself, but the wings are vibrant. But it's got those little antennas, and its little front legs are kind of feeling around on your hand. It's huge. Could you reiterate for me what it does in the waking world? <laughs> uh, if you roll, if, if anyone rolls uh, a triple. Okay, okay. This, yeah, the triple okay. Thing. I, I had those written down as two different yep. powers, so they're the same thing. Yep, it's two, two halves of a coin on the waking world. Okay. You don't know what it does on the dream world, though. I will make those one power. Yes. One for allies, one for enemies. Or not, basically, one for PCs, one for not PCs. Mm. Um. Hmm. It's just kind of feeling around on your palm. What is it doing? Hmm. I'm going to give it a little smooch. It boops you on the nose, flies off. Ah! Adorable. Um, I'll roll random event. You're in the dream world. Uh-oh. Even if you're in your own gym. Um, there's a kind of a wisp of something in the background. Your butterfly flies over and kind of lands on this something trying to manifest. And this little slurpy tongue, um, I forget what that's called. It starts with a PT. Hmm. Hold on. Uh, la, 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 la. I will look What's it up. What's the question? The moth tongue. Like it's, uh, proboscis? Yeah, the probus- yeah, proboscis. Uh, kind of reaches out and digs into the creature and it slurps it up. Ooh. Delicious. So it was hungry too. Yeah, uh, it ate something. I'm gonna go over and check out, see if I can figure anything out about the something that it ate. Oh, it's gone. You have no idea. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. left. Okay, yeah. gone. It's gone. So yeah. I've got one item and one weird butterfly. Is mm-hmm. this a weapon or is it a minion? Or is it neither? You don't know. It's hard it's, to categorize. It's, it's something. It's something. Geld will peek behind your legs because it was hiding the whole time. I'll <laughs> give it a pat on the head. It's a, it's a little soot ball. Just poof. <laughs> kind of cowers. And when you kind of float forward, it's like hanging off your heel. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrified of your butterfly. Alright. I form my wings into weapon. Okay. The sounds you make from your wings? The um, sounds, and I'd like them each... to be, like, sharp. Maybe I can, like, All right. Each them. set of wings, you need to have a clear idea of what they can do. And you need to tell me how many downtime actions you want to spend building them. And you can only do that while dreaming. They can always be improved. But you need to know what each set of wings is going to do. And how long you want to spend building them up. I said I have 14 wings, I do believe. So, seven sets of two? Yeah. Or is it 14 sets of wings? Uh, it's... Uh, th- they're... They're on two sort of um, appendages, and but each wing is 
uh, separate coming off the appendage. Oh, well, uh, you can either have them paired, or you can have 14 different things. It's whatever you want in the dream world. Just yeah, each pairs. of them requires an identity of what they do, and they uh, individually they would require um, a individual attention and to, to build them up as powers. Two pairs that have of uh, fourteen or seven each individual thing attached to them. It's up. To, it's up to Ali. Uh, I'll let you think on it. For a sec, okay. we're gonna hop to uh, uh, Eatsley. Eatsley. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for the rest of your day? Uh, so Eatsley was gonna uh, look over Zeke's teachings <laughs> and I guess maybe try to commune with Zeke to see if he can get in any insight from there. Um, Roll a one to one hundred. Uh, da, 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 da. Does my uh, what's that? Uh, patron connection gives me plus twenty. Oh, it'll reduce the roll by twenty. There's seven. Okay, sixteen. You do not get Zeki. Uh, you do get a priest. Oh, uh, it is a specter, and will float out from the ground. Um, this has a different vibe than the bank teller. The bank teller was mysterious, enigmatic, sphinx-like. You couldn't really tell. Uh, this is a breath of death, as if in a, it's like an exhalation of smoke and mist from the Lord of Death himself, Zeki. Ah, he's the evil bow. Respect. Thank you for answering my call. As it is quiet. And like, it's embarrassed that. <laughs> right? Um, my Lord Goal, my dungeon lord, has tasked me with learning why oh. a compatriot of mine believes that experiencing a death builds character it nods and what appears on front of you is a screen update mm -hmm. it is solid weighty immensely heavy it presses down on your psyche your physical soul your monster gem feels like it's being crushed and what appears to you is a divine tear quest, a labor, like the one Hercules had to do. Oh. You are given a, a labor from Zeki. You are to travel to the underworld, carrying a written slab on your back. That weighs no less than 10 tons and it is to you are to conscribe upon it the true words of death and the learnings of death why it is a gift from the gods itself the true scriptures however the hell you're going to get that and you are to carry it down the staircase and you are to tr find a way across the river and you are to present it in the temple where it is to be enshrined in one of the alcoves all right and you are not to have any help in this for anyone who helps you will be given the gift of death understood your success you will learn the true gift of and the knowledge of death and you will get the answer you seek all right. Failure. Uh, you will be condemned by Zeki. Understood. 
So I just want to make sure I get this sound correctly. You have been given a divine labor. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Right, so I'm going to inscribe the true word to death. Yep, it's the scriptures of Zeki. On a 10 ton slab of stone. Or no less than 10 tons. And you were to haul it down the archaic staircase, which is the uh, staircase to the underworld. Get it across the river. Whichever way you pick. And you are to take it to the temple. And it, if it is done right, it will be enshrined in the temple. If it is not right, you will be sent back. And you will need to find your way across the river. Back up Can the archaic ten, staircase. And we'll start slab. again. Hmm? Okay. The time limit is a ticking clock. It seems impossibly large, but the numbers all shift. Some up, some down. Never in order. Never with any reason. But something is always moving. There are nine digits in a row. Each, at random, one digit will click up or down of the nine. But it's every second one shifts up or down of one of the nine. Okay. I'm not sure how long that clock is. Uh, all, all right. of your other quests, they're there, but they're hazy. They're hard to look at. Anytime mm -hmm. you want to look at your quests, requires a willpower test. Understood. Because all you can see is the labor. And it is the first thing, and you have to kind of like... It's like the cover of a book. You have to like <laughs> lift it to look at the other stuff behind it. Yeah. And it's going like this. Just look at the shade. It had breathed on you. <laughs> yeah, right? It, it gave you the word, since it is the breath of Zeki itself. Mm -hmm. Zeki spoke to you through his, his exhalation. Zeki has given you a labor. Itsi will bow. Thank the specter. And it'll swirl forth, swirl through you, and down into the earth. There's a clarity, but there's also a pain. That life element almost guttering in it as it's in its passing. Ugh. Mm. I didn't know I could shudder. I hate to look at this. Look at think of everything that happened, like this wasn't worth it. Go and put the two stones down in the dungeon core. Uh, the, almost immediately, Fermi pops out of it. Fermi! I'm gonna grab <laughs> Fermi. Fermi! I am the bringer of doom and death and decay. I will sup upon your blood with my roots. Listen, Fermi. If you annoy the Mothman, Mothman will kill you. Stay away from the Mothman. They will fear me! Doom and death to all that lives! Yeah, well, then, the I'm fungi gonna... will rule the world! I'm just gonna start, and I'm just gonna carry it with me. And it will happily sit in your hand, but it'll go, Death to all living mammals! Plants are the true rulers of the world. Yes, yes. Uh, and he's just gonna gather the rest of the people and help them with their first evolution <laughs> to fulfill the quests. <laughs> All of them are like, <laughs> "You got it." <laughs> and he's like, "Hannah, you don't know what I went through." This. Remember the uh, the gem that I gave to uh, the wood sprite, Matt, the superior gem. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, 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 evolution not if ready. they wish to do it now. Not ready? Not ready. Okay. No. Uh, but yeah, like the rot spirit, all that kind of stuff. Gather them all up. Help them guide to the thir first evolution. Minor or major? They're getting the first major evolution. Okay. It's going to give them the uh, stuff for it, and then it's going to reward them with a successful first evolution with some more Aether. Okay. Uh, Salamander nah, 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 pff, goes double in size. <laughs> nah, 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 and the heat coming off of that is like a blast furnace. Uh, Fear me lights on fire and goes and dies. Yeah. Hmm. Salamander is like nah, 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 on Fear Me's little crystal. Ah, no, nah, not that. Nah, nah. Pick it up. <laughs> Gives you pouty and the little frills on his little head start to emanate microwave levels of fire. Like I'm it's starting like... to heat up your molecules. It's like no, <laughs> he's pouting. Other members of the menagerie. He's he he took away his his little, little, little chew toy. No, <laughs> this is not a chew toy. He's pouting. It's getting hotter. No. Uh, we will Susie find you will a put some getting uh, hotter. coal uh, in your inventory space for you to uh, give it something to. Ch chow on. <laughs> Thank you. Eatsley's gonna reach into there and pull out some coal. Okay, I'll have you roll a toughness test at a minus 50. Oof. Uh, uh, you're being microwaved. Oof. Eats, uh, Eatsley is going to put on uh, the water mantle. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Um, right, yeah, you put on the water mantle and it's like you literally steam is rolling off the water mantle. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, representation of power set of the water mantle? Uh, like, uh, so water mantle represents fluidity and change. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's the rain mantle. Sorry. Not oh, okay. Oh no, the water. Yeah. Sorry. Fluidity and change, uh, and fertility. Okay. One of those I don't um, know. Really the steam that rolls off of it uh, doesn't go away. It rolls back and enshrouds you. Change. Fluidity. Water doesn't just disappear. It becomes vapor. Go ahead and add a trait to the water mantle. Hmm. It doesn't gain stats. It just changes what it does. What are you expose it to? It has enshrouding mist. There you go. Not sure what enshrouding mist does yet. And you may never, because it's always changing. It's always fluid. It may not be there the next time you uh, pull it out, because it's been so long. And then, uh, yeah, we'll toss some uh, to uh, Salamander. Yeah, he goes, nom, nom, nom. and it, you can literally see that the coal start the the veins and it just like night. And he's like, nom, and he completely calms down immediately. Uh, the entire area around you, you can see the sand has become bright molten red. Mm. Yeah, he microwaved the entire area in front of you. And I'm like, all right, everyone. Salamanders are much more terrifying than fire breathers. They have different ways to apply heat. Yeah. I'm just going to like, all right. Self. Talk to spirit shaman. Nom, 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 nom. And you basically see him tilt his head back and go oh, 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 as he swallows the coal. <laughs> And then he just sits there and rolls over with his belly to the air like, ah, and there's a big bulge in his belly where the coal is. Uh. I'm going to turn to Chip and like, please take this to the monster, uh, to the dungeon core. Hey, I'm Cheatney the Knight. 
and he takes it and zips off. And right about the time you expect them to arrive, you hear f echoing from the the dungeon. Fear me! <laughs> uh, his respawn time is near instantaneous. Yeah, which is good. He does die a lot, though. He does <laughs> die a lot. Yeah, go chamber. Uh, Phil, you hear again. Fear me! From the top of the the, the pit of philosophy, as it screams down into the abyss. Yeah, well, From he's the gonna. Darkness, the darkness fears me. Well, he's gonna fear death again if he jumps <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> that pit goes down to the second floor now. I know, but he's still screaming, yelling down the hole, all sorts of threats of doom and death and. I ignore you know. him. Several your cobalts have to literally cover their ears. He's very loud. Is, very unfun to yeah. listen to. And they're like, eh. Productivity is just... I cannot hear a creature who's so poor. Is that what you tell them? Oh, no, I, I'm, I... I choose to believe that I have selective hearing when I want to, where a, a creature's wealth is concerned. <laughs> uh, sure, but your cobalt's uh, predictivity is down 50% because a lot of them are covering their ears. Uh, There's a reason why Indrid killed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want to tell go them on vacation that? And you guys are going to be stuck with him. You know what? Um... No, no, I don't want to invest a bunch of merit into range just to do this. I'll throw a rock at him. Uh, ballistic skill. She's me. Which I can replace with strength. That was an actual question. I don't know if Doss Thou Hoist would apply to this. No, you gotta aim. What if I just threw it in his general direction? You can roll strength. I'll roll scatter, okay. though. That's that's fine. I don't actually care about hitting it. Okay. Okay. Um... The, what you throw takes off the entire cliff edge and the guy goes Poof, and dies at the bottom as all the, the rocks fall on him. That's why you die. <laughs> Took off the entire cliff edge and several feet in of uh, the, the ledge up top of the pit of philosophy in front of the dungeon core. It's now a uh, slant mm. missing a Quite a bit of foothold there, if there's any left at all. Someone, uh, well, one of you, go bring him back to the court. Do we have to, boss? I don't want to have to listen to that. <laughs> I'm trying to mine and dig here, just like the big boss man does, but it's really hard to dig like you the big shall... boss man. I have an idea. When he is returned, take him to the adjacent trap room and leave him there. But what if we die, boss? What if, what if it's he's really poisonous? Uh, put him there and close the door behind you. Okay. When you, when you leave, the just toss him in. Yeah, they, they toss him in. And before they can get the door closed, he pops back out. Fear me! And now he's locked in the dungeon room. Yeah. And you hear behind the, the very heavy doors. I did you all a favor. And this is how you repay me. By giving me this major power upgrade. How dare you. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? You know what? I'm going to dig a room right under Indrid's room. Uh, like I'll, I'll add it to the map later. And I'll and put Fear Me down this. there. 
Yeah, so I'll have one of the kobolds link it to Andrew's room, and I'll put Fear Me in there. <sighs> okay. You heard it first here, boys and girls. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh... The room will be exactly two Fear Me's wide, three Fear Me's tall. Kobold will have to do all the digging, honestly. Yeah, you're too big. Yeah. It will be just big enough to contain him or it. It will have a tiny door to match. Okay. All right. Um, that way, Indrid can uh, be the one to deal with it. I trust Indrid to put the fear of fear in this creature. Hmm. I'm on vacation, bitches. Alternatively, he can. I can anoint him as a priest, and he can stay down there, though I suspect uh, he might be struck down by the gods. <clears throat> well, they would have struck him down a long time ago. He's a joke of the gods. He runs yes, around well. going fearless, saying, fear me. It's extremely deadly. Yes, well... Annoying, provocative. <clears throat> their tune might change, or Nareem's tune might change, if he's in there all the time. So, you never you know. know. That's the alternative, though so I feel then like again, that might be a bigger detriment to me. <laughs> then again, she is of hearth and home, and of nonviolence. Yeah, well. If worse comes to worse, uh, we'll let him loose on the desolator. <clears throat> desolator would absolutely kill this thing. Oh, I, I imagine. Oh, yeah. I would have killed it, but no. No, that's it. That, but we can leave allowed. him to the Desolator. <laughs> I see how it is. Desolator is not part of the dungeon. Yeah, but uh, the person who would leave him to the Desolator would be. <laughs> hmm, true. Or... <clears throat> Alternatively, we put him in a box and give him to the Desolator as a peace offering without letting him know how much is in the box. I feel like that would just get him angry. It would be funny, though. Oh, boy. Almost five o'clock. That clock is behind. So, uh, hmm. Uh, Eatsley. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> um, with the breath of Ziki flowing through you, you do know in instinctively, as it is profoundly and even etched on some of your bones worlds of the words of the underworld yeah your labor is not all a detriment no no it is not an impediment it is not something just to hold you back it's a true test worth yep capability um, you do know the longer 
you stall. Yes. Um, the weight will get heavier. Now, that means ignoring the labor entirely. If you're yeah. actively doing something about it, the weight doesn't get heavier. Such as looking for the right stone. Mm -hmm. Philosophizing on the, uh, the scripture you're supposed to write. Looking into how to get down there. Finding the archaic staircase. All that type of stuff. Yeah. As um, long as you are working actively, not passively, towards to get... the labor, the weight doesn't increase. Right. Um, so the way this will translate is as long as you spend some part of your day, every day, towards the labor, mm -hmm. you're fine. Now, the labor does not care if you're knocked out. If you are dead, that's you not doing something. You're dreaming. Yep. Now, if a certain a neuromancer comes, hops into your head, and helps you daydream, that will help. Mm -hmm. But no one knows right. that you have a labor. Yes. You're also not allowed to tell anyone that you have a labor. You know that. If you do tell someone, they share in the weight, but they cannot help with the task. Fair. But having multiple backs support the burden could help. If it's taking too damn long, or if you've neglected your duties. This is true. I don't and it would be very easy to foist a lot of that fucking weight onto your friends. It would be. Um, hmm. I don't. I know what Isa's gonna start with. Isa's gonna start um, this whole thing, figuring out, going through the teachings of Ziki, um, and see if they say anything about what a proper gravestone is supposed to be made out of. Because sometimes they're specific like that. They're very specific. Looking through the scripture, it says very, very importantly, it must be a stone forsaken of the elements of this world. And, uh, what is that word? Uh, castrated of the breath of this world. Mm, that's what a grave must be made out of. Interesting. This stone mm. needs to be made out of, yes. It must be chiseled from a larger hull. The scriptures also say doing so is a labor in of itself. It's almost unfair. This labor you've been given is a series of ten labors. They may seem small and inconsequential or even something you could read over, but there are 10 separate lines of text about the exact thing you're looking for, about the exact labor you must do, and they are 10 labors, one for each god, or a representation of each god. <laughs> but also, I have nothing to do with them and do not honor them at all, because this is Zeke's labor. Yes. This is... Him being cheeky. <laughs> this is the god of death giving a mention to these individuals, almost as if it's required. Mm -hmm. Or it's kind of a joke. In the most dead, serious, kind of lifeless joke you can expect from a god of death. But it's, it's ten labors put together for one big one. Because mm -hmm. you gotta find the stone. Then you gotta carve it. Chisel it. Transport it. No oh, fuck. Anyone who touches the stone that is not part of the labor is now an accomplice, an accessory to the labor. They'll be given an update. They will also be given a, frac or a portion of the weight, equally divided. 
but they will receive nothing afterwards. Fair. But you also know that every time, and it says in the last scripture, for every weight divided is a lesson not learned, wisdom not gained, a hardship not overcome. And so the, thus the lesson and the labor completed less. Yes. So, so if you pawn off the weight, you get less at the end. <laughs> so the ten labor. So part of the ten labors is first getting down there, correct? No, you need to get your stone. <laughs> so okay. Or first labor is find identifying the stone that which it speaks of. One devoid of all elements of the land and castrated of the breath of this world. Uh, okay, okay. Ethan's gonna try and put some time into researching this. Um, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> or right? no, it's forsaken of the elements of this world. Forsaken of. Okay. Yes, forsaken and castrated of the breath of the of the of the world. Okay. Oh my like... god, uh, to Allie, this is scary. Bam, bam. Shit. I like it though, but it scares me. I love that. That's exactly what I'm going for. Okay. 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 Shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything for the rest of your day, Eastley? Well, okay. So Eastley is going to basically uh, spend the day trying to figure out what the identifying trying to identify the stone. Um, he we have a library of Phil, you brought a library of minerals and rocks, correct? Like the books on minerals and rocks? Yeah. I do believe yeah. so. Hey, he's got plenty of those. All right. Yeah. Um, mineralogy. Yeah. Yeah. Geology. I have some mineralogy. It's a scholastic lore, if you'd like to ask me. Yeah, you could. Yeah, no. Eatsley is going to basically... Uh, see if Susie knows a son of which that has been forsaken by the elements of this world and castrated of breath. Uh, well, mineralogy? Uh, oh. Uh, not at all. <laughs> um, you run through your, your, your big cerebral noggin like Okay, that's some poetic wax phil uh, philosophical somebody can't speak in straight language bullshit. Uh, nothing comes to mind. Not at all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, take a rain check on that. Uh, I could probably look into it for you, but uh, nothing right now. Hmm. I got nothing. Nothing? That is fine. Uh, it also means something, though. It does. Uh, very poetic. Kind of the uh, the same way. You know, he says, like, "Have you ever heard of a rock like this?" And that it's just you responded in kind. Tip for tap. <laughs> it does mean something, though. It's like that is so helpful. That just so like helpful. the information I gave you. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. And he's just gonna like, thank you. Uh, hmm. Have you been through Phil's 
uh, the, the mineral library. Um, I'm assuming you have. Yeah. Um, he, I, I read books a lot faster than him, so anything I don't really need, I just put it back in the library. Fair. Well, I need to go talk to Spirit Shaman. Oh, you have another question? Well, I was going to ask how it would be the best to deal with our salamander, as they are basically of pure elements. And I was going to ask I, them about this. I was going to ask them about the uh, uh, our new companion. Salamander? The, no, no, the uh, the decay spirit. The rot spirit? Yes. Also a very interesting one. Hmm. I'm I like... I'm building a, a spot down for them by the uh uh a graveyard I think is the best place for right now. Or no, actually I'm I'm letting them get the tune to the uh the mushroom garden first. <laughs> I haven't I haven't finished it yet, so I just thought I'd give it a, you know see how it likes the place. Understood. Um Go ahead and use it as Shaman Spirit's last question, as we only have one left. Oh. Um, how about we play Rock, Paper, Scissors for it, then? That's the only fair no. way. Oh. I used, the first, I used the question already. Okay. But this is about the Salamander, and the Spirit Shaman would actually know how to take care of a Salamander. Yeah. A, a pure strain. Yeah. Um, that's why I was saying but, we should we should rock paper scissors for it because they're both right. good. They're both good things. We can also ask about the Moon Phoenix. The for a shaman may know something unique about the Moon Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, so many questions we need, and we only have one question. Uh, left. They would also be able to answer a lot of questions about specifics of quests. Yes, because the they may not know, but they can ask the elements and the spirits of those elements. Oh my god, what is this element again? What is this element? Ah, uh, no, it's not. Salamander? Yeah. Fire and something, no, right? No, 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 no. No, it's fire. Ah, la, 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 da, 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 da. No, it's Spirit Shaman. It... Water, wind, fire, wood, and light. Yep. Okay. Give more information about the elements it does know, or it does, the spirits it does have. Hmm. They're so, good. You can use Life Bench as well. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I think fire... I think dealing with figuring out how to deal with the Salamander is probably going to be the more important one, because that also tells us how to deal with gold part. There you go. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, talk to you later. Well, a million are gone? Yeah, man. Well, it's Sunday. Places close early, and I need to get food. Uh, come on back. We'll be uh, waiting for you. Hmm? If if people are still on when I get back, sure. Hmm? Probably. Who knows? Right, see. Okay. That's the only reason I think we should ask about it with Salamander and Gulper. Those infused with heavy fire elements, like our Salamander and Gulper. Sure. Um, wait. Wait, toss it. Yes. After you. Okay. What? Okay. I wanted to see if I wanted to be more personal or more um, group focused here. So I, uh, I, okay. the personality decided that right. you go down to the spirit shaman who's still meditating and has not moved in weeks. I'll walk over and sit across from the spirit shaman. And we'll open their eyes. Their blind eyes. Yes. Spirit shaman, we have come for our last question. I see. We were wondering how we should deal with those infused heavy with fire spirit magic like hmm. a salamander or our friend gulper is that a generalized question or do you want rearing methods 
which is a very different question. Uh... I'm sorry, I'm blinking on what rearing means. Raising, right? Uh, yeah, you were up. asking for something very... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not... <laughs> you want to learn... Specific. Uh, I have the pure blood catalyst. Or the, the pure catalyst that I feel like would go well with our new salamander. Oh, no, what I was saying is, how should we, uh, I guess, raise them is a good way of putting it. Like, how to raise a salamander that's going to burn down your house. <laughs> that's going to burn down our house, eat our oxygen, and try and murder us when we get inherits. <laughs> you know, common problems. You want so you're asking specifically how to raise a salamander, a pure blood, greater spirit of fire. Yes, because then we can also use the, we can adapt those messages to a gulper who also has a heavy connection to fire. Yes, and it's kind of ah, a wonderful little salamander, and she will summon a fire and bring it to a kind of a and then pick up some dirt and kind of pack it in and kind of roll it around to a ball. And after a couple minutes of silence, there's a little pat, 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 and the heat starts to rise, and the salamander goes, and then pats his way over, and then, you know, the spirit salmon scoops him up and kind of holds him in kind of a little cradle as he kind of curls up and starts, you know, chewing and gumming on the uh, little ball of fire and earth. Hmm. It is a pure blood. Purer than pure. The first step to understanding what a fire, what the, the nature of the fire of a salamander, is to know its name. And I will help you with this. And it will kind of cradle and swoon the salamander back and forth. And when it kind of, kind of his little eyes get a little heavy and droopy and then it kind of nods off. And the fire dies down, and the heat dies down a good bit, as it's still chewing on the little, or gumming on the little ball of earth and fire. Kind of strokes the, the back of its head. Oh, you have a little bit of a... You a little bit of a troublemaker on your hands. In the godly tongue, he goes by Heimselder stands for world's fire or world fire his purpose is to light this world on fire and burn everything down to nothing that's his purpose it's his true name it's seen but salamanders never not by the design or their purpose or for the lack of trying they never seem to reach their goal entirely. There's too many other spirits of just great power and purpose and true name. And that's why the world is balanced. You have a creature whose entire purpose is to make this world burn. Every living thing, ash, to turn the world back into nothing. Such a terrifying little thing, isn't he? But he is not without his karmic opposite, his elemental opposite, who is to bring the world of water and drown it in its entirety. The great floods. To swallow the mountains and the land. But because of such an elemental exists, you have him. And she kind of holds him out as he still laying like a big gecko mm -hmm. uh, on her forearm and hand to stop it. You will never achieve true world fire unless all the other greater spirits with a physical form 
have no presence on this plane. If he is the only one, he will consume this entire world in fire. The air will ignite. There will be nothing to breathe. The land will char and burn. Creatures of fire, that element, they'll have a moment of breath. They'll live longer, but they'll burn. They'll experience being burned alive for the first time. But that's the same if any other true elemental, true spirit, greater spirit, with a physical form, were to be standing alone on this plane. It's actually good to see him again. It means the elements were out of line, out of balance, without his presence. It means some of the other elements have gone a little... Well, they've gained a lot of power, and they have exerted a lot of influence on this world. With him, this would be good. In fact, the desert might spread in his presence. Or the water. The water levels will drop because of his presence over time. Anyway. The water has swallowed up quite a bit of the world. The continent has gotten smaller and smaller without his presence. All right, Susie. the water continues to rise. Yes. We need to find Rayquaza and bring balance. We're good. We got this. And she'll kind of cradle him back to feed the world fire. I'm still there. It should be a slow burn. To stoke the flames early would bring ruin. And I do mean that literally. It'll be a calamity this world can't survive do it slowly he's a little bit of a pampered thing he will always whine and have a little bit of a temper because he is fire so treat him like you would a fire view him like you would fire itself and that is how he will be He'll be temperamental, sometimes predictable, but he always needs fuel. Should you ever not give him fuel, he will seek it himself, and he will go after the thing he thinks is tastiest, which will always be the most flammable thing. Which is not good for this world. <laughs> the most flammable thing in, the de in this desert is the oil fields, the tar fields. And if he gets his tongue on that, those will ignite immediately. There will be no more desert if that happens. Understood. Hmm. But you will always be able to find him, unless he travels through the Desolator's territory. For he leaves a trail of uh, charred carboned and glass in his wake everywhere he goes soon he will cover the entire floor of your uh, your dungeon with hard crunched <sighs> and uh, blackened rock under blackened rock and glass underfoot should be a nice aesthetic I like it oh it'll terrify any creature who does not know this um, who does not know the uh, the dungeon and what's within it because something of that heat very terrifying uh, he is very vulnerable in his current form even as big as he is if the desolator gets his teeth on him uh, the desolator will be able to challenge the king of fire the dragon king and win for he will have true fire but this little guy he's not so bad give him small things heck you can even give him things you don't really particularly like he will be teething at some point give him something really really tough but you know that will give out eventually under true fire 
like dark iron or even cold iron which refuses to melt out of stubbornness he can melt any metal over time and if you time it right you can take away his chew toy while it's nice and soft and malleable and give him something else because he always needs something to chew on or to digest or he's an endless hunger but if you're smart you can make it work for you question then mm -hmm. mm, clarification i should ask of course if you were to give it something like true ice would that be harmful no he's true fire well true ice <laughs> that's that'll be up to how the gods react because salamanders are gifted with true fire but he is a greater spirit and he is borrowing a power that is not his well it's a gifted power it was given to him as a gift because of what he represents but if he goes and chews on an inanimate object such as true ice as long as it's not um As long as this ice is just ice and not attached to another creature blessed by the gods, then yes, as a living manifestation of true fire, it will win out against stagnant true ice. But if it comes across a greater spirit of true ice, then um, clear the area. Understood. Because you have the divine manifestation of true ice and the divine manifestation of true fire about to go to war with each other. Because they are true elemental opposites. And they have a natural, divinely designed antagony or antagonism towards each other. They are enemies through and through. Sounds like you guys are planning some wild shit there. No, it is more of a need to know on yeah. a if we find a good chew toy here. What for the salamander? Oh yeah. Yes. Um if you're looking for true metal or true earth, uh those would be perfect for a little I'm Silder here. Uh, he could actually melt true metal. Make yeah. it malleable. In fact, his flame is one of the only flames that can modify immovable objects. It makes it malleable. Turns off their abilities until the metal sets again. Such as your immovable rod in your vault. Yes. It's made of true metal. This is good to know. Hmm. Or if you wish to sacrifice such an object, that would keep him satisfied for years. Maybe. Especially at this age. Maybe a decade even. Depends on how hungry he is. And he looks very hungry. Aren't you? And the thing rolls over and just kind of scratches its belly. <sighs> Sounds like a worthy <laughs> sacrifice. Uh, maybe, but you won't come across those often. True metal is about as rare as finding a salamander. Yes. And then one must wonder. Oh, well, we are the Lost Menagerie. You are? You our home for that which is lost and forgotten which means the things that will come from your halls you will give opportunity to the impossible such as this little fellow he had no breath into this world no gate no access point and he must be here 
as much as he threatens this world, because the other ele elementals are not here for your benefit. Even the life element is not here for you. It'll choke this world out. Cover the soil. Choke and devour and drink the rivers dry. With life. These elements, they're not here for those that the creatures that live on this place. They don't they're not they don't care about humans, and they don't care about monstre. They are of the elements, and the elements frankly don't care. I think you look for opportunities. This is my greatest gift I can give you of the information given. Now that the salamander has come, find and build a shrine to fire. You must find out his name, the god of fire, and his domain, for it is not Apollo. That's the biggest mm. mistake. He is much forgotten and much reviled for those who do know, because he is a bringer of fire. Fire is bad, don't you know? <laughs> I see. He will be comfortable, and he will most likely stick to that temple if you build it to him. For he will feel at home, he will feel safe, and he will feel the embrace of the god of fire. And you may receive quite a bit of blessings, too. That'll be his daycare, his little home. Find someone, actually you already have someone, who can be a maternal or a paternal creature to it. Gulper would be perfect. He's part salamander. He's part basilisk. He would also be one of the only creatures who could freely enter the fire temple. Um, once you've constructed it. And it doesn't have to be large. Maybe 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters. Perfect cube. With a staircase that leads directly to the bellows of your forge. For hot air will pour out of that place. Fire will pour out of that place. You will have the ability to create a mastercraft blacksmithy. That the dwarves would weep over. For the heat of the salamander. It's no joke. Yes, unfortunately. We would have to... <laughs> We need to make, or at least find, a forge master here. Simple. There are two species you would want to find that are particularly good at smithing, and they have nothing to do with the semi-humanoid. No? Mm hmm yeah, There's actually one here in the desert. There's an elemental. Something so simple, isn't it? Yes. There's an elemental that's not just Earth. They are a weird assortment of elements. It roams. If you can find a way to commune with it and convince it to join you. After you have, of course, built a home for this little one. And constructed a space for it to do its work. It'll join you. There's another, which you will not wish to do with. They are a... Not that they are evil or wrong, they're just a bad fit for you and yours. There's a... Elemental, again, of fire, this time. They will be demanding. They will be captain of all the flames and heat in your your domain and they will assume protective custody of of, of Heimselder here but he he and the other elemental know very well how to surpass even eclipse the meager abilities of even the dwarves
outside the desert, I there are many other options. Yeah, we would have to leave the desert, though. So. You would. Which is why I spoke of only the two. There is a lesser couple individuals you can seek out. They wander the desert, offering their trades and wares. If you wish to extend such a privilege to individuals who are seeking to become smiths, true smiths, is their quest. And they wander the world, trying to craft what they cannot craft because they possess not the body and the mindset for it, as the elementals are naturally gifted with. They're not as gifted and uh, they're not as able as those elementals, but they are good. Even by this world standards, some even by divine standards, they're good, but not great. Hmm. I will stay here and nurse the salamander until it is ready for the room that you will construct for it. This is much for its safety as for you, mind you. I thank you. I recommend finding a thermal vent. Uh, maybe dig deep enough, but with purpose, mind you, always with purpose to find always a, a, to find magma deep within the earth. And then a good flooring for it would be obsidian. Understood. If you could find the slabs for it. If not, it'll create obsidian on its own by just wandering around, licking the walls, licking the floor. Mm, That's what truly, do. I do love obsidian. Yes. Make a little shrine for the god of fire. Have the salamander wander around and give access for Gulper to come in and out. The creature's raising should extend beyond your collective lives. You are timeless and immortal, so that should give you an understanding about how long the rearing of a salamander should take. Should be a dungeon's multi-generational project. I thank you. Hmm. Remember, it is fire. It is not your friend, it's not your child, it's not the dungeon's child. It is fire. The world's fire. Second and last bit of opportunity you can, as the world's fire burns hotter and hotter, the waters will recede and relinquish what it has taken. Perhaps you can find opportunity. A thought of concern. Yes. We have below us a temple to Noreen. Will this be a problem? Keep them Do apart. They... Keep them apart. Absolutely keep them apart. Noreen is tolerant. Peaceful. Oddly enough, God of Fire is neutral. It burns as much as it provides. Gives heat. Life-saving heat, even. But also, it burns. It's fire. There is a balance you must find. You must find the distance. Which one must be higher? Which one must be lower? Or maybe they must be equally on the same horizontal axis. None higher and none lower. There's a hierarchy and there's a hierarchy in the pantheon of the gods. And you should the higher the pantheon or higher the level in the pantheon, the closer they are should should they be to the surface. Apollo is the greatest. All of Apollo's temples must be under the sun at all times. It must be on the surface. I was just going to give a look of annoyance with at the name of Apollo. <laughs> Zeke is considered the lowest on 
the uh, the hierarchy of the gods. For he does not play the politics and the does not interact with the other gods. So they wrote him off. He is the lowest of the low of the hierarchy. But that suits him just fine. That does not mean he is the weakest. In fact, he is the only who can challenge Apollo. But never does. He lets Apollo act. That was... He usually stops as he realized kind of what his fight was going on. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I just had a small revelation as uh, I fought a paladin of Apollo. Mm. Apollo is the most human of the gods. Mind you. Most yes. of the emotions and the emulation of human is represented in Apollo. He is a jealous god, too, because of that. And he likes to keep what is his. But Zeke keeps him fair, for he is the most monstre representative of the gods. Understood. Hmm. And it is interesting enough, even through the representation of this world and its population, humans are most likely to worship Apollo, and monsters are most likely to worship Zeke. Fun little fact. Hmm. And at the very middle, you're in. Who has the least worshippers, least respect, but also asks the least. See. <sighs> no more clarifications, no more questions. I've committed myself here to nurse and take care of the salamander until the fire temple is properly built. Then I will deliver and situate the salamander until he is comfortable. I will give him a year's worth of food afterwards, and then I must depart. That's it. The temple should be done right, otherwise the your home will collapse under the weight and the heat. Very intelligent design must be done if you were to capitalize off of his presence here. And you should spare no expense on the resources, and I know you have that. Understood. We will try our best. Do not expose any of the heat Heim's asserter pulls, puts off of his body. To the elixir in your vault. If it comes in direct contact with the heat, the glass will shatter. I do not plan to allow him into our vault. It does not. It's not about access. It's about how your dungeon's built. His heat will grow by the day. And if it ever burns through the walls, or permeates through the walls, even into your vault, and that heat creeps in and touches the glass of the elixir, glass will shatter. It's not about him, it's not about his access, it's about him and his power. It's his heat. Yes. And I believe it is a fault of my communications that if his power was to permeate to reach a revolt that would be him accessing it in my viewpoints okay go now and stands up phil <laughs> you have a new job Thing. Yeah, he's gone. 
Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if he was here, so... Yep. So now he hopped back in. Okay. No, he is. Actually, he did hop back in, but he's still out and about. I think he's just listening. Okay. What's up? <clears throat> you have a new Hold on responsibility. Hold on, uh, Okay, what? You have a new responsibility. It's on what grounds? On the grounds that it protects our temple. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to build a room for a forge and a shaft that leads straight up. A heat shaft that leads straight up. To the forge. Uh, the forge. That is a cool thing because if you, unless you want something the size of Phil to be able to walk down that heat shaft, it's going to have to be built by the kobolds. Yes, but you're, so there's going to be you're going to need to be two rooms, a forge, uh, a layer where they're going, where we're going to keep uh, our salamander, slash sculper, and then we'll have to have a heat shaft built from there to the forge, and from the forge out. Okay, so you want first? I'm assuming you want. Whatever this temple is going to be, to be level with Nareem's. I don't, we me, don't know. You don't know. Okay. So. We don't know yet. That well, is to be determined. Well, well, Nareem's temple is the only room on the third floor, as things stand. You okay. can also dig down to the third floor. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, hmm. actually, no, that's not technically true. My my horde room which is dug further down from the greater pit of philosophy is also on the third floor technically but <laughs> that is neither here nor there okay uh so you want a fire temple mm -hmm. then you want a forge on top of that and then you want some sort of smoke stack yes so we'll um i mean yeah that's probably doable we got a whole lot of desert to work with. Thank you, Phil. Um, you mm -hmm. might consider raising some skeletons to help with that construction, though, honestly, I don't know how good they'd be right off the bat. I will talk to Lord Gull about learning animation magic. Yeah, well, we got plenty of bodies for you to work with in that new uh, stash room that you had me build for you. Yes, thank you. So, you know, how about it? Mm -hmm. Very I'm gonna interesting. Take a, I'm going to take a wild guess and say you probably want me to carry the essence of fire back to the temple like I did with Nareem? No. Oh, well, good, because that would probably burn me alive. <laughs> it would not do you well, because you have an ice and water element. <laughs> yeah. Ice, water... You have earth. Earth, metal. Yep. And then heat resistance as well. Yeah. So. May maybe. Because you yeah. could have a suppressed maybe. and control the fire. But uh, it would it would be interesting. It would be maybe uh, instead of taking a perk slot, I'll ask for that particular quest. If that's what you want, homeboy, we will we will see about that. Uh, we'll we'll wait until the superior uh, evolution rolls around when I get back home. Maybe. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm gonna mute myself now. Uh, Allie. Yeah. It's going to take you a whole honkin' week to revive. But that's not a bad thing for you. That's yeah. you, a whole honkin' week being on insomnia. Scree! I okay. honestly so thought it would take longer than that with me working on my form. No. No? It's about your... It'll take longer each time you die. Okay. But that's no that's no bad thing for you. That means you can dream a dreamer's dream. 
Yeah. All right. So uh, you've got. Um. Wow. Let me. You have a lot of DTA that you need to um, assign for me. So we'll have seven got left over, I think. So six times. All right. Got 48 plus six. So you got 54 DTA you need to divvy up among your wings. Okay, okay I'm approaching he's... my destination, so I'm going to hop off. Completely. Bye, Mel. Bye. 54. Where, where did you get that number? Uh, eight DTA per day times six, because you've already cracked into the first day of the, the week you're dead. You're still dead. Okay. Uh, you only did a couple of downtime actions for that, so you got six DTA left because you, you spent a little bit on your mask. Did you read her message? Yes. Wasn't she spending seven downtime actions in each of those? That'd be seven pairs of seven, so 49. So, right. so that means you've got Seven, five left or five okay yeah yeah you have five detail left before you revived well i still need to build my safe space what do you want it to be or do you want to look for something that exists in the dream mm. or do you want to make it Allie. i was thinking i could make a cocoon but having a look around sounds fun too Yeah. Sure. Uh, I was gonna say, as a reminder, you remember there is somebody dream sleeping nearby as well. It's actually inside the dungeon. Yeah. But uh, maybe if you talk to Susie, can you talk to people while you're daydreaming? <laughs> um, Romy perception. Uh, my little moth dream demon. Because, uh, do note, um, for my next day I was about to do, since I haven't really had a time to do it yet, um, I am taking what, uh, Eastley has asked for Lord Ghoul's ask. <laughs> why, what, how does death build character? So I, I'm going to be going to, um, for my sleep time, I'm going to go over by, um, Indrid's core. And I'm going to sleep and uh, imagine uh, the death that uh, Injured went through. It was explosive. Yes. Um, it was quick and incredibly bright. Wonderful. Yeah, so that's, that's the plan. Uh, I'm just going to uh, see what I can do, see if I can speak to... Uh, Injured. Um, I don't think I've tried to speak to anyone's monster core while they when they've been dead. I haven't really had the time to do it in Dream Palace. Mind Palace. Mind Palace. Yeah. Um. Indrid, there's a sleeper nearby. Do you want to uh, spend some DTA looking into that, or do you want to um, look for that safe haven? Um, I think I'm just kind of focusing on looking for the safe haven. I'm trying to get all my bases covered before I get too explorative. I see it is. Okay. Um, as you. as you look around, um, there are a couple objects in the dream space that are not, hmm, that are tangible. They're not being subjected to the ever-changing whims of fleeting dreams. But you also feel storm in that direction of the largest structure. A nightmare. Feels, even for you, someone who wishes to be nightmare, or bring it, even that sends a chill down your spine. That. Hmm. You could get a closer look, or you can start looking for 
a bolt hole. Or continue looking for a bolt hole or a home. I'm going to continue looking for a home. Okay. Roll me but perception. I'm going to keep that thing on the back burner. Mm. That would have been real good in the real world. Uh, you find yourself in the heart of the storm. Whoops. I guess I'm mm. not looking for a home anymore. There's a uh, hiss, a cackle of laughter, something crying, screaming, laughing. My oh, wings are a buzzing. Oh, they're buzzing. And they're the only thing keeping whatever this thing is off of you. But it won't be rebuked to. or for much longer. Studying you. Um, I don't like you. being in its home turf. I'm gonna try and get away from it. Agility. 100. It is not letting you go. Mm -hmm. Not even a little bit. Oh, studying you. Oh, it's studying you. It's now looking at your second set of wings. Analyzing them. With an irrational mind. An impossible consciousness. Madness. Um, I want to shoot out the first three sets and see if I can hit it. Unroll me an intelligence. Anything you throw out will never be returned. It may distract it, but this this is this is hungry. It wants what you have. Wants what you have very much. It would be. Don't like it. It likes. It would love your gift. No. It's now looking at the third set of your wings. What do you do? Um, I don't have a whole lot to do. I got. I just got to keep trying to get away. I don't know. Agility. Uh, you got wind, maybe? Wind might no be interesting. Elements, no elements here. No elements, just dream. Just dream. And nightmare. Agility, please. This is rude. To you. It's getting... It's getting a good look at you. It's shadowing you. looking at your fourth set of wings. You need to find a home, Ellie girl. <laughs> or you need to get away from this thing. Because the rolls have not been in her favor. I'm gonna try and jump into the closest sleeper's dreams. Ah! Okay! Go ahead and roll me a perception test to detect in this tumult of nightmare a dream there's a dream nearby where 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 where, where? um hmm. <laughs> there's two dreams nearby where do you go uh is there a stronger dream? Oh, there's a much stronger dream. One surrounding you is an incredibly powerful dream. But it's a nightmare. Well. 
I'm going to go towards the strongest dream that isn't a nightmare. Alright. You rush forward. Roll me willpower to get there. Because the nightmare doesn't want to let you. Nope. It realizes oh. what you're doing. It doesn't like it. This is a lot of threes. But they're not in the row. <laughs> no. It pushes you back. Uh. Growls at you a little bit. It's looking at your fifth set of wings. No! You want to try again? Uh, yeah. Okay. You push up against it. Roll that Surely again. I can't fail this seven times. Yes, I mean, you can. Time, this Ellie game Bill. is evil. <laughs> that's, the, that's the idea. You do want to fail. You want to fail hard. Uh, I do want to fail hard. Don't let Matt outfail out you here. This is not This is not right. <laughs> oh, power. So, okay. You're rolling like a champ. Nice. Ooh, doubles, but that's yeah. not a triple. Nope, not unless 42 is rolled one more time. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Ellie, roll again. Roll a little power. Actually, five and then 42. See? Didn't work. If that was a 44 and a four, that'd be different. All right, Ellie. Ooh, you're rolling what? too good. I'm rolling too great. Oh. Matt, stop. <laughs> Wait, you're uh, on your it, will, it will rake out at you. Uh oh. Uh, your mask. Would you like it to do something? Because it's undefined yet. You have defined your wings, but the mask doesn't know what it does yet. I would. Like it to create a random dream situation. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have that power. Yeah. Not yet. That's very powerful. Especially the presence of another creature. Very powerful creature. And this is a nightmare. This is what you wish you could be. So fearing it would not work. If you'd like, we can do a re another set of rolls before you figure out. Because it will be looking at your sixth set of wings. <laughs> uh, a oh man. Mm-hmm. I never said this was safe, Allie. It's not. It's not supposed to be either, but I thought maybe I would roll a little better. Or a You are rolling worse. great for the normal game. <laughs> <laughs> You've turned my luck against me. I have, yes. You haven't rolled 100 in a while, though. I haven't rolled 1 in a while either, though. Okay. Okay. Willpower again? Are we adding the minus 10 to my rolls? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It See, automatically does. Yeah. But I did a 42 and he's but I would have been on a 32. His is more powerful than you. No, it doesn't work that way. You already have the skill in there. Minus 10 is already in the roll. Roll again. There you go. Oh, Alright. Uh, you burst through rattling your mask as you go and you kunk right in your noggin as you hit a big solid door damn it no this is not the nightmare you feel like the most the powerful dreams on the other side it's an actual door i knock how do you knock like thump 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 let me in no nothing How do you like Morse code? Do you like uh, do a song to it? Do you, uh, the knock also can be something else, I suppose. The knock could be a uh, uh, like a wording. 
could say something with the knock, like make it echo something instead, or I don't know. It's very fine. Yeah, it should be, because <laughs> you can do anything with it. Can I try and reach my consciousness out to the dream on the other side? Uh, this is a secure sanctuary. No reaching of consciousness inside. That means you could slip inside, because the consciousness, that is you. That is your entire entity. And if there's even a sliver of a crack, you yeah, can slip right. your consciousness and your whole body into that space. What kind of knock? Doesn't have to be a knock. Um, you don't even have to knock. There's a door with a handle. Oh. There's even a lock. I'll try the handle. It's locked. I'll see if I can slip into the lock. Um, there is a moment. Your geld will pull on your um your your pant hairs. That would be the way in. Well, it's very dangerous. Are you sure? I'm scared. I'm scared too. Okay. Well, <laughs> whatever you choose, let's do it. Um Cause I'm Geld, I'm a figment of your imagination. And if you go, the I go too. Into the fire. It's up to you. <laughs> Alright, you wanna go yes. into the lock? <laughs> okay, let's try it. In the lock. Okay. Hope you have your, your headphones on. I have some sound effects. <laughs> One moment here. Let me turn this up. I need to understand. As you start to travel through. As it twists and turns and you fall between the gears, ever turning larger and smaller, the world shifts, twists, turns, rotates like the face of a clock in the hands, and you fall down this rabbit hole. These gears reach out like teeth and try and grind away at your consciousness, disperse who you are. You have to weave in between the holes and the cracks and between the very teeth of meshing gears to make your way through. There's a tolling bell, and it gets closer, almost chasing you, letting you know your impending time here is limited. Your doom coming for when it strikes 12, or nay, worse, 13. That's it. There will be nothing left, for the gears will have turned you back to the primordial nothingness of the dream. But you rush through, your wings, many, heavy now, push and thrum faster and faster. Geld holds on, whimpering, for that's all he can do. For his terror is too palpable for him to act, paralyzed. Panic, true utter panic, rushes through you as the gears, their teeth, turn to blades. Sharp, dimensionally sharp, and possibly so, ready to chew you to nothing. And you burst out, right before the last of these hungry teeth chew you to pieces, mulch you. You land into a cozy place. And inside a study, a library study, multi stories high, things floating around without a care in the world. Books sorting themselves. A little practice arena. Not sure for what. Maybe exercise. Maybe sword play. Spell play, even. There's a private series of desks with different 
assortments of projects. A little cozy, large fire. Massive windows. Some stained, some mosaic. Some look like they've been broken open and boarded over. But they line every facet of this. Not circular, for it has facets, but a polygon-shaped sanctuary. And beyond those glass is a storm, beating, clawing, banging against the sanctuary walls and windows, trying to get in. And there's this little girl that floats by, upside down, with a book clutched to their chest. Oh my god, you're a person! Hi. So they float around with just pajamas. Uh, no Insomnia's pants. just gonna sit down and hold up a finger. Just okay, I'm gonna flip this way. Whee! Um, he's gonna he's gonna take a second to just sort of gather himself, and um, you know, have have a breather, and then he'll wander sort of aimlessly after the girl. Hi 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 hi. Welcome to my sanctuary. It's very nice. I am trying to learn how to make one myself. Oh. I'm Somni. How are you? I'm... been better. Hmm. Um, That's a word. Insomnia. Ah, you have been. Yeah, it's funny. You hear from around the corner. Somni, where'd you put your pot of serpents? Ha, uh, what? Oh, right. I don't remember. Whee! Welcome to my sanctuary. How did you make this? Hmm. With my brain. I don't know how, most of the time. Everyone says my brain and my mind's all scrambled and doing stuff. Uh, but... Oh, I did. What? Uh, uh, I see. Okay. I can't. I'm blind. Oh. You should try echolocation. No. No. Okay. That's lame. That's like seeing, but not seeing, but seeing. That's it, cheating. It would be helpful. Maybe. I don't know you. I don't know you either. And you're pretty spoopy. I try to be. Okay. I believe it. Well, nice talking to you. I'm somehow floating over here. We Are you the girl with the dragon? Yeah. You know my dragon? Oh, he's the best, isn't he? He always takes care of me, but he also is like bad saw me. Uh, oh, I miss him. Yeah. Saw him once. Well, at least you know where he is. Good job. Would you like to get back to him? Oh, he'll find me or I'll find him. Will you stay in the sanctuary forever? Well, I'm not leaving. What is outside? That's a nightmare. He bugs me. Ah. <sighs> Hmm. 
I finally found the music I wanted for this place. Hmm. That is a nightmare. Pretty big one, too. Are you a nightmare? I in between things right now. You don't want to be a nightmare. Why not? Well, because nightmares have no control over themselves. They are a nightmare. Oh. They are a force, like nature. They're a storm. That's why they are so difficult to overcome. That's why I have to hide in my little house. Too powerful. I can't fight it alone. May be overcome, or do you have to just hide from them? Sometimes you have to hide. You gotta pick your battles. I'm still learning. I'm not that strong. But I'm clever. And I've got a knife! She holds out a knife. Looks like a kitchen knife. What yeah. is your method of learning? Oh, uh, I read books. And I talk to people, and they tell me things. Like the Terrible. ones in the sanctuary? Which one? Oh, oh you mean the voice over there? Yeah. What? Over there? Yeah. Um, she points. And... Her arm dis dislocates and points directly behind her. Over there! <laughs> <laughs> and cracks back into place. She's shy. Uh, perhaps she would talk to me? If you'd like. And then from the voice behind the shelves, Oh, dearie. I don't think I should talk to it. It won't go well for it. You know how I am. I don't really like visitors, especially unannounced. And it snuck between all the teeth and gears and blades I put together. Hmm. I was being chased. And? It's very rude to break into someone's built sanctuary. Even if we did build a, uh, a way to get in, that doesn't mean you should. I manners, darling, manners. didn't feel I had a choice. I apologize. Hmm. We'll see. If you want to talk to me, I suppose. But it wouldn't go well for you. She's a dream demon. Ooh. Dream demons are really, really powerful. They're personifications of dreams that are so tangible, they can possess you. Does she know a lot about sanctuaries? Uh, I got a phone call, one sec. Okay. You can honestly have found one of the safest places to be right now. Yes, you chose the right um, choice. So long, so long as you stay on the demon side. Yeah, but like, man, I can't just stay here forever. What's nope. next? What's next is you should ask Somni to teach you how to build a sanctuary. Don't ask the demon. Uh, I'd also suggest um, using some of that merit you got for Spirit Mentor. Yeah, you sent me something about that. Where is that? How much does that cost? That would be 20 merit. You can also get it through a major or superior evolution, nice major. But... Is it, it's a talent? No, it's a quality. Quality. Only worth 20, though, so you can pick it up for 20 merit. Or that. Or you can yeah, get it with a, a major, or get some negative qualities that counteract, counteract it for free. What level of quality don't we have to get? Nope. The, 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 tier, the tier 2. There's... I'm on my way back now. I will be here muted. Okay. But yeah. Uh, 
Char, have you hit any of your thresholds yet? I have not. <laughs> Do you ever remember me doing a threshold? Because I don't think I have. No. Because I thought they were at 100. And I just checked, and it looks like they're at 75. Oh, are you guys talking about the, uh, um, the merit thresholds? Yeah. Yeah, they're at 75. Same with oh, the I'm interested in how that works, too, because I'm five away from the might threshold. So once you reach the threshold, you get everything in that threshold. Uh, and then once you reach the second threshold, you usually get whatever it is in the second one and access to the second tier ability. <laughs> cool. I'm pretty sure I I haven't hit anything. Mm -hmm. At least I haven't talked to Matt about it, but I... I don't have it written down, and I was expecting it to be at 100, so I'm kind of... Nope, 75. 75. No, 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 I think it's 100. I checked. 75. First level oh, is I 75. Think... I checked this earlier. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I forgot that pillar system is in... Or, like, the pillar merit is in two different places. And it was 75. Yeah. So, uh, is, like, the session over now, or are you guys taking a break? Matt had to take call. a call, yeah. Mm. Ah. Honestly, I'm probably going to hit mm, my might, or my, uh, quick... Your swiftness? Just pillar, pillar threshold soon. Nice. So, I have a question, uh, Commander, about... The, how your ability sharing power works. Sure. Uh, can are we able to share talents through it? Yes. Oh, okay. We we can't share qualities. <clears throat> you, and we can't you share. Can, you can share talents that are um, are like powers, but you can't yeah. share anything that's like internal to your character, like something intrinsic. Uh, you can share qualities. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, made the moon shine upon you, I can share. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Lucky is something uh, I, I do believe, because I could choose Lucky as one of the, uh, you know, not the mentor, but the, uh, you know, our three people we can have, our minions. Mm -hmm. I was able to choose Lucky as one of those things. Um... So, if I were to pick up, um, uh, this is not happening, the legendary quality, would I be able to share that with everyone? I'm not sure, honestly. Um, uh, for example, uh, I can use Indrid's, uh, give me a gimmick, right? Hmm. But, uh, I don't know if those two are the same thing. Yeah. Because otherwise, I looked through my entire sheet, and pretty much everything I've got is intrinsic to the character. Yeah. So, with the like one exception of the thing that I put in the uh, uh, the the note that you have on roll twenty, being crushing blow. So I earned that power. Though that might also not qualify. Uh, and things will yeah. change over time. This is just what it is at level one, so. Mm. Well, things will get really nasty if you have, for enemies, if you ever gain the ability to share intrinsic abilities. Did you hear the pot full of serpents reference? Remember us telling you about that? No. I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, what man. What does that mean? It's uh, the uh, the dream mage's favorite snack. And when was it referenced? It's the first time you met you met the dream mage. Well, you didn't meet them, but you knew about them. You found them in the crystal cave. 
by the dragon. We were talking about it. No, I missed that entirely. bit confused yeah about what about what exactly like what exactly do catalysts mechanically do so you know you wow. have let's say let's reference like this i am playing uh fallout new vegas and i am playing vanilla i uh i bought the game for 60 bucks i uh, cool. plugged it in and I expected to get something out of it. I chose what options I wanted to do, blah blah blah. Um, I download a mod pack and the mod pack changes the base game on what it can do now and instead of um, instead of having something basic, I can now make it into something more. But the issue is, is that catalysts are two ways. If you make something internally, um, you get the qualities of that item. So the mods of are now added to the base game, and that's what it is. It's something new. But it's always going to be that way. You can't remove the mods, unfortunately. Um, okay. <clears throat> Was that a good reference? Was that a good uh, metaphor for uh, the catalyst I'm, I'm still at all? waiting for what the second bit is. The second bit. Um, <laughs> the other one is uh, making external things, like items. So, oh, for, ex okay. for example, um, the you know the um, the metal and uh, you know that metal I was telling you about from the cauldron. Mm. I can add that. I could add that cauldron thing to an item for catalyst. Because I'm putting it into that instead of yourself, okay. so I don't get the metal attributes and everything like that. Because that would, I, I feel like that would hinder my character. That's not what I'm going for. All right. Cool. Interesting. So think of it as um, effect and effect. A F F E C T. You're putting that material, whatever that item is that's a catalyst and uh, it's improving your whole self. Okay. In this case, for the, the catalysts usually are, you pick one of the things of your mechanically, you know, if you're, say, um, you're picking a superior evolution and you want to do the, the one main thing you got. Like, for example, um, you could choose a five star quality, right? A legendary quality. Mm -hmm. And instead of having the base vanilla version, you um, get some gems and crystals, or you take a potion that does a certain thing and you add it to the base. And now it becomes that thing instead. And it's, it's, it's mm. imbued through the whole thing. So you still have the base version, but now it's better because you have the mods. It's flavor, like your soup base. Yep. Um, so I have a, uh, a vegetable soup and there's no salt and there's no pepper. It's just like broth. That's your base. Now I want to add some beef. I want to add some a, 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 a quality beef to this bad boy. And I'm going to get some vegetables and blah, blah, blah. And I'm making a whole mixing pot of a catalyst. So you can turn whatever your evolution is going to be into something way better. And you're out pacing your peers this mm -hmm. day because they went for something vanilla they're playing they're they're playing with what they have base and you're playing uh unfairly i suppose it's like you go into a multiplayer game and you the guy's playing without any cheats and mods and the other guy's just playing normal uh you're gonna beat him because that's just how it's programmed 
Interesting. Because uh, they're not going to have all these catalysts. Multiple... Yes. Are we able to use multiple catalysts in one evolution? Um, that's the whole point of my uh, my title path kind of deal. I'm I, you get all kinds of things together. Um, one reference mm -hmm. would be how um, what's his name uh, Grimm's uh, his his whole coat thing he did. Like he he got a mm -hmm. whole all kinds of items. And he put them together. Like he had the uh, mm -hmm. the cloak and the uh, the spider web the darkness crystal. He had all kinds of things to build it into something cool. Yeah. All right. I, I think I. I think I see where this is going. Oh yeah, did you guys take uh your? I think it was like two crystals each. Let me let me make sure I have my math right. There's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two crystals each. Or perfect ether gems. I uh. Perfect day. Eh? Are they small? Yeah, perfect? yeah. yeah. Because remember, I asked for um yep. from the uh for the catalyst. What's stuff. her name? Yep, yep, the manager. For the catalyst and enough perfect ether gems that we could each do one evolution. Mm -hmm. Or one superior evolution. She gave me ten of them. I I took I take two. Like all ten of them are marked on my sheet, but two of them are mine. Yeah. yeah. Because that's how much I need for my superior. And then that that leaves eight, which is enough for uh you, Char, uh, Alley Cat, and uh, Ding Warden to each do one superior, assuming you have uh, only done one so far. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. Excuse me a moment. Okay. Let's start with. <sighs> so Matt's on a call or something right now? Yeah. Oh. Probably gonna be going to bed here soon anyway, so you guys can That's deal cool. with your stuff. I just wanted to get this days out of the way. I haven't been able to do that yet. What day are we on now? I think we're on day nine, is that right, Char? We are on day nine when I left. So unless you further. Allie's pretty much on her last day of the uh, the two weeks. Time is meaningless. I am dream. It's me, the I'm sorry to hear that. You boys from out of town. Oh yeah. Two weeks, huh? And then we have another. How much time do we have after we're allowed to leave the menagerie? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's three months. Three months? Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Like the, See, the, the menagerie's the territory is what I mean. You, you know what I mean, right? Hmm? The menagerie's territory within those uh I don't I don't know how long how far it was, but can't leave the dungeon for two weeks, but we can after we can leave the dungeon, I think. Yeah. Just not the territory. Yeah, so basically we have two months here. We can't leave the dungeon for two weeks, and we can't leave the territory until, you know... So yeah, it was two months. It was two months. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And then we start arc two. <laughs> yep. I, uh, two weeks, I would figure out what to do. Oh, that's not true. I know what to do. I have to figure out how to work on this divine quest. Wow. I have to figure Divine's out. the hardest, it. Char. Good luck. Yep. I have to figure out how, if I want that perk slaughter to do that, or to get a quest. I want a quest for my uh, first superior evolution. I went for a uh, a five star quality. Mm -hmm. I'm saving that for something special. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> already not anymore. It. You already used it. It's true. Yeah. Oh, I mean, on the bright side, I don't have any elemental weaknesses anymore. <laughs> So that's fair. But what about the element vulnerable? Vulnerability. Oh, so, uh, do you, what about to light and death? Or life and death? There's life and death, light and dark. I do not believe uh believe Matt's exact words were I no longer have any elemental uh strength or any elemental vulnerabilities. Nice. Is the thing I was weakest to was like a time oh, four cool. weakness the lightning, I think it was. So I just rectified it as fast as possible. Uh if Italy dies I can bring in Yamato. What is Yamato? Yamada is it? Yamada is a dragon. Oh, he's the really? dragon sleeping with uh, the sleeping girl. Really? Mm hmm. Cool. News from a different campaign. Really? Mm hmm. Interesting. It was really sad because that campaign just. Like, even got murdered. I wonder after this campaign is done, what will happen to Phil if he makes it all the way to the end. That is the oh. main goal. That's the thing you gotta do first, and then you can worry about it after that. Exactly. Yep. You just gotta make it there. That's a hard thing to do. I will. I will. Give Ali credit though; she's she's done it successfully every time. I have not. I've got a. You haven't lost the character. Layer on those defenses. Cause I run away all the time. It's effective. Yeah. Let it not be said that cowardice is not an effective survival tactic. Oh. Friday, though, is going to be a nightmare. Nah, I'll be fine. I have so much merit to spend. But you can give it any away. I'd love some merit. No, it's my merit. I need yeah. it. <laughs> I think you have the most merit in the game right now, I do believe. Uh, Eatsley or no, no, or uh, Aether? Go, Aether now. Uh, no. I don't think so. Let me see here. You should have like three rivals, though. We only got shared for, I think, uh. No, because we shared the merit for three of them. Completing the, uh, the second one. But we all had that one together. Um, yeah, so we Asian didn't. 015, we, we shared, and my tier three, we shared, and the tier two, we shared. Or no, we didn't share the, uh, the base. My first. Yeah, one. you're going to say we didn't share the base. Uh, we did get something. We got 25 from the last one. But, uh, yeah. yeah. 
I'm sitting on 69 merit. Yeah. Speaking of survival, tomorrow, though. We had to figure out we get, <laughs> we gotta we get get to you out bacon. first. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. You see, uh, where we ended, you were still in the throat of a monster trying to eat you. It's dead. Yes. Yeah. Still got to get you out. out. Yeah. (sighs) Well, just gonna claw. Or not claw, but uh, crawl my way out the way I came in. Don't worry. Uh, Esmeralda's going to try and bite out its throat for you. I'm already eating my way out of its cranium, so... I mean... You didn't... Like, I didn't really su- I yeah. tried. You tried. But it's not resisting anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and as well, it's probably just gonna bite. And like, no, get out. Nom nom nom. Well, I'm unsure what I'm gonna do about not being able to effectively damage most things. At this juncture. Because the, uh, the sword attack is the one I want to use. And it's the one I'm best at using. <laughs> but the, uh, um, But the gun is the only thing I have that can damage effect- anything effectively so far. So. I mean, we did go against a big monster guy. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta find those Titanite shards. Granted, if you'd gone against the uh, uh, Shambling Hordes, I probably could have done something against them. Yeah, maybe. They would have still killed me in one hit. Dude, we're all super weak in that game. I know. <laughs> gotta figure out well actually no I think I have enough merit to just buy my way to lightning attack right now but at the same time I want to do dual wielding uh, it's its own merit investment I, do you have enough money to buy your way to lightning attack I know it has a lot of prereqs on it it's swift strike oh, actually, lightning attack yeah you need swift attack then lightning oh, attack no no I, yeah, the only um the only prerequisite for lightning attack is swift strike. The only prerequisite for swift strike was like 30 agility. Thank you. You going out? Uh, anyway. right. Very much apologize about that. A lot of very important stuff actually happening today with uh, Taylor's family, uh, my other best friend getting divorced. Like, <sighs> there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, big things happening to two of my best friends, and I needed to, you know, they they, they actually reached out and called me, which is a, uh, I don't normally hear from them on the phone, which means it's big. You so, doing uh, all right? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. It's my 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 best friends are uh, in a little bit of a transition in their lives, a little bit of a storm. So I'm trying to be an anchor to help them. So thank you very much for your patience, guys. Ellie, what a surprise! A surprise? A dream demon? You mean? Yeah. There is a something called a dream demon floating about this this library. And this little girl who continues to float in ambient, nonsensical, gravity-defying, just 
just an orbit. That makes no sense. Drift a floating. And they're sitting cross-legged like they were, you know, sitting on the floor reading at one point. I would like to build a sanctuary. Can you recommend me a book? Mmm, why? Because I don't want that. And I'm going to point at the storm getting me. Well, if it got you, you'd become a nightmare. And it would eat you, and you'd become nightmare. And then if you were really good, you would separate yourself from the hole. And then you'd be your own nightmare. Isn't that what you always wanted? Mm, trail by fire. Yeah. But do you want to be a nightmare? Or do you want to be a dreamer? Andred's going to think deeply about this. And they have this kind of... big smile on their face. It's not malicious, it's not... Um, playful, it's just... Just a smile. And they kind of stare at you ish, maybe past your left shoulder with their blank, blind eyes. I'm a dreamer. What made you choose that life? Well, I've always been a dreamer. I've never been anything but a dreamer. You're a dreamer too. It's a conscious choice to become a nightmare. I'm pretty scary. No. I've always been pretty scary. No. No, you're not. I don't think you're scary at all. Both my like feelings you. are hurt. I like you a lot. There's a voice that comes beyond. <sighs> oh, darling, you hurt its feelings. Oh, I didn't mean to. I just think, you know, to choose pure. Pure of heart, pure purpose. Yeah, they are. But honey, I once you have killed an entire colony, and then a baby. Uh, a okay. We baby. Well, I turned the entire block of a city, all of its air, into sticks, and then I turned it into water, and everyone drowned. Well, it's very drowned. creative. I like it. I was not. It was an accident, but I still did it. Some people lived. Some people didn't. The people that lived were the ones that were exhaling when I uh, turned all the air into sticks. The ones that didn't were the ones that were inhaling because they got sticks in their lungs now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be unpleasant. No, they died. It was gruesome. They were pointy yeah. sticks. Because oh. I was feeling ornery that day. So uh, a lot of branches. And um, Is that yeah, why it's... you live here now? Oh, no. Uh, my world collapsed. Oh. The demons ate it. It got destroyed. Like the one in the corner? Oh, no, that's my dream demon. So I mean, good demons I mean, actual and bad demons. demons. Oh, no. Dream demons are different than demon demons. Demons are demons in this case. Uh, mm -hmm. They're uh, I need to from a to world like that's the there. side. Diagonal? On the same space? I don't know how to describe it. They're from a different place than yours. But huh? they can always visit. And they ate my world. And now I'm here. Me and Do my best like friend, we ran away. Oh. She'll float what is over your best friend now? He's right here. And he goes over and bonks a white dragon on the head. Bother, 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 bother. It's like... Char. Mm, yes. Bother, 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 bother. Bonk, 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 bonk. Saw me. I'm trying to sleep. It was a guest. Introduce yourself. New sister. We haven't had guests here ever. Lucky. Lucky, 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 lucky. Yeah. Um, oh look, a guest. I give a little <sighs> wave. Rolls over. Stands proper. 
My name is Yamada. It was a pleasure to meet you, little. He's fancy. Mothman. Mm -hmm. Insomnium. Insomnium. See, I told you my name was the best name. It's even in their name. Yes, our names are very similar. I know. But I'm about sleeping and you're about keeping everyone else awake. With fear. You're not scary. That's scary, as she points out to the, uh, the nightmare outside. And while well, you feel a little miffed and a little disappointed, she's right. That is true, unbridled fear and terror. And she told you, if you want to ever be that, you have to consciously choose that. But the more you look at it, there's Does something it? wrong with it. There's something wrong about it. Does it build character? No, it uh, hurts. <laughs> well, it'll build it, and it'll destroy it, it'll warp it, twist it, churn it, uh, tear it to pieces, reconstitute it with other pieces, maybe some of it's yours, but never in the same configuration it ever was. But you'll be scary. You'll be the scariest thing to ever scare. But you won't be you. You'll be something else. You'll be you a nightmare. also will not be a friend of uh, Susie's anymore if you do this. Oh, ouch! <laughs> well, no, terrible. you will. You will be writing a new character sheet. Oh, because you it'll be something you can play, but you won't be injured or insomnium. Oh, I like being injured. Like, like they said, it's a conscious choice. Unless it's not a conscious choice, and they get a hold of you. But, if you really want to, you can be a dreamer. And there's nothing more scary than a nightmare, but you know the second scariest thing ever? What? Is the, is the darkness in our own minds. Mm. Wise words. Sometimes they're worse than the nightmares we suffer. Guilt, doubt, f you know, fear of failing, or failing a despair. Um, never reaching our goals. Pot of serpents. Pot of serpents. Yeah. Think of so your perfect character record, Allie. <laughs> if you get a new character sheet, you'll break the <laughs> record. So it can always be a nightmare later if I want to. Always, but I don't recommend it. If you really want dream power, though, you have to be one of three things. One, you have to be a nightmare. That's the first option, which is the easiest option. But you'll be something eventually, if you ever free yourself from the nightmare that ate you. Uh, two, uh, you can be named by the Dreaming City. It would give you purpose, but it would lock you within the purpose, and you'd be a resident. If you're strong enough, you could leave the city. But at the same time, you could uh, accidentally... Um, well, there's a lot of things. Uh, be eaten by the city. It's a very scary place, even for me. A lot, a lot of really scary stuff. Or, um, hmm, you could, uh, well, make a deal with a dream demon. I've never seen a dreamer actually become really powerful without help. Or a really big change to who you are. Um, and sometimes the change to who you are, um... Well, it's not always what you want. So I made a deal with a dream demon. Hi. Yes, darling. Yes, I told you I wasn't going to meet your guest. Otherwise, there would be blood. I do like blood, though. Hmm. Maybe I will meet your new friend. What do you think, Imana? No, this is why I haven't met you yet. Officially. Stay over there, then. 
I will. <laughs> I would always like to propose the fourth option that my dear sister forgets about. I forget about a lot of things. You may join Somni's faction. She is faction. strong and talented. What? And she is somewhat of a good teacher. I have a lot of books. And I'm blind. <laughs> I huh? I'm back here to read more. Only if you're my friend. Do we be friends? Maybe. Uh, technically, this is my mind. Dream Palace. This is all information in my head. So, you're basically in my brain. So, I'm a little uncomfortable about it. I can see how that would make one uncomfortable. Mm hmm But... Um... Uh, if you swore by my dream demon. What would that entail? Well, it'd be like a non-aggression pact. Uh, if you try to steal my, my brain knowledge, or hurt me, or my, anyone I granted sanctuary, or... There's a, there's a big contract. Uh, but mostly it's about not really screwing me over. And maybe helping out around sometimes, you know? And what if you would I, hmm? What would you need help with? Oh, uh, well, I'm stuck. Maybe you can go find some things for me. I like books. And sometimes, you know, when you're locked in your own head, there's only so much information to go around. But I do have all the physics I get to read through. I hate that I have all the physics to read through. Oh, some people with some though. books. Well, I like fiction. Or maybe some more magic books. I like magic. I'm really okay. good at magic. Can or I just... come back if I bring some magic or fiction books? Uh, only if you sign this, the, the, the treaty. That's fair. But with uh, the treaty, you could always appear at my doorstep, and then you would get to know the secret super knock, so you don't have to go through the door keyhole again. Okay. I'm a little spooky, though. Is that okay? You're not spooky at all. <gasps> You're I'm really cool. I heard again. You're really cool. He sulks a little while he signs the treaty. Honey, you heard its feelings again. But it's not. That's really scary out there. They're they're. I mean, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Water under the bridge. Okay. Um. Well, if you sign the treaty, I have some books that will make you real spoopy. But not, not here. You wouldn't be here, spoopy. You would be really spoopy. Um. When you're awake, like super spoopy. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Insomnium will sign the treaty. Okay. Um. It is a bunch of clauses about the protection it's a it's a defense treaty and a mutual respect treaty specifically from one dreamer to another this basically means you agree to while being granted sanctuary here um you are not to harm debilitate or do anything bad to the dreamer who is hosting you this is their sanctuary be a good guest that's fair it's a fair deal but you are also given guesting laws which are very comprehensive and very safe for you i have to like take out the trash and stuff no you're a guest <laughs> um the there is an exchange program because you can't just read anything it has to be offered in a trade so if you bring books or knowledge which you now know Every bit of knowledge in your head can be transformed into a book. Now, okay. if you hand that book over, that's permanent loss of that information. Oh, really? But they can read it and build a book of their own by looking at yours. 
And when they hand it back, you get the knowledge back. So what happens when I read her books in her library? You could get, you can make books of your own. Okay. That are copies of that book. But she's not going to lose her knowledge. Well, you're in her sanctuary. That's the golden part of it. Okay. She does, she'll never lose the information as long as the books stay in the sanctuary. That's good. Um, and she's offered you an equal value trade, which is actually about as neutral as it comes, and as about as favorable, uh, favorable as it comes. Okay. The what book kind of, of information you offer has to be of equal value to what she offers you. Or less, if you agree to it. And is this value based on, like, monetary value, or is it perceived Agreed on value? value? Agreed on value. So if I brought her a book of fairy tales and she liked it so much she thought it was as valuable as a book about spooking. Yeah. Easily. It's about her green on value, which could fluctuate at any time. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, kind of odd. And, and when we trade books, those are the books that stay in her sanctuary? Um, the When you trade books, you can read them while you're in the sanctuary. She gets the advantage because she doesn't leave. Okay. So if you want to learn any of her books, you got to stay and read it and build your own book while you're reading it. Okay. Um... Being in a dream is very weird. As it should be. Um, while you're in the sanctuary, you are not able to construct or build your own sanctuary. Because you're in one. This is a territory. And the territory has its own rules and law. And none of them are in your control. And that is one of the biggest downsides to this. Because you're not out there braving the dream, building your own home, building your own place to hide. So your safety, your, your safety space. But at the same time, you also have a reprieve to think about what that is. You can also look through the windows in case you see anything that, you know, interesting is that you guys kind of float by in the endless dream. So, so, you signed the treaty? The treaty, but I do not have any books to trade for, with her at the moment. Well, you do have what you have in Indrid's head. I can, I guess, give her a book of my life story. No, don't do that. She'll tell you. Mm -mm. Pick one thing, because no. uh, she kind of gestures to the entire library of thousands and thousands of books. This is my life story. I don't have time to read your life story. You don't have time to read my life story. Well, actually, I would, but I, I kind of don't really want to. What about your book on an aromancy that you just read? Oh, yeah, I guess that's the only book that I've read in my life, I think. Uh, this dimension's an aromancy might be different from their dimension's an aromancy. Sure. Well, no, if I give her that, though, I'll lose that information, and then what am I? You don't lose it. Yeah, that's what Matt said. Um, take it back. You're still a dreamer. It, it, the the book, you know, temporarily you lose possession of it, but it's the, the tome that you can always consult is gone. But you're, always, you're still a dreamer, period. Okay, so I can give her offer to trade that book for something? Temporarily, you're going to want it back before you leave. You have to get that book back before you leave the sanctuary or wake up. But I've only got five downtime actions until I wake up. That's a you lot might. of time in the dream. Is it? That's three rolls per downtime action. Okay. Um, well, I'll let her know that I have a time limit, but I'll offer the Onai Romancy book. Oh! Uh, what would you, um, uh, what are you looking for? Uh, like a how-to on 
building a sanctuary? Oh, uh, that's actually difficult. It depends on what you, you know, how you want to do it. But um, um, Yamato, you got any recommendations? Yes. What? Help teach her to build one. As <sighs> you were taught to build one. I built mine without any instructions, period. Uh, all right. I was taught how to you. defend it, though. And that is true. Teach her how you built yours. Oh. Um. Okay. So, if you want to build your own sanctuary, uh, I just imagine it like a skull. Like, your skull is your house. It holds all the, 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 the stuff in your and your nougat, right? So that's your shell. That, that's it. You, you imagine the protectiveness of your skull, and you know you want it to be not an adult skull because that's stuck in place. It's rigid. It's hard. It's not good. You want it to be like you're just born. Boo, boo, you know. What oh. about uh, cocoon? Cocoon's fine. Yeah, you can have it be a cocoon, but you also. You know, you want it to be able to shift and be malleable, like a like a like a child's skull. You know, supple, because you're you're gonna want it to change because you're you're new to this, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever representation you can visualize the best, the strongest, most powerful manifestation of your imagination and will to enforce its being, and that's the one of the most important parts. You have to put your indomitable will into the outside structure. And then you need to invert everything about you, because everything that is vulnerable has to be on the inside. <clears throat> and it also confuses the heck out of nightmares. Because what I do is, I imagine this, you built a room... And everything that is you is on the inside. And then you invert it. Now everything is you is on the outside, unprotected. And then you flip it again. And then it's like a mirror reflection. Nightmares can't figure it out. So on the, uh, you basically put yourself on the other side of the reflection of the, the glass. Uh, it may not be the option for you. Because I like metaphors. And... Um, uh, weird ref ref rep representation references. Yeah, whatever. Starts with an R. R E R E P R E F. Whatever. Um, and then Yamada here gave me an incredible idea, and he was like, "It shouldn't just be the reflection. It should also be the refraction." of how it, things see kind of like how you, see, you would see through a lens or a glass or uh, you know it shouldn't just be a reflection it should be distorted so badly through the refraction of light or the per perception of sight in this place that it just it it's just discombobulated <laughs> i like that word discombobulated thank you Ravon. i love that word mm. uh, immodible it's kind of place his head on it. Zombies. Hmm. He's a dragon. He's my favorite person. What about me, darling? That's hurtful. You're not a person. You're a dream demon. Hmm. If you say so. Eh. Um, so whatever you built is not going to hold up against a nightmare. Or the dream police! Mm. Yeah, the dream police. about the dream police. Yeah, the dream police. Uh, they're they're a bunch of bad people. They tried to kill me a lot, and then I blew them up, and then they're really mad at me. I didn't blow them all up. I blew I blew up a lot of them. It was bad. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, so anything you build will never hold up against it unless you make it super tricky. It's not what it seems, and you gotta like bury it in 
really confusing twists that only you know references of. And it needs to be multi, multi-churn, multi multi-twisted, multi-variable that only would make sense to you even if it's sheer madness. You know? Because otherwise, the nightmares can get in. And the dream police will figure it out. Because they got some smart cookies. Well, Honestly, unless they get the turned dream. into cookies and then we eat them. Nom, 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 nom. Honestly, the dream police are the worst. Mm-hmm. They have other dreamers working for them. And those dreamers are very good. They also know how to weaponize nightmares. Like this one. This one is uh, one the dream police has pushed my way. And the reason why it doesn't leave me alone is because they keep corralling it right on top of my sanctuary. And they think it'll wear me down. But really, I'm studying the nightmare. That also gives me sanctuary against everyone else because the dream police won't come and, you know, they want to try and attack my home in the middle of a nightmare storm. So, uh, I have the storm, so to speak. Want some tea? Yes. Here you go. This holds out a hand, and it's an empty teacup. And when you take it, it fills with your with the tea. Uh... I don't think Mothman's ever had tea before. He's quite excited. Eh? Curious. Uh, it's whatever you dream, whatever your favorite flavor is, or whatever, you know, because you're excited about drinking tea. And, well, oh. your mind will produce the contents within the the, the glass. Because she hands you an empty teacup, and when you grab it, your mind makes the liquid. It's dark, spoopy, boiling, like bolt pitch tar blackness <laughs> it looks delicious it looks like spoop pure spoop fuel it tastes like fear because Endrin would not know what tea tastes like oh it, it, this is tea now hmm fear tea how does it they'll no be taste. when they reach yeah they're gonna eat fear Huh. Hmm. Uh, this is actually really good. Uh, it's not a, an exact matchup against um the Daydreamer's Guide, but uh, you know, different homes and everywhere, different planes. So, uh, this gave me a good grasp on kind of how the, the, the minute differences of this place. Thank you. She'll hand you your your tome back. Hmm? Um, last bit of advice uh, the space inside your sanctuary should only be as large as you're comfortably able to handle because if you have a super big one because you're expecting you know uh, so much stuff and I want room for so many things that's a lot of space to protect sometimes the smallest hovels can be some of the most powerful imp- impregnable fortresses because it's small there's not a lot that you have to you know protect and also you can harden your defenses on a really smaller place in case you know something happens and you're also really hard to f- catch on the, the dreamscape i'm kind of a floating tower because i took as much knowledge as i possibly could from my home world before it collapsed and then yamada my bestie um well we don't talk about what he did but somehow he got the rest well the important stuff at least i'm I'm really mad you didn't get more fiction Uh, more dreams i did not get fiction i instead took knowledge on spirits well you took more than that yes but the spirits are the most important part for me well, true. And healing. I don't. And... I don't like what you do with that hard drive. That was mm. unnecessary precaution. Well, you kind of accelerated the doom of our plane by literally ripping it out of the core. Because, well, 
Oh well. Easy come. At least we have the memories of our well history and all the sciences and well none of the fiction. None of the dreams, none of the stories, but we have the facts. Hmm. Hmm. I'm a dreamer. Sometimes the story means more to me than the facts. But Yamana is a... He's the other half of me. He thinks about the important stuff. Histories, the facts, the truth, the real. I'm... I focus on the not real. And that being said, I still think what she does is important. And vice versa. Team. Okay, it's time to go back. Time okay. passes here weirdly. Um, especially in a nightmare storm. Um, and actually eats up your time very quickly. Because normally, uh, an hour here is a week. There? Actually, no, it's the other way around. Uh, an hour out there is a week in here. Because it's the dream. But with the Nightmare Storm, uh, time comes and goes. At its whim. We're just a boat in the storm. Rocking around in the waves. So, uh, hmm. We'll be back later. Hopefully when there is more time. So well, you're about to wake up, so I'm really, I'm really perceptive about that. So let's put you back in your mind and your brain and your body. Yeah. Anyway, because otherwise, it's gonna, it's gonna be a disjoint between the you and this you. You don't want that. No. Okay, I will go. Bye. Bye. Bloop. You're pulled through a pinhole as she boops you on the nose. And you're knocked back, like, super slow-mo style as if you were hit with a cannon shell. And you fall through a pinhole, and you get yanked and slammed back into your body. Weird dream. <sighs> Whoa. Hendrick. Yeah. You're alive. Yeah. Ah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you remember bright away. lights and explosion. Whoa, you wake up in the uh, courtroom. Whew. Um, that'll be a week for Indrid, though. You were down for a week, so uh, hmm, we'll have to uh catch the other fools up okay. um that's six days for the other folks I might go lie down in bed then. be safe all right good night Allie good night okay uh Make um, a cup of tea for my oh. As for uh, our heroes here, yeah. Phil, uh, you had a philosophical discussion with um, Eatsley. That took a DTA from both of you. Um, so that's. Did you want to sleep this day, or do you want to sleep every other day of digging? Uh, we'll call it every other. Okay, so seven, so twenty-one points added to your. So you think you can dig? So twenty-one. Hold on. Scroll up. Okay. Yep. Uh, let me know when you reach the first one hundred. Yeah, we're well, still forty away from that. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, um... Susie. Uh, so, I had uh, one downtime action for building a hole near me, uh, and I also going to be working on the meditation talent for five downtime actions. 
Uh, you're also doing your major evolution today, so that's two downtime. It's the eleventh day. I see. Um, if that's the case, I'll be doing uh, two of those. Three. All right. Um, and the uh, the last two downtime actions are going to be uh, Mind Palace by Indrid, and I'm going to be just working on that. Um, uh, to improve it, or just use it while you sleep? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was pretty much envisioning um, Indrid and what was happening with uh, the explosion, trying to see if death creates character kind of deal. Um, your fate, you're basically your, your multitude of elements that are very synchronous. Um, unlike other monster gems, she's active, but she's not reaching out to your field mm -hmm. and you're not a dream element. So you can't yeah. invade her gem. Yeah. Yeah. But you do know from looking at it with specifically the moon element and the destiny and the fate element combined that monsters sleep and dream when they're in their own little uh when they're in their core with yeah. nothing to uh no vessel and if enters the dream element that doesn't mean she's dreaming passively she's she has control over her dream uh -huh. Kind of the way Grimold has, has over the shadows of night. So she's there. She's doing something. She's... Hmm, it's activity. But you can't peer in and you can't reach out unless she accepts you reaching out. Mm -hmm. You can only open, basically form the door and put a sign on the front that says, you know, I'm over here. Yeah. I will have you roll 1d100, though. Uh, you know what? Um, this is a luck roll, or just a random... Yes. Alright, I'll use my last lucky. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Because I'm going to bed anyway, so... Okay. Uh, nothing happens. Uh, nothing happens. Probably with the vest, yes? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I need you to tell me what you're doing for a lot of days. Not allowed to go to bed until you're caught up in the alley. I mean, not allowed. Not allowed. I disagree, Matt. I feel like downtime actions can be planned, uh, especially with the other two. Uh, unless you guys want me for something, just kind of reach out for uh, saying like, "Hey, you want me for a downtime action or not?" And I will, I will do it. Okay. Whatever you say. Bye. That's fine. 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 <laughs> Thank you for the session, Matt. Also, I uh, reached the uh, the first threshold for spirit. Mm. And you know what else I have? I have uh, potential, and I had it for spirit as well. Oh, of course you fucking know, you monster. Yeah, so it's, you it's monster. juice. It's juice. Uh, we, we don't have to do that right now. You get to that voice, uh, and uh, thank you for the session, Matt. Uh, it's a shame Grim didn't get to come, but uh, it we'll is what it is. We'll do solo stuff with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, get him, get him stuff. I already know what he's doing. He's looking over every inch of the dungeon, mm -hmm. like a mad lad. What a wild character. Okay. Right, um. Hmm. Well, finish your day. I did finish my day. Uh, that was a full day. Uh, full day down. Uh, okay. That's, that eight, means you got five days left. Five days left. Oh yeah. Until Allie's revived. And then I have okay. two downtime items I need for something for the meditation talent. And uh, meditation talent's pretty much uh, you meditate for 10 minutes, roll willpower. If you pass the willpower, you get a fatigue back. So mm. it's, uh, cool. it's it seems pretty 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 dope. So I'm gonna yeah, be uh, meditating a, a lot anyway with um, the dream. Not sorry, okay. the uh, memory pal. So. Well, I'm gonna do some DTA with uh, Eatsley. Yeah, get yeah, him you caught up. And... Finish it off if you want to. I'll uh, I'll put the uh, the thing on to put it for two hours. I think it should be a good good time for you, bad boys. Okay. All right. Also, let's catch up with Million. 
if he wants to do more stuff. Yeah, I probably do. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, five. Susie. Susie, oh. hmm? so before you leave, how does that multiple catalysts helping do hickey thing that you've done work? Too late. Um. Basically, he can help you advance evolutions in a specific fashion or direction, or mitigate or remove things you don't like about your character. It requires outside stuff, but other than yeah. that... Hmm. 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 Tasty. Hmm. Very good. So, uh... You know? Um, as you're digging, by the way, you've had, what? Uh, four days of digging? Go ahead and roll me um, 4100, please. Million. If you could. Okay. Uh, nothing new for two of them, but you do find two silver deposits. Hmm. Cool. Not very big. So it's, uh, it's like two different nodes, and there's this little tendril that kind of they kind of reach for each other, but they never meet. You find two two nodes of silver that's probably uh 20 pounds of silver between the both of them hmm. your cobalt's extract it like yep. throw it in the uh the vault yep next to all the other silver the mm. fucking Bye. dungeon silver <laughs> i'll leave you Char here. I'll come back later to do my stuff. Are you sure? Yeah, just that way you know he can do his stuff, not worry about me eavesdropping and... Uh... Oh, you absolutely can listen in. And mm -hmm. I, I want to involve you very much in my game, so... Uh... Well, I'm not gonna understand half of it if the pass is anything to go by, so... That doesn't, doesn't matter. You can still listen in for the fun of it. I don't want to ever exclude you from the game that I have you in. So, you know, Eatsley will most likely reach out to you multiple times because you're the philosopher. You're the oh, diggy That's up to him. Anyway, I'm going uh, to be right back. Okay. All right, my friend. Eatsley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite a bit of time. I do. Um, my goodness, a lot of things are happening to your character. <laughs> a lot of things are happening to my character. Thought that you don't go looking for it, though. I mean, kinda. <laughs> the divine quest was kind of a smack sideways. Hmm. But you know, Alley Girl's back. Yeah. Welcome back, Allie. Silence. Silence. <laughs> uh. Okay. But yeah, I don't. I don't think Cecil's are gonna do. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so, um, uh, what he's essentially gonna do is. Um, devote. Let's see, but um, well, I have six days, correct? Uh, the remainder of the sixth day, and then five days. So it's, and then I had basically six sometimes action slaps. But... Okay, so, um, I 
be wise at its at its expenditure. Yeah. Cause on the fourth day is when everyone will be allowed to leave. Okay. The, the dungeon. dungeon, but not the yeah. territory yet. Not the territory. You are not to leave the illusion array's influence for another month and a half. Okay. Um, because by then, even an apostle's part, uh, you know, group, they all have run out of funding and purpose, and they'll have moved on to another objective to recoup their losses. Because Lord Ghoul basically ran the calculations. Party like that, even with reinforcement of supplies, it's so costly to keep them. They wouldn't stick around that long. They'd put a hell of an effort and be a great loss because of what they're after. Hence the two months instead of a couple weeks. Um, but, you know, yeah. just be safe. Because if you... He's not worried about you running into them. He's worried about you getting discovered by them and then honing in on you and your signature to bypass the illusion. Yeah. And only Grimold would be able to ignore that because he's an illusion element. He's not traceable within the illusion array, period. Not by even the most powerful scrying equipment of even Divine Grade because of the uh, Divine Grade lodest Lodestone used. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but non illusion elements can be kind of like the Where is Waldo once you yeah. find it. You can you can look through the, the the mess and track it, you know. Yes. And they can find the entrance and get through the illusion array if you are discovered. And that's why he's like, eh, be careful, don't get discovered. But you can definitely leave after two weeks. Just stay close to home. Yes. He mostly is trying to do that so you can look to the Kagar nest. You can. You know, have the the ability to put together the 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 garden, the cactus garden. Yeah. So really close proximity stuff. Also, that'll let you guys out of the dungeon because you guys would get stir crazy. Ooh. Your body doesn't really want you to get close to the edge of the illusion array. No yeah. more than within a mile. But he's not going to stop you because he trusts you guys. Uh. So. What Eats is gonna do. Um, he is going to spend. Uh, so yep. he's, what Eats is gonna do? He's gonna spend one time downtime action a day. Uh, no, uh, two downtime action a day. Uh, transcribing the like he's gonna get a special journal. Okay. Transcribing the words off his bones into the journal. Okay. So he has, and he's taking a very methodical time writing it down. So he has a written version. So when he needs to put it onto the tab, uh, to put it onto the tablet, it would be easier to read. Okay. This is a labor. There yes. are a thousand individual glyphs. Each one requires one downtime action to properly transcribe with the appropriate depth, the perfect shaping. Mm -hmm. That's 300 hours. Okay. Of. No, 3,000 hours, sorry, of doing it. So it's a. Basically, it's a. There's a thousand glyphs that'll appear on you, and you need to spend one downtime action per. There are faster ways. This is just you doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Um It's a labor. It is. Every one of the ten labors is going to be ridiculous, and you may not get this done by the end of the campaign. Because it is a labor. Yeah. I have faith in you, Hercules. Uh, right. I do have something that allows me to transcribe faster. Uh, yes, merit expenditures, uh, the scribe skill, right, or the scribe class. Um, oh, sorry, I do have just one that just says fast copy, which allows me to copy things faster. 
This Rob. will need a special skill. This, okay. you cannot make a single mistake on this. This would be something you would actually get sent back for, you know? Like, okay. you arrive at the temple after the entirety of the labors, and they go, mm -mm, not good enough, go back. You okay. cannot mess this up, period. Otherwise, oh, the consequences of even a single miswritten, miscarved glyph um, can make you have to start over. Then, as I'm kind of looking this over, like looking at the first stuff, would it be more feasible for my character to not transcribe it from my bones onto paper? Or would transcribing it onto the paper and then transcribing it onto the stone make it easier? Um, trial and error. Okay. Um, uh, transcribing it on the paper. It would need to be the right paper. Mm -hmm. It would need it would need to be a paper and an ink and the thing that you write on and the thing you write with would need to bear the weight of the scripture of Ziki. Which is not easy to do. Okay. But that doesn't mean there aren't things that can do that. There is a, a, an innumerable amount of things that are available to those who want to respect the gods. You know? Yeah. They make it so. They don't they don't want you not to be able to worship, you know? Yes. Um Okay, okay. Uh because I I have a few downtimes to kinda of play around with. Um Sure. I'm going to I'm going to ask Lord Gold for advice. Okay. Um, if he has heard of either a class or so actually I wouldn't say class I would say a job or a type of book slash paper that would allow someone to transcribe onto a larger tablet yes uh for what purpose i just heard him blankly uh hmm uh word it in a way you don't tell me directly but do it coyly uh, as in um, don't explain it to me hmm. um hmm indirectly and as vaguely as possible by st still giving me some clue of, an inform of information that I can help you? Yes. I am yep. wanting to build a thing. A thing. Yep. Uh, big. That big. As A lot of symbols on it. Okay. And I wish to. Are they complex? Are they they're really immensely complex? Com immensely very complex. Very complex symbols, like math. Yeah. Like yes. Math. Yeah. Very like math. complex math. So math, but not math. Yes. And you gotta write them. Yes. And you don't know what they mean, or you do know what they mean. Are you are you a mathematician, or are you an aspiring mathematician? Inspiring mathematician. Mm. But I need okay. to be very precise okay. when I write down. Oh yes, equations. because it's math. You got to be exact. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, is there a type of paper that would be able to have these math symbols transcribed from paper to an object of which I'm wanting to write this on? So, like, uh, rough. You want to transcribe the rough draft? and then put it on a more permanent final draft. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, it's the only thing I have left. I cannot get more. Not without owing a debt I will not be able to repay. 
because of my life choices. That doesn't mean it's not something you can't get more of for either free or for a minute cost. But for me and the sources in which I could get access, it would be a very costly thing and would put us this dungeon back into debt equivalent to what we started with or worse. Did you piss off your ex-girlfriend? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I bought the last of this stuff from the bank. I see. At a discount, an employee discount, which I used and saved up for for three centuries. Understood. No one was touching it, and eventually they put it on sale. And I left it alone. And then they put it on sale again. And I left it alone. And then they put it on... No one wanted it. And they put it on sale for the third time at a really big discount. And I bought all of it. Including the ink, pen, the slight, stationery, everything. For a neat mint. Um, I caught them off guard. And the bank never likes to be caught off guard like that. Because the moment you show interest in something... They um, they try and divide your desires into segments in which you have to buy at great cost to yourself. And never with employee money once you've bought the original pieces. So I, I basically plot and schemed and bought the whole set so they couldn't leverage me over the, the, the different pieces. Understood. I will give this to you. Because you're one of my firstborn. I trust you, and I love you very much. As your father and your creator, I will give this to you. Thank you. There's probably not enough for what you need to do. No. But there is enough for you to start. Know that there are no replacements for this paper and none of this paper can be there's no writing on it there can be no mistakes for the paper won't accept mistakes you can write on it an unlimited number of times but if it is not proper if it's not perfect the ink won't set Understood. and there's only a limited amount of ink although there is a lot of it uh, I bought all of the ink that was available, which is quite a bit. But if the paper literally destroys the ink, if it's not right, you can go through a hell of a lot of ink. Understood. Um, I will say this. Your spirit is not as strong as it needs to be. And you are also not very strong. You are not mm. very tough. Before you begin on this task of doing this mathematical rough draft, I suggest you bulk up physically, spiritually, because this will this will grind you down. Understood. Math is like that, you know? I or at least this special math is. Uh, and secondly, would you recommend a job change? It would make it easier. It would make it faster. Though I cannot work on current quests that I have right now. Then don't. Just because it means it's slower. Doesn't mean the math will go away. Math will be there. As long as you show it diligence. Show it respect. And work on it. Every day. I thank you. And if you do find a moment in your life, your endless life, unless it is taken from you, you will always be able to put progress towards it. It doesn't need to be now. Unless it says it needs to be. Eh? Then no. If, if, if you can't give me a definitive answer, even in the most vaguer, uh, the most diluted vagaries, then work on it. 
And if it is not fast enough, they'll let you know. The math, the math lords, whoever they may be, they will let you know if you are not doing this quick enough. Hmm. Yes. This is quite fun. Secondly, <laughs> uh, I have a private room for this map. Construct that with Philippe and mm. get yourself a lockbox. Don't work on the finished product until you have finished your devotion and built your temple to he who you show the most respect and worship for. It'll only truly be safe. Once that is done. Once that is done. But in the meantime, you have a heck of a lot of rough drafts to do. I do. And paper is very small. And you can s you can store a heck of a lot of paper into a very small lockbox. I thank you. And he will bring out a from his personal dimensional storage space. Um, one second, I need to replace my battery. There we go. Uh, he will pull out from his storage space a old-fashioned quill. Um, uh, on the back of the tray, there's these two large cylinders filled with ink. Um, the tray is not fancy. None of this stuff is fancy. This is all it's a, just a stone-carved tray. The jars are stone-carved for the ink. The well mm -hmm. for the poured ink is a cup like a crucible cup, all hand carved of stone. And Quill um, has no feathers on it. It's just a, it doesn't even have the, the the support spines for in between the feathers. It's just a, uh, ju just the stalk with a pointed edge. Um, the stationery, which you're going to write on, is closer to Papyrus. And the slate, in which you will write on, um, is not a stone you would come across in the natural world. Uh, it's flat, but it's frayed, like someone polished the top but it's something they carved out of another stone at great effort. It's barely enough to hold two pieces of paper side by side, and the pieces of paper are not printer paper sized. They're five inches by seven inches. Roll assessor. Uh, I'm also going to add a boon to this. Okay. How many? One. Okay. Uh, these are all divine grade. The, ink, okay. the, the slate, the, the ink well cup, the, the, uh, the pen stock, the ink jars, the ink itself. Not because it does anything special, except for one thing. To wear, to to handle and hold against the weight of divine word. That's the only thing that makes it divine, and it is divine because the objects here have the permission to be so. These are objects meant specifically and only to be used 
to write the divine word. You set. And he will deliver one last stone tray, very small. It's almost like a little, just a little holder. When you are done and want to do the final draft, use this. It's a chisel and a hammer. And if you're looking for the right chalkboard to write your finished product on, um, or make your mark, look to the utensils themselves, and they may give you a clue. I think. Oh, 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 so devious, I am. Yes. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, do not f pick a room. Those objects do not leave that room, nor does anyone go in that room but you. Don't even let me in. Because I do not want the causality of what you're part of. The math. I don't want to have to participate and math with you of course so keep your math to yourself selfishly so yeah. unless it becomes so heavy you have no choice but to ask for an assistant mathematician I because you can't handle it you'll buckle under the weight of the sheer amount of math you need to do. Then you are not that strong yet. You'll be over time, sure. But math has a different weight than this world. You said. Hmm. I have a question, Shell. Uh, okay. Out of character? I, no, no, kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, did I correctly identify this divine item? Or no? No. Okay. You know that it's divine, but you haven't correctly gotten statistics or anything about it. Okay. That's what I was kind of wondering. You did a kind of a cursor glance. They're all divine grade, but only one thing. But everything else, when you look at it, is fuzzy. It's, um, dead. Uh, take it into your private chamber. Because there's plenty that Phil has made. Yeah. Actually, uh, East is going to make his own private chamber. Okay, with your earth bending. Okay. Yep. He's going to make a little private chamber, like, off to the side here, that can only be entered with an earth magic technique. Or Phil digging into it. Or the cobalt's digging into it. Uh, yeah. They basically, uh, for building a dungeon, if you want to have a very, very private room and you have construction going on, expansions, mm -hmm. uh, it's recommended that you line the walls with uh, a specific type of material so that if they come across it, they know that this is no-no. Yeah. Uh, he's probably going to use granite. Okay. Just because granite is very hard to break through. Okay. So it's going to be like a granite uh, planed room. Uh -huh. And then it's going to be the internal room. And then uh, he is going to, uh, over the six days, uh, spend two downtime actions. Okay. Each, writing each word gives you 1d10 fatigue. All right. And since you're only doing two a day, uh, it's only 2d10 fatigue. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Nine fatigue oh. on day one. I know, I'm just like... And ah. You only do six hours of it, and you're just like... You're, you're literally... <laughs> if you could sweat, you would be literally drenched. Um, you feel very dry. <laughs> Um, also, go ahead and, uh, let's see if you actually write those, those two words. Fair. 
Uh, what do I need to roll? What is going to be your stat stick? What is your characteristic that you want to use to represent you drawing these? You may pick one, but once you've picked it, just like your magic stat, and it can't be the same as your magic stat. It cannot be the same as my magic stat. No. Okay. It could be any characteristic, even fucking weapon skill, or even ballistic skill. I think I'm going to use... I'm sorry, one second. I'm trying to think here. Because, like, I want to say weapon skill because it's one of my better stats. But I also kind of want to say willpower. Um, That's fine. Weapon skill would be kind of, you know, how um, people write caricatures? As yeah. they, like, like they, they uh, what is that called? Uh... Oh, uh, like what they do in Japan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you would do it that way. Because as long as you do it right, you also uh, there's something about right and right technically you know yeah uh go ahead and roll me the weapon skill are you sure you want to pick this as weapon skill there's nothing yes. wrong with it okay um i do want to uh what is that called writing what is it when they write on a giant like they write a phrase or caricatures on a big old scroll um Suji. i think that's what you're talking about and like, it's, it's considered art depending on how they do it and different meanings depending on how they draw it it's like very very old yeah like very... uh, a lot of like japanese teachers still do it when they when their kids graduate oh yeah. uh, what is it called uh, Shuji. I believe that's what you're talking about. S H U G or S H U J I. Calligraphy, yes. The Shuji, thank you. Yeah. Um, picking weapon skill, mm -hmm. uh, your words will be like calligraphy. Depending on how you write it, as long as it's done properly, you can change the meaning. Okay. Or the emphasis. It's got a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. A proper, no, nay, a proper labor. What is your interpretation of the scripture? That's kind of what this has morphed into because you picked weapon skill. And mm -hmm. how you write it, as long as it's done properly, like the depth of the carvings itself, the depth, you know, the width of the strokes, the length of the strokes. When you carve, like it'll be. You know, if you do it absolutely perfect with no striations and every single caricature is the same verbatim, that'll be the most neutral, exact deliverance. As if one of the scholars of the dead, the mm. word, the mouthpieces of Ziki, are reading scripture. They, they have no inflection, no tone. It is meh, blah, 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 blah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing to infer. There's a lot to do. This is this is taking a different different uh, direction. For good or for bad, you never know. Hmm. Uh oh. But you are not without your weapon skills, so go ahead and roll that twice. Uh, yeah. Um, and then he is going to say a prayer to Zeke during this time to ask him to... Zeke is silent. You're on a labor. Yes. More for himself as he's doing this, you know what I mean? Yes, not it's, it's like... It, it, you, you know nothing will come of it, but it's still comfort. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, maybe. It's here. Uh, okay, so I get a plus 30 to hit for non-damaging. 
this not does not apply here, right? No. Okay. But you can develop something. You can you can develop bonuses for this. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, gone. <sighs> oh, sorry. I'm also gonna put on my flower mantle for this, uh, because this is art. It is now. Yeah. Uh, so that would be a plus 20 to any of all art involving that or for one degree passing. Okay. Um, every word you complete gives the flower mm -hmm. mantle plus one. Oh yeah. Uh, just on the art or on art and healing? Just on art. Um, every 10, uh, plus ones you get for the art from doing this gives you a plus, uh, a, an extra die for healing. Powerful words. Okay. All right. You have the first letter plus one. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, let's go. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh, so close. Plus two. And you're just like, <sighs> and then at the end of that, I'm like, all right, all right. Uh, uh, Indrid's got fatigue anti-fatigue potions but they're dead for another five days uh right i'm actually gonna go and sleep or go into the pool downstairs oh the blessing of nareem take my fatigue away yes and then uh that's so one downtime action yeah and so that i have okay that's three so, out of, it's three out of eight yeah uh oh. so here's the thing i have this down to a science at this point oh. uh, I will have after talking to Lord Cole uh, finishing up the retreat technique or finishing up the wonders technique reading uh, five, doing five more downtime for um, the first part of multi-classing and 12 DTA for uh The writing of Zeki, I'll have five downtime actions left over. Um, this is for your five days? This is for all the days from now until when Indrid wakes up. Yeah, five days. Yeah, yeah. so five days. So I'll have be able to recover each day while still doing the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember, you only have eight DTA, so you do two, and you do a recovery for the third, and then you got five extra each day. Uh, so that was the recovery awesome. is all you pouring a bowl of blood over your head yep because you need it yeah okay cool wonderful uh, so yeah that's literally all the DTA between now and Indrid uh, wakes up uh, five what do you want to do with those five? Oh, sorry the five are going to be used for recovering uh, okay so uh, I'll I'll like kind of message it to Let's you. Let's roll so. all of the um, uh, the weapon skill. Okay. Uh, so I have to beat a ninety. Sorry, not a ninety-six. Uh, a ninety-seven right now. Uh, do you want me to just roll d one hundreds at this point, or how do you want to do it? I just actually roll just weapon skill. The same okay. bonus. I know it's annoying, but it helps. Yeah. Okay. Why'd you jump from? Oh. Oh yeah, you got that. Yeah, that's plus the. Uh... Yeah. Good. Sorry. Pass. Plus one. Yes. Now it's plus 53. 
Plus 54. Um, I'm going to mark this down on a piece of paper and then do it later. Okay, that's 55 now. Very good. Keep going. Don't stop. Not on my account. Oh. Uh, no, Gibbs, 56. I did. Still so pass. Do 57 again. Yeah. That. 58. Very good. Fifteen nine. Very nice. I'm done. All right. Uh, your heal power has another die to it. Yes. Oof. Oof, indeed. Right. What are you doing next? Uh, so then it was a um, using 15 downtime actions for the fourth technique of the Wanderer. Okay. And now you got it. And now I got it. Okay. I mean, the third one was goofy enough, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just dive and roll. Hit, <laughs> hit. Um. <laughs> this one is called "What's That Over There." A.K.A. Have at G. <laughs> have at thee. So, this is a dual technique. So, on a counterattack, mm -hmm. parry, uh, or a successful dodge, you can use what's over there, or have at ye. What's over there is... If you successfully dodge, parry, counterattack, or any anything that builds a reaction, even if mm -hmm. it's a return hit, that is not on your turn. Um, even if you don't draw blood, uh, you can choose to retreat an entire full move because you ran away like a little bitch. Which is, what's that <laughs> over there? It's basically a distraction. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like, you're going for a lethal hit, you put your lethal aura into it, like, I'm gonna kill you! I'm over here. Bye! And they're like, what the f... Uh, it <laughs> is considered a full action to engage. Um, each time you use it beyond the first, 
until your next turn where it refreshes the the count costs an extra fatigue because you are hauling ass but you can use it more than once so if somebody runs up attacks you and you're like what's over there and you run away in the same turn as long as you got reactions for it you can <laughs> what's that over there and then dive do a dive roll and then have at ye like wander is annoying <laughs> i don't want to fight him at this point oh it'd be uh, the most annoying <laughs> exercise because he'd always run away and then strike at you when you're not ready and it's just like why are you so f car why is your cardio so good why are you so fit he's like because running away is the best um have at ye um is a lot more difficult um it basically turns a faint into a into a really nasty blow because what that what it does is um you can if you if you have inescapable and you do a an attack um you have two options one you can just go return the attack after a successful uh counter attack which allows you to hit twice on a dodge, you're allowed to hit them. Uh, and on a parry, you're allowed to hit them back. It's the complete retaliatory package. Each time you do, you gain a fatigue. But if you have an escapable, you can use a fate point to make it unavoidable. Mm -hmm. um, because unless it's a counterattack, if you use this, they do get to use a free action to get out of the way. If they have it. Mm-hmm. Because it's their turn, they're hitting you, you're responding to their action, so the only thing f as fast as a reaction is a free action. So if you have an ass ton of reactions and they don't have a lot of free actions, you're just going to hit them. Um, but this does activate something weird. Yeah. If you hit them back and they successfully parry, they can then make the attempt for a counterattack. But it'd be a counter counter attack. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. It makes for very very cinematic fight scenes if you have all that. Yeah. Hmm. Let's self fight counter attack. Yeah, counter attack. You can spend a fate pointer boon to make it unavoidable, which means they have to spend a fate pointer boon to make it back to just inescapable, which they also need to defend against. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Very good. Ah. And then, the last bit of my downtime action is finishing up on learning step one of multiclassing. Okay. Uh, do you have the uh, what's over there? Like, slash have at you yes yeah cool part about that skill is that at any point in time you can decide one or the other um have at you does not give you any movement yeah um basically you made a faint not faint even though it was a faint you know yeah. Turns a lethal attack, just kidding, into an actual lethal attack. So, <laughs> kidding, not kidding. Half tank, get on. Basically. Okay. Uh, your uh, first step of multiclassing. Yeah. Okay. It's the hardest way to do multi-classing one would even consider it's just common sense um most would most of the intellectual crew or you know any of the scholarship circuit would have that has any knowledge in this type of thing would also consider this um kind of a dub moment mm -hmm. um it's when you reach ultimate mastery an extreme mm -hmm. in a 
class, swap to another class that is overlapping the other one, at hmm. least, you know, a p partial overlap, such as Hextech and Arcana Studies, and then master that one, and then have a pinnacle achievement using both, like make a creation or make something that utilizes both masteries that you have. Then you get a quest to, uh, or a title, mm -hmm. or a multi-class. Because it's like, hey, you reach the peak of two separate things that are similar, and then you use both similar things to make something that the world's never seen using the pinnacle of both skills. You're going to get a, you're going to get a quest. Duh. <laughs> like, uh, that makes sense. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, but it does give you a all a recorded list of uh, which two have been attempted mm -hmm. and people who have succeeded on them. And then it also gives you a list of everyone who, every combination that's failed. That doesn't mean they did it right. And that doesn't mean that the, th because they failed, they didn't get a good combo. Mm -hmm. It's just, they didn't, they weren't able to put them together. But there's a several hundred thousand list of both people who have tried and succeeded, uh, which is about 1% of the list. And the 99% of all the combos people have pursued and failed because it doesn't work uh, and they, through this method or because they were just not good enough to do it. Hmm. See. And he's just going to look like, ah, I know the answer. Uh, he's going to look through the list and see if you can find uh, a cleric and a mage or a cleric and a necromancer. Uh, cleric and a mage, several failed attempts. Um, the what they were reaching for was sage, mm -hmm. uh, for one of them, and the other one they were reaching for was, um, kind of a more druid esque. Um, mm -hmm. and one was even reaching for like apostate mage so they could use you know divine powers okay uh all of them failed <laughs> um looking through the book gives you a reason uh the sage doesn't work because it's not the right combo uh, not through the lack of effort it was just you you can't get sage from Mage and Cleric. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, sage usually requires some sort of worldly study, like Taoism. Um, or you know, being the Hermit class. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> With, you know, some sort of Druid magic or just Mage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one where it's combined... Um, that combo f to make druid didn't work because um, that doesn't mean druid. There's no life element. There's no mag. There's no life magic. Uh, the third option does work. Becoming an apostate. Okay. Um, you got to be worthy. And you need to do, and then there's just a bunch of, um, what is that called? Uh, it's all the, uh, odd keys and you'll control, uh, control mm -hmm. one, two, you know, one through nine. This is a specific word for that. It's a weird one. Um, basically it censors it out with a bunch of nonsensical inputs. Uh, you, need, you need blank and uh, from blank in situation blank. Uh, a bunch of redacteds, got it. A bunch of redacteds, but it's just a bunch of nonsensical uh, inputs. 
specifically for that one. Um, any other ones you're looking for? Uh, it's gonna look through. Um, it's gonna look in like that, like anyone who's like necromancy-ish, you know, or wouldn't they sound necromancy-ish? Uh, there are actually several multi-class success involving necromancers. Oh, really? Um, necromancer, and then uh, lich. Hmm. Um. Because Lich doesn't necessarily mean it gives you the same powers as a Necromancer. Some Liches are just plain mages. Fair. And they use the spell Animate Dead, but it's not Necromancy control levels. Okay. Um, necromancy plus any of the undead, you know, classes, jobs, even like Death Priests. Mm. Um, there's very few successes because it's so stringent and very difficult mm. uh, but there are a heck of a lot of it failed because user sucks but this combo <laughs> works okay uh, then he's going to look uh, for necromancer and life priest um hmm that Probably is a lot not. of that. That's a hundred thousand entries, my friend. <laughs> and like, it is uh, not it's organized by time frame of when it was attempted. Chronological order. <laughs> there's uh no appendix, there's no <laughs> index, glossary. Just for luck. <laughs> Flipping through like... it within a meaningful amount of time. You just been like, all right, we're gonna look for anything that's not an axe or a skull or you know, failed. Sixty-five. Nope. All right. <laughs> And he's like, all right, so let's see what step two is next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Those are going to be 15 downtime actions. Next week, uh, it's going to be a lot as he continues researching. So are we all done? Yep. Yeah, thanks. Million. Million. Hello? Stuart, we're going to finish off with you. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, you got five days. Um, on the third day, or after the third day, so on the fourth day uh, of those five days, uh, two weeks are up. You can go outside. Uh, after area. which which day? On on day four of the five days I'm giving you. Okay. Um. Got forty DTA. I'm at forty DTA now. Wow, a lot well, of. Oh, you it got went. Five, you got five. Five days, eight times five is forty. Uh, we divided it into some. Uh, you may recall it was like 124 downtime actions or something well, over the course of. No wait, last... that was the entire. That was the entire like time skip before yes. arc two. Yeah. The yeah, well that would have been. That's what you were going through. We're doing it by week by week. Shit, we're wow. even doing okay. it today. So, I'll just put 40. Uh, uh how much are you resting? Well, oh, say every other day. Okay. Uh, so, so how much DTA will that take off just off the bat? Every other day for five days? Uh, yeah. Uh, six. Six? Okay, so... So two every other day for a six-hour rest? Yeah, so each, that's... Each one's three. So 34 DTA? Yep. Um, if you want to dig, you can dig. Yeah. Well... 
Like, I'm committed to finishing the second floor, so... Okay. Um... Well, that's, uh, 43 times 3. Uh... For your digging. That's 12, uh, 126. Ooh, you're one-tenth of the way, your first benchmark. Okay, so 126, hold on a minute. Okay. Uh, other quests. That's... 189. And then how much downtime will that take? You don't want your thingamajigger for uh, reaching 100? Um... I mean, sure, but... Excuse me. <sighs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so, for reaching um, the first milestone, one of one or one hundred of one thousand, um, you get a skill called Diggy Diggy Hole. Okay, let me let me add it. Um, about one or two commas. There are no commas. Okay. D D hole. And what status is this based on? Um. Strength. Strength. Okay. One dot or more, or one check mark or more. Um. No, it's a talent. I said it was a skill. All right. It's a talent. I made a mistake. Oh, okay. Hold on. I gotta... Like this. Okay. Um, diggy diggy hole? Yep. Doubles the final dig speed and distance by two after all uh, calculations and modifiers beforehand. So it multiplies the final product. I'm not sure I understand. So once you once you figure out your maximum uh, dig speed and distance per downtime action. Oh, okay. Or even or even per turn, it just doubles it. Doubles maximum dig speed. And dig distance. Dig speed slash distance. Okay. Or dig speed and distance. Because your dig speed could be pretty dismal, or pretty, uh, or you're going for speed rather than um, specific distance. Maybe a little bit different. Um, So, dig speed or distance, um, whether it's on turn basis or on downtime action basis. Okay. So, it just doubles it wherever you go. Um, so, how much downtime actions uh, did it take for all the digging? Um, at the end of this, including the uh, double distance, after you achieve it, you'll complete the second floor. Cool. And that's including any of the uh, changes Taylor wants, because he's the one who responded to you, or what the other players want. Sure. So. Uh, hmm. I still need to know how much DTA that costs. Because I subtracted six from the 40. Yep. So, how much will uh, the digging? How many downtime actions of those? Did you use to dig? Uh, just to however much it will take to make the second floor. Um, you'll have four left. Four well, left. Okay. Yep. So thirty. Finish the second floor. All right. Hmm. 
Cobalt's want to know mm -hmm. big, how how big boss man digs so fast. Um, because he's good at digging. Because he is a miner. They're, They're like, oh, can we dig that fast if if we become miners? Yeah, I I assume so. Unless shoveler is a thing or a digger is a thing. They all look at each other in shock. They never thought of this. Mm. Boss yeah. man is the smartest. If that's what they think. Oh, they all—all all of your kobolds think you are the—you are the best dragon to have ever dragoned. You're the big boss man. You're the smartest, toughest, meanest, strongest, bestest, richest, coolest. Greatest dragon ever. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, these guys love you. Yeah. Well. All right. So oh, uh, was um, mm -hmm. was forty taking into account that the kobolds are helping me, or thirty taking into account? Because I'm not gonna yes, be the only. Yes, they have to do the. They have to do the fine. Uh, fine tuning work because you're just digging out the big parts um, and also directing your cobalts to you know do the fine work the the detail work so even once you're done digging the actual entirety of the, the large sectors and the tunnels in each room uh, you go back and kind of you know supervise the work and instruct the work on how to uh, get the detail work done from your cobalts Hmm. Um, you also go through all the rocks. Yeah. Just, uh... Yeah, four left. Um, you spent 30 downtime actions digging. So roll me 30d100. For, for rocks you find. So 30, 30. It's going to be a big old roll. All right. Oh, hey, there's a three in there. And a four. And a four. Okay. I um, see... Oh, yeah, there is a four. Hmm? Uh, you're going to find all sorts of tin. Um, I need a, find a... a place to record all this stuff, honestly. Uh, I'm just basically giving you the, the normal things you can find on the ground. Oh, okay. So, tin. Uh, iron. Actual copper. Um, see, from memory, we've gotten silver, fool's gold. Uh, there were some gems at one point or another. It's like sapphire or something. No, no, it yep. was the illusion stuff. Um, uh, for the, the four you rolled. Uh, you get real gold. Oh, cool. Which, interestingly enough, when you taste it, tastes nothing like dungeon gold. Mm -hmm. Tastes better than dungeon gold if you were to eat this metal. Mm. Yeah, well. Very good. How it goes. And then the three. Um... This... This would be like the end of the second week now, right? So it would be... And then you find something that the only the books talk of it's called platinum blonde veil i have no clue what that means um from what you can tell it's magical platinum hmm. so interesting yeah yeah uh, that's your three and uh very it's it's a little bit more 
dense, but you can still crunch into it. And you're just like, huh. Oh. Doesn't hurt your teeth or anything. It just, it's like biting into taffy. It's really chewy. And you're like, huh. Oh. This Makes is sense. not rock. <laughs> Makes sense. Chewy metal. Chewy huh. metal. Very. Like gold. Gold yeah. is soft. Gold is, gold is delicious. Hmm. It's like a fruit roll up. Well. Yeah. Um. Yep. And what do you want to do for your last downtime action? Let's do last four. Last four. Uh, where, where the hell is? Oh, I guess. You want to use them to attend to the. Uh, uh, plant the temple of Nareem? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. You will conduct your priestly duties. Yeah. By just hanging out, moving the sand around, cleaning up the the, the beach, um, making sure you fish anything that isn't, you know, supposed to be there in the water. Make sure that the water is clean, like a you know, pool skim it. Uh, play around in it. Maybe uh, a little bit. Oh yeah. You, <laughs> you basically run up to one of the uh, the the cliff little outjuts, and you just dive in and just splash in. Yeah, mm. our name's all about that that jubilance and joy. Um, you know, just uh, as the priest, you're kind of the the maintenance guy for the temple as well. So, um, anyone who doesn't mainly. police their stuff, or leaves a mess, um, or if just things get into the pool, or the lake, you gotta clean it up. Yep. And don't worry, you do find a skeleton in there. Sometimes, yeah. Oh, well. I guess You bat it, uh... Eatsley puts himself back together like, DUDE! I'm discombobulating <laughs> here! I was gonna say, like, if, uh, if it's just a random skeleton, I might have to dispose of it. <laughs> the only way a dragon knows how, by eating. No eating. Cause mouth faints. I do not imagine Eatsley tastes very good. No, I taste like, oh, the skeleton. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Hmm. See, one oh nine minus forty. Let's do it. Sixty nine total DTA. Mm, very good. I still have eight set aside for that superior catalyze. Okay. Unless we're gonna like do the superior now. Uh, no. We we can do that another time. Just keep my seventy-five merit in the bank until I think about what I want to do with it. Okay. 
So yeah, I guess we're done. Mm -hmm. Thanks for playing, guys. Yeah. No. Oh, Platt, did you hear that one of your minnows got eaten? I have not heard the story. No. Oh yeah. Uh, I got eaten. I didn't die. Oh. But um. Okay. I, I did get eaten. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Are you at least okay? I mean, yeah, we killed the big thing. Okay. Uh, I've learned that normal uh, swords don't do jack shit most of the time. Fair. Uh, I've also learned that I can't hit even at point blank range. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I know this feel. And, um. Dual wielding is way over costed. Uh, considering I don't even want the prerequisite to just make the action economy cheap in terms of the negatives of just being able to attack with a sword and shoot with a gun in the same round. It's um, you just need to eat more fish. Yeah. Yeah, well. I'm uh, probably <laughs> going to spend my 20 merit that I have uh, saved right now. Four stats? I'm just base stats, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I get a tentacle. <laughs> yeah, he okay. did do that. Uh, uh, for that, um, when did you eat it? Oh, uh, well, the thing was still alive. Oh, that's <laughs> not good. Uh, that's what hungry creatures do. Yeah, I was. But like, you're a shark with the I'm devour thing. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna. You're, you're probably gonna get I, an insatiable hunger, but a huge, huge bonus, like a huge buff to your uh, devour trait for the the um, for your shark. I know what I got already, though. Oh. <laughs> I got a, a Ma upgrade. I bet. <laughs> I, I bet you freaking did. I sh okay, so get this. I shoot the roof of the thing's mouth uh, to soften it up, and then even afterwards, I still can't bite into it. Uh... Because I'm just that shit when it comes to making my checks. <laughs> Dude, you'll get through it. Just Eventually. believe. Believe! Maybe. It's, uh, is what it is. Uh, we ended uh, immediately after the thing died, so... Did I do anything... Useful. Uh, uh, you freed. Um, what's her name? Mary Gold. Okay. Uh, then once Mary Gold was free, Mary Gold punched. She killed it. Yeah. She punched it real good. Yeah, yeah, she punched it real good. And between that and I think my two bite attacks that bit through it, that's what killed it. Um, Sorry, my bite attack is nasty. I don't know why I didn't transform and bite it. Eh, so, besides freeing Marigold, what else did I do? Uh, uh, I mean, that was literally, like, you didn't get a second round of combat. Shit. Okay. Yeah, Marigold uh, rolled 67 damage. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and just cracked the hell out of it. Um, Vasco rolled a one on his Mossberg. Just 
Good for him. For 37 damage again. Oh. Wow. These boys got thick skills. Yeah, yeah, they do. I could not hit shit the whole time. <laughs> hmm. That happens more than you realize. Oh man. And when I did hit with the with my melee weapon, nothing. What melee weapon were you hit hitting with? And my sword. Or your ah. sword, technically. Yeah. Hmm. One d ten plus two pen four is was yeah. not enough. In fairness, my pen ten was barely enough to do anything. Mm. I Does had a rake. rake. It's That's making me enough. reconsider whether or not I want to go uh, dual wielding or build for that moonlight great sword. That's tough. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I've already bought ambidextrous, so... There's nothing wrong with being ambidextrous. Of course not. There's also the potential investment into psychic powers, maybe. I don't know how those work. They're like magnets. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Charles Q? Uh, that would be uh, our other friend here, friend. Charles. Yeah. Yes. Such a posh name. Charles, yes. My you mother did. Yes. You're a posh motherfucker. I know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. So, uh,. When I have an opponent in my mouth, and as long as I keep it in my mouth, I deal 3d5 toughness and armor damage. That's dope, bro. <laughs> That's what I got. That's better than my mod attack by a long shot. Jeez. I'm just going to buy basic skills. Or not skills, uh, stat points. Hmm. I need the the stat requirements at this stage in the game to get what I want are ridiculous. <sighs> no, they're not. At this stage, yeah. No, they're not. Yeah. See, two weapon master agility forty five. Uh, already have ambidextrous. I'm going to need 40 ballistic skill and 40 weapon skill. Admittedly, that last one, I'm one point away. And then two weapon wielder. Uh, and honestly, I don't understand why two weapon wielder, why that isn't the tier three talent, but. <sighs> Logic sense is not how these uh, things work, bro. Don't you know? Yeah, well. I need to buy two weapon wielder twice, I'm pretty sure. Or no, is it is it two weapon wielder? I don't know. I know there's one talent I need to buy twice. Uh, One for ranged and one for melee. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is two weapon wielder. Then after that, I need to get step aside for the extra. Oh, you're just going all the. Yeah. Step aside, and I think he said it was iron wall or something like that for an extra parry. Wall of iron. Wall of Steel, yeah. Mm. And then he also recommended grabbing Inescapable, and then I will have my 
Bloodborne style combat build. Fancy. Well, it was advertised I mean, as a Bloodborne style game. I intend to play a Bloodborne style character. Good. Perfect. All right. Um, you out? Maybe. I don't know. So, mm -hmm. Char, we killed this thing in how long? Like two rounds. Uh oh. Maybe three? I thought it was a bit more than that. Okay, so let's see here. Because I got I'm... into the room. Yeah. You got grabbed and pulled. Yeah. You moved up. Because how far back we were. I was going to hug a grenade. We all got grabbed except for Gaspar. Guess bar or guess par? Guess bar. Doesn't okay. pee. Okay, guess bar. Um, we all got grabbed. Um, I turned into a shark. I bite off a tentacle. I continue eating the tentacle like a ramen noodle, and it dies. That same round. So, five. Five rounds. Mm. Oh, shit. I feel, uh... Like I'm holding y'all back. No. You guys are doing... You know, big, big damage. I'm sitting here going, oh, shit. Only some of us. Only uh, some of us. You did, with, uh, yeah. With this thing, or with this rule where um, uh, you have to, like, beat your opponent's, uh, like, dodge or, or their... Their attack rolls, degrees of success, uh, with your dodge or parry, and vice versa. Um, so inescapable, right? Uh, no, in, no, that's because uh, inescapable ends to it. So in order to hit, remember, in order to hit, you have to beat uh, your opponent's degrees in your attack or your dodge. So, in order to deal damage, you have to beat their degrees of dodge. Or parry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Which makes... Oh. Well, I'm... I wasn't really expecting the early game to be easy, but... I suspect... If we get into a pitched battle, uh, I know that I, at the very least, will have a very difficult time. No, if we get, in, if we get into a pitched battle, uh, Esmeralda's main strategy is to retreat. If we that's a great retreat... strategy, because that's what <laughs> Minos do best. Let the, the, the veteran knight try while you guys run the fuck away. 
Well, no, I mean, like, we don't. They're going to eat the bigger fish and come after you, you know? No, I mean, yeah. like, uh, if we can't retreat, is what I'm saying. Oh, we can't retreat? Uh, then we fight to the death. Well, yes, because... I'm saying in that situation that this particular rule is. Like, I understand the uh, why he wants it in place, right? And, you know, like, better, I guess, I somewhat agree with the concept of, like, better to just have that rule in play now, that way we're used to it by the time we get up there in numbers. Yeah. But... I don't know. It's def it definitely further increases the difficulty. It's fine. It's pretty same simple math. And uh, at least it wasn't the... Uh... Some of the crap that I've tried in, to in some of my modules. Uh. <laughs> I'm kind of upset that I gave up on the Kraken's challenge. Well, oh, my. if hmm? Fosius dies, I'll have my next character try. No worry. Uh, well, you'll have the the taste of the game, and you'll know what to, yeah. what you kind of want, you know, out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, because I'm like, eh, I'm upset that I had to give it that up. Um, and I was like, well, that or you're just gonna die. I'm like, either I give it up or I'm gonna die. Well, the uh, I misled you. Mm -hmm. Um, because I wasn't really smart at the same time. But when he gave you the ultimatum of if you can't give me a good reason, um, so you know, mm -hmm. to have the, a different challenge, um, or just take the you know ordinary mediocre fish, uh, there was a loophole. And I did not see it until we were well into the story. And the loophole was, could you give me time to give you a good reason? So, basically, well, delay it. Yeah. See, I thought that, but I'm like, I don't think they're going to do that. The only thing I later came up with was because I had more information to put together at the time, was the fact that she would, if I died, be hindering her king's plan. Because the king assigned me to you to do this. Mm -hmm. And whether I died out there is one thing. But if she killed me, she's hindering her master's plan. Mm. Through her own arrogance. Um, honestly, some of the best fish to have are pretty mediocre ones. Yeah, but I don't know. Okay, so, so for me, it's that, that, and I sit there and I look at the two other going through the Kraken's challenge, and I'm like... Mm. Yeah. They're it's it's the same build. Um they have a legendary mythic bloodline and you have a uh unrecognizable bloodline. Yeah. And I don't mind doing it once and I don't like doing it twice in back to back games. And it gets a little eh, mm. Well you got some of the better parts of the shark. I did. And honestly, sharks have if you get the the right combo which you got, um you have a lot of lethality. Mm -hmm. People know that you're a shark, and people are really good at fighting against sharks. Uh, but that doesn't stop you from doing what a shark does best, which is murder the fuck out of them. Yeah. I mean, th yeah, they get to know what type of fighter you are, but that doesn't mean they're going to survive you in the ring. Yeah. And again, it's just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got... Um... The uh, anglerfish to start. Yeah. And it's a fellowship based creature. Mm -hmm. uh, That's where I get my lure from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not a pretty fish. Because <laughs> um, anglers are hideous. But their main 
spellcasting stat and stat in general is um, fellowship. Fellowship. And so I'm sitting here going, yeah. Fellowship is my dump stat. Why am I fucking fellowship fish? Then I have I'm a fellowship strength based character because of my mom. So you're a paladin, is what you're saying? Yes, actually. Paladin of the brutality path. Yeah. What's a uh, what's the jellyfish uh, casting stat? I'm not sure. You have to have like, casting I've in the first to... place. Yeah, I guess. Because I know to access my fish, it's like I have to fail an intelligence test and... Oh, excuse me. And I forget if it's fellowship or influence. But I have to fail. So if I want to make use of the fish form, I have to keep uh, two stats relatively low. Yeah. No, granted. Transformation. Well, no, I had to. I had to fail those checks to transform. Right, but he also said. This is just for your first few times because you'll eventually get used to it. Uh, uh. Well, either way, I, I've got one influence and five fellowships, so those are also my dumb sets. <laughs> well, influence is always starting at one because we don't we earn fellowship or earn influence, except for in this game, it's different. We buy influence in this game. I forget. Maybe you no. have the right. No, you can't. Yeah, you can't no. buy buy it. Um, you have to earn it. Mm, cosmic eye. Reputation through the cult. Oh, okay. In this game, we just haven't earned influence yet. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm still working on it. If it, give, mm. if it gives you any hope. Uh, on what? Or for which game? For for monsters? No. Oh. I'm still working very hard on influence in the uh, cult game. Yeah. I don't think Fogius is the kind of character to care about influence. So you You'll just get it should. by doing stuff in the cult. Yeah. Yeah. So even if it's like I read some books and people go which ones? And you name some books and they're like how did you live? Did you read everything? And you go yeah. That can get you famous. Surviving reading a book. Like <laughs> that'll get you influence. <laughs> Aro. But would he brag about reading certain books? Only if they asked you. So yeah. they nobody would know unless they're like, did you actually read that book? And you said, yeah. Yeah. You, you'd be you'd be outing yourself, but I could see yeah. you totally answering people's questions. Yeah. Um. I'm also thinking. Uh. For Fogius, Um. There's several Cynician space talents. I think I might pick some of them up. Okay, cool. Specifically the ones that uh, help you resist psychic stuff. Okay. Basically taking a bunch of mental resistances. Hmm. Anyway, I'm getting tired. I'm going to hop off. See you guys. Tomorrow, I guess. Okay. Bye. Good luck with your uh, DBD and your uh, Apex Legends. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. We need the luck. Yeah.
Well, look at you, mister. I know, right?